All right, good morning to everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the tank. Yeah, I hope you like my thumbnail this morning. So by what's next, man? Are we going with tennis? I see we got a volume issue. Turn this volume echo down. There we go. Boom. That should be better. Good morning to each and every one of you. Yes, indeed. We're going to put this uh, main screen up. We were seeing the, the price a little bit ago at 7.11 in pre-market. I don't know much higher. It might have been earlier. But uh, let me get this set up correctly. So we've got the display up underneath here. So you can see what I'm looking at. I want to thank you all for being here, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. There we go. Now let's get back to the screen here and see where we're going to be at the opening bell this morning. We are two minutes, one minute away. And we got some uh, interesting news developments over the end of the week. And I'm going to bring those to your attention here in a minute. Uh, but just want to watch this open right now. And uh, lots of things going on. Lots of, lots of things around this company going on. Uh, let's get to the historical chart. And we're also going to put down SoFi. Historical data and the interactive chart. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell is ringing right now. It's 930. See what they're going to attempt to drive it down to today. If they can reach yesterday's low or not, SoFi. Historical data. So by historical data. All right. This will give us on here Friday's low. And we'll be able to, what was that? <sighs> so by historical data. There we go. That's the one we want. Uh, 697, huh? Okay. Let's see what they're trying to muster up. Oh, goodness gracious. Now nah, we're getting it loading up. There's historical data. Look at that date. November 3rd and November 6th. Just hold on a minute here, folks. We'll get to it. There we are. Do not know what in the world's going on here with SoFi historical data showing us back to November the 6th. Looks like we got a glitch going on this morning with uh, Yahoo. <clears throat> nice to see SoFi green this morning. Don't know if we'll stay in the green, but it looks like we're going to have a green day. Actually, they just took it down. Let's refresh this, 694. And uh, I have an order waiting at 688 this morning for sure. And I've got another one at 667, just in case. <clears throat> some people have been saying we're going down to 650, and some are saying we're going down to the $6 range, and there's all this reasoning behind it. And meanwhile, we look at the S&P up, the Dow up, the NASDAQ. Don't know what the world is going on with this screen while they're showing the NASDAQ up here red. Yahoo's got, Yahoo's got a lot of issues this morning, apparently. Not sure what all is going on with them, but uh, one of them for sure here is uh, when we're looking at this historical data, this is definitely not upgraded. And uh, let's see if we can get it to come up now. No. <clears throat> well, sorry, folks, can't show you anything on historical data. And that would be referencing what I'm looking to is reference what the low was on Friday to determine where we might see a low for today. Let's try and just click on it here and get to it this way. There we go. They decided to show us the real date. Look at that. Yesterday, uh, Friday's low, 691. Today, 692. All right. All right. Well, that's good. I'd love to see that. Now, let me get over here. And put this over here so I can see what other body, everybody's saying. Hopefully we can get this over here to this screen. There we go. There we go. 
and we can monitor what folks are saying. Good morning, Lee Armstrong, Chad Caraway. Good morning, James Anderson. Very nice thumbnail. Thanks. Mickey Monkey Salopets. Good morning, RC Second Life. Thank you, Rusty Pratter. Morning. <clears throat> Morning from Bub Bubba Land, aka Alabama. All right, the Armstrong S and P and Nasdaq up big, so far down. Oh, hello. oh no, she's not going to stay down. Not today. We got to change the guard. We're going to change the guard. It's going to be a green guard today. And uh, <clears throat> interestingly enough, now let me try to go up here to SoFi's homepage summary page. And uh, the bottom line is, folks, nothing has changed when it comes to the long term. Nothing has changed whatsoever. The daily rigmarole, the daily grind, nothing has changed. The 200-day moving average continues to climb. It's not declining. It keeps moving up. No matter what they try with their little piddly every morning, uh, little rundowns. And then Friday's chart, folks, I have to tell you, it looked awesome to me. It was just all day long, up and up and up, Friday's chart. And I was going to leave it on this screen so you could see it. But uh, we'll get back over here to the summary page now. And here, we're going to try to get to the historical data on this one. So I'll be able to show people here. And as I said, folks, this interactive chart that I'm looking at, the six-month, the three-month, anytime you get into the longer term, if you were shorting this stock back here when the 200-day moving average was around 696 where we are right now and now the 200 dollar moving day average is at 828 that's what you need to pay attention folks not the daily but what's going on long term now we had a lot of things going on over the um last week and the end of the week and we had some announcements made by sofi that i'll go over as soon as we get everybody here with us and uh, one of these announcements was was that um, SoFi's CRO had left the company and moved over to be with PayPal. Okay, that's one of the things we heard. And uh, right on the heels of that, we got an announcement by SoFi that they had hired in a new CRO. His name is Aaron Pinto. And... Uh, he used to be with uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and uh, more recently, Wells Fargo. So the guy knows what he's doing. He's got the experience. And we're looking for, right now, we're looking for a historical data number it shows the yesterday's low. I mean, uh, Friday's low was 691. That's all they're going to go after today. They're going to try to get the low to 690. Uh, if they can push it down to 690, they'll feel like they've been successful. So that's what they're trying for. <clears throat> Here you can see in six minutes, we've had almost 5 million shares traded. And all those shares going from people who don't want SoFi to people who do. And I would be one of them. As a matter of fact, let's get rid of this right down here. I don't need that. Close this. Trying to get me to start up a... Uh, There it is, 691. They got yesterday, they got Friday's low again. And for a half a second here, we'll probably see 690 and then off she goes. I'd love it to, I'd like, actually love to see it get down to 680. There it is. There's your 690 right there. Just trying to make a statement, folks. They're just trying to get it down to a little bit lower than it was on Friday so they can call their cohorts and constituents and say, hey, listen, we ran it down again today. <clears throat> so. Just looking for a good buying opportunity. I'm one penny away from my buy filling right now. <clears throat> Got a nice little 100 share order sitting there at 688. And if it doesn't fill, that'll be okay too. <clears throat> Let's see if we can just get a little bit more here. And my screen is just rotating. It looks like it's frozen here, frozen in time. So I'm going to refresh the page. And there you have it, folks. They got to that number that they wanted to. And now let's just see how high it goes today. Took them 5 million shares to make it happen, but let's just see how high it goes. So I'm refreshing this YouTube screen right now. Maybe we can get this thing to reload. 
and see what you guys are saying because I got nothing going on. I got all kinds of things moving that aren't moving. <laughs> so there you go. You can see Friday's low was 691. And now they're going to be showing today's low at 690. Yay, or maybe even 689. Good for them. Good for them. That's uh, certainly no big sell-off. Nobody's afraid. And I'm fairly certain that none of the SoFi longs are out. No institutions at all would sell down 1% or 1.5%. Page is slowing down Firefox to speed up your browser. Stop this page. Well, goodness gracious. And we have very little going on right now. We got millions and millions of shares being there. There's a 689. Come on, one more penny. You can do it, shorty. Show us some muscles. Show us some of your strength. And show us a price of $4.55 like we were just eight months ago. Come on. Run it right down with all your power and strength to $4.55 if you can. I dare you. I dare you to do that. <laughs> I double dare you. I want to thank you all for being here with me. I'm trying to uh, <clears throat> right now up uh, refresh the page because I'm not seeing anybody's comments at all here. And uh, we're just having, there's the 688. Thank you very much. All right. And I thought they'd go for 684 possibly. So I got another order sitting there. Very nice. Very well done, Shorty. I know, I know it costs you $5 million. Shares, 6 million shares. So I know that's a, you know, $36 million to get the price down. But that's okay. You did it. You should, you should feel proud of yourselves. Yep. I mean, that's not a lot of money. $36 million to these, to these clowns. Um, I am getting, there we go. Now the page is finally refreshing, it looks like. So hopefully we can get to your comments, what your statements are, and be able to respond. And, uh, but I don't know, we've got snow here, folks. We've had snow. We had a white snowy St. Patrick's day and, uh, goodness gracious. This thing is just slug speed here right now. So I'm sorry if I'm not being able to get back to you and respond to all of you folks that are commenting right now. I almost feel like I ought to just completely close this, this, this page off and try to reload it up here. I think I'm going to do that. Now, I'm not going to end the stream, but this is just ridiculous. So goodbye to you and we'll go over here. And <clears throat> we'll open this up here and see if we can get a little bit better. Get it to actually work. <clears throat> 689 folks. 689, 688. God bless them for all this effort and all this volume that they're running up. Again, volume is going to be the key to the success of this company, just overpowering these shorts because they just cannot keep doing what they've been doing and keep it up and sustain it. And that is borrowing and borrowing and borrowing sh shares. And I was uh, watching one of the other uh, people here on YouTube uh, pointing out that there were only like 280,000 shares left to even borrow on Friday or something like that. And uh, so they're literally using every single borrowed share that they can use to run the price and hold it, hold it back right now. And uh, I just don't know how long that's going to be able to be held up. And I'm not sure uh, if you're aware of this or not, but the interest that they're paying now has gone up as well. And uh, let's go and see if we can find that out here in a second. Let me just get this get my page to load up here again so I can uh, see what you're saying because I don't have anything on this other monitor right now because it's just acting so stupid. So here we go. <clears throat> View your channel and we should see my video right up here now. And there it is. My, 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 my. All right. Now let's click on this. We got 35 here. I want to thank you all and let's in about one minute, let's all hit the like button together. What do we got? The time now is 9.43. Yeah, we'll count down in uh, 30 seconds. Hopefully, we can get everybody to hit the like button together. And uh, that would be cool. And we'll just get more of this channel circulated to more and more people like we've been doing lately. 
And there it is, folks. There it is. There we go. We finally got the page to load up. Now we can move it back over across here and see what's going on with everybody's comments. And 689 holding up very nicely. There we go. Danny Dimes 10. Good morning. Carl C. Mark. Good morning. Spartacus, the shorts are doomed in EH. Yep. I need 70 more shares to round up to the next thousand. It's bugging me. Ha ha ha. S&P and NASDAQ up. All right. We got everybody back in here. Very cool. Very cool. I can see what you're saying. Insert quote about God giving his toughest battles to his strongest warriors. That's right. <clears throat> you got to be strong in the face of adversity, folks. You got to be diligent and you got to have faith. And uh, a lot of things that are um, coming together right now for SoFi, uh, there's a few things that there are some monkey wrenches involved here. One of them we heard last week that there was some selling going on, insider selling. And I want to clarify that this is stock compensation, okay? Just so you're aware of this, these are what they call <clears throat> restricted stock units that these individuals have been selling who work for the company. Restricted stock units. And what it is, is these are issued as a form of compensation. And last week, they vested those shares, vested. And so these individuals had to pay taxes on their revenue. So they had to sell portions of these to pay their taxes. That's the bottom line. That's what it amounts to, in case you weren't aware of it. So there is no reason to be fearful about insider selling because this is how they get paid, all right? And uh, if you don't believe my word and take my word for it, you can go over and listen to Tavis's uh, last, um, Tavis. Trading Fundamentals, one of their group, uh, did a good breakdown on these share sales here and what they really amount to last week. Now, I've got another sell, another buy order here. I'm waiting at 684. I just picked up 200 at 688, and I'm waiting for another 200 to see if we can get it at 684. Guys and gals, look at the freaking volume here. 7,142. And these, these individuals that borrowed shorts again today to sell it down here to this price they're digging their hole deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and one of these days it's all going to cave in on them folks and there's going to be a mighty catastrophe among the short village <laughs> they're going to get wiped out and uh but i want to clarify a few things you may have heard in the news about sofi cro Chief Risk Officer just got uh, moved, removed himself from the position and moved over to go with PayPal. And uh, it's really like a lateral move. They're both vice president positions. But in his place, SoFi just announced a new individual has come in. And he is formerly with a fairly well-known bank called J.P. Morgan Chase. And now Aaron Pinto has been moved over to become the new CRO at SoFi. He also has two and a half years experience as uh, the same position at for Wells Fargo. So this guy's been around, knows what he's doing. He's not just some newbie that fell off the turnip wagon, folks. He knows what he's doing and he has experience and he has very good experience with very well-known, established legacy banks. So have no fear about a CRO that you might have read about that moved over to PayPal because there is nothing to fear there. And there's, we are back up to 688. And I, folks, I am, have been very, very strongly encouraging you to pick up and buy at these uh, bottoms each day because if you're doing like I'm doing one day, we're going to reap some major rewards. Uh, there's some other things that have been going off, uh, going on, and I want to talk to you about, as far as individuals leaving the company, I want to talk to you about some past about this company that you might not be familiar with, you might not know. And uh, welcome, Danny Dimes, I appreciate you being here. And welcome to you, Spartacus, I appreciate your being here today. As we watch SoFi now, having already reached the bottom on nearly 8 million shares traded in 18 minutes. 
Folks, as I said before, there is too many interested parties in obtaining SoFi stock right now. There is too much volume for them on the plate for them to handle this, okay? That is my personal opinion. There is far much, too much volume for them to contain it. They'll give an illusion of containment and of the price falling. That's what they're um, doing, but it's costing them big time money to create this illusion. So let's go over here right now to SoFi Institutional Ownership, just for kicks, and see what's going on with uh, Fintel in regards to uh, institutional ownership. And we're going to take a look at it and see if any of those institutions sold. All right. We were at a uh, number of 798 institutions. And I got news for you. Virtually every one of them is on the long boat. There's only a few on the short boat here. And yep, still 798. And take a look at this. 736 long only. Folks, out of all these institutions, nearly 800 institutions, 736 believe in this company, folks. Believe that they're growing like they should be. Believe that they're, they've got the right uh, program. Believe that they have the, the, not only the ability, but the staff that's running the show to make everything come together just as they have predicted it would. And at this point in the time, who's to doubt them? Because every single thing that SoFi has announced that they were going to achieve, they have so far done. And not only that, they've overachieved. Okay? So there's good reason for all of these 736 long only because of what? Past performance. Their past performance, folks, they don't ever over promise and under deliver under deliver they always under promise and they always over deliver and i guarantee you there's going to be some big time surprises when they break this revenue out and they start talking about all the money that galileo's got coming into their coffers now and i've already mentioned to you in case you didn't know peabody's raw honey huge soap i fan can't wait to load the boat at 650 called it a month ago cash standing by thank you shorters well, you better stop waiting on that 650 boat, my friend, because that's not coming. All right? That's not coming. You might as well just be buying right here with me, Catfish Tyler, and then sell this over $10 because I do not believe 650 is ever going to be achieved. I hear all these people talking about it, 650, 631, all these numbers are throwing out. Don't think it's going to happen, folks. There's just too much. Look at the volume already. We're already at 8,272,000 shares. And they're go it's going up again already, folks. It's going up. And I don't believe it's ever going to stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. I could be wrong, but I sure don't think so. <clears throat> I don't think so. <clears throat> I guess the question I would have is, what's going to stop it? You think this next revenue and earnings call that we have where we beat the street big time and that 40 more million dollars that we just got rid of in debt goes to the bottom line? And not only that, the out of that $862.5 million that they just acquired with the convertible notes, there's a lot of incentive for a lot of institutions to get this price now up to $12.29. And I think it's going to go there. I think it'll go there very, very nice and over just a very gradual good for them. They got out this morning. The smart ones got out, drove it down with almost 8.5 million shares already traded in 22 minutes. And then watch it rise now. Just watch it go. People, that's raw, honey. Yes, sir. That Stop this nonsense. Oh, yeah. That'll stop all the nonsense. All the, the speculation and all the FUD and all these people who, who are wrong. They're wrong about this stock. Uh, all of these uh, latest uh, downgrades or reiterations of $3 sells. And they're all going to be highly, highly... <laughs> Uh, well, I guess what the word is I'm looking for, they're going to be in for a big surprise. They're going to be in a big, big, big surprise. And that's why I'm accumulating more shares than I just bought. And I'm up on my shares I just bought this morning. I bought it at 688. I bought another 200 shares. I had an order there. And I had one at 684. But you guys that keep talking about 650, stop, stop doing that, okay? 
I don't want to see another 650 on my screen. And if I do, I'm just going to delete it off again. So you, Peabody's Raw Honey, your comment is gone. So remove. I don't want to hear any more nonsense about 650 on the stock price. Uh, Spartacus was here and he's been calling that out. And I actually kicked him out of the tank about six months ago. He's back now. But uh, he's been a lot more nice. And even even he said today, uh, good afternoon. And he says, uh, he said the shorts are doomed. Yep. And they are. I believe that 100%. I believe every day that they borrow more shares proves how doomed they are. <laughs> they just keep rising the, the raising the risk. And there is big time risk to be shorting this stock right now, folks. And you're going to find out when they get this NBA um uh, their logos on every court around the country in the NBA. And we get more and more visibility through TGL Golf, which now is about six months away from debuting, is my understanding. Uh, I don't know exactly when they're going to do that. Uh, but TGL Golf is going to put SoFi in the living rooms of even more people every single night of the week on ESPN, ESPN Plus, ESPN, uh, and ABC. Um, so, folks, there's a lot going on that's going to keep SoFi right there in people's living rooms and more and more people seeing and more visibility for this company and more and more customers being coming in and, and depositing money into the SoFi accounts with a very, very competitive interest rate on their savings accounts. And uh, so I'm very happy to be here on this channel with you to explain these things to you, including the fact that you need to have no worries about the CRO leaving the company to go to PayPal because we've already replaced them. And when it comes to uh, people leaving this company, I want to show you guys something that I discovered here over the weekend that I thought was amazing, actually. And it might have something to do with SoFi's price dropping from the $27, $28 range all the way down to the $445. And uh, it wasn't done just by shorting. They did it to themselves. And here's the reason why. I'm going to show you now. Right here. This is dated July the 21st of 2017. All right. This is before SoFi had its bank charter. SoFi loses another senior executive as chief revenue officer, Michael Tannenbaum, departs. Okay. <clears throat> so... This Michael Tannenbaum, he departed the company, uh, and it was a an amicable uh, separation. Michael, as it was said by Mike Cagney, issued the following statement. He was the SoFi CEO at the time, Mike Cagney. Michael has done an admirable job in his time at SoFi, and we wish him all the best as he builds his own startup in the payment space. Okay, so Tannenbaum left the company, all right, and he was out of there, and it says down below, over the last several months, SoFi has seen CFO Nino Fallon, co-founder Dan Macklin, and Cisco Yasser Abelson all leave the company. So here in 2017, folks, there was a massive number of senior executives, executives leaving SoFi for other companies. And this was in 2017. And then here's the thing you got to notice. The date of this was July 21st, 2017, and they, 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 they mentioned in this article, as I just said, that <laughs> co-founder Dan Macklin had left the company, all right? So, and it says, over the last several months. Well, then I found this article. Check this out. So, <laughs> then this was just a few months later. July, August, September, three months later, the other co-founder and chief executive financial services startup stepped down. Folks, this is when things were tough, okay? And this is why I believe that SoFi's price went from $25 all the way down to four. Part of the reason, you've got now two co-founders of the company. One of them had just previously left. And that one was mentioned right here. I'm sorry, I cannot take this call. So, God, please stop. Stop, 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 stop. So, here you've got, as I said, these. I'm mentioning this to you so you can understand how volatile things were then. If you think they're crazy now, 
look how volatile they were back here when we're talking only the in July 21st of 2017. It said over the last several months, so if I had seen CFO Nino Fonlo, co-founder Dan Macklin, I mean, leave the company. So one co-founder left, and then shortly after that, another co-founder left. And this one was because he had, um, uh, um, uh, it was alleged that he had fostered a company culture that enabled sexual harassment. Oh boy, the big sexual harassment thing comes down the pipe. And so here we go, Michael Cagney resignation as CEO and as a member of the board, okay? So Michael Cag Cagney was forced to step down because apparently of sexual harassment. And it says, uh, Mike Hackney has been battling sexual harassment allegations at the lending startup, okay? So this is part of the reason, folks, that SoFi, in my opinion, and I hope that you find this interesting, maybe you never realized this before. I didn't, so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention now. Um, uh, yeah, that will stop this nonsense, Mel. I predicted the sixes, and now I'm predicting lower. Mel, your comment is now hidden. Bye-bye. Remove. I don't know where all you naysayers are. You're like, you feel like you're on a Yahoo message board. Get the hell out of my tank. Jeez. Anand Patel, if you want to, don't kick me out of the tank. I'm not kicking you out. I'm just asking you, you know, let's keep things positive here. We've got too many other FUD people out there like David Chi of Reading. Why don't you just jump on his bandwagon and say the stock's worth $3? Stop screwing around on my channel, okay? God dang, people. All these negative nannies. Go find yourself somewhere else to hang out. Jeez. Unbelievable. I mean, just really, seriously. You know I'm not going to put up with that here on my channel, man. This is a positive channel. This is positive energy. We don't need you go guys and gals throwing out that stuff. If you can go plenty of other places, here's one of them for you to go right here. Go over here to the Yahoo conversation board and just fill it up with all the freaking FUD you want to, okay? Go go over to Tanner's Crybaby Pussyfied channel and you can comment on his channel and say stuff like that and he'll probably allow it and he might even encourage you to say things like that. So y'all go over there and hang out if you want to, but you got no place here on my channel, all right? I don't want to hear it anymore. If you got any other negative things to say, I'm just going to remove all of your comments about six dollars and six fifty and five and four and three and Chivarini like y'all go join in that bandwagon if you want. Carl C. Mac, it depends on the Fed speaking on Wednesday. I think that the Friday this will be the lowest close before earnings. Okay, uh, bearded bassin. Good morning, swooping in on that low. What's up? Yep, uh, Peabody's raw honey. Amazon Prime Movie ads had SoFi commercials. Oh, I saw. I've been seeing SoFi commercials all over the place. I've been seeing SoFi's commercials everywhere. Mel Smith says, I'm buying 10,000 shares. Now I'm at 130,000 shares. Absolutely awesome. So why, why would someone who's in a position of holding 130,000 shares talking about us going lower than $6? I question that. I question your logic, and I find it limited <laughs> if, you, if you're making that kind of comment. Be because what I'm here to do is I'm here to show people an interactive chart with a 200-day average that's gone from $6 to $8.32 over the last six months. All right, so I'm not concerned in any way about all the FUD. I'm not concerned about all the misinformation I'm not concerned about everybody spreading six dollars and six fifty all over everywhere. That's not my position. I'm not worried about that. Okay. What I'm here to do is stick to the facts. And I'm here to show you that for one thing, I don't believe a single institution has sold during the last 20% down over the last month. And in fact, they've increased from 790 to 798. So I'm not concerned and I'm not worried. And I'm not going to let any of you that come on my channel put worry out there and fear in people, okay? Because if someone is thinking about buying here at the bottom where I think we are at the bottom, let them buy it. Don't try to scare them out and say, wait for six fifty, dollars okay? You're entitled to your own opinions, and that's fine. But 
I'm not going to have every, everybody out here or anybody on this channel acting like they know the price is going to 650 and jumping on the FUD wagon. One minute chart shows a strong bottom like support. Check it out on the candles. It looks very positive. Oh, I agree. I have no worries and I have no fears about SoFi's stock price going down to 650 and 6 and even if it did, folks, I'd just buy it there, okay? But I don't believe it's going that low. So let's just lay off of that. You guys can have your, and be entitled to your own opinions. I'm welcome to people's. But here's what I'd like you to do. If you're going to go ahead and throw out a number like that, tell me why. All right. Let's hear some justification. All right. I don't want you just throwing out a number like that. I'm here explaining why I think SoFi will go to $14 and will be at $12.29 on the next earnings call or even higher. And you're, and I'm explaining why. I'm telling you because of these convertible notes, all these institutions didn't just buy all those six, $682 million worth of convertible notes so they could make 1.25% interest. They made they made the purchases and acquired those convertible notes because now they're going to try to get the price to go up to 929 where they can turn in those convertible notes they got for 727 at $9.48 or 9.55 or whatever the number was. But they cannot turn in those convertible notes at that number of $9.50 or so until they get the price of SoFi up to $12.29. And that's where I believe it's going. And that's certainly double the number that you guys are throwing out on my page right now. All right. Calm down, man. You're stressing. You have to think as a whole. We can always buy cheap. Exactly. If they get it down to that price, I'll just buy it, folks. But I don't need you guys on my channel acting like you're all geniuses and know it's going there and you're not going to buy here because you think it's going there. I heard the same thing from Spartacus way back when and I was buying when it was in the sevens and he was saying it's going to 650, it's going to six, it's 650, six, 650. It never did. In fact, I sold it for $10.16 after they were shouting all that out. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that upset about it. I'm just telling you, man, if you're going to put those numbers out here in the chat, I'm just going to ask you, Lynn, why don't you just go ahead and explain how. Explain how, how it's going to get there. How with 10 million shares traded in 36 minutes and the price hasn't even dropped 2%. Are they going to make it go down another 15%? All right, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't. If they got an explanation, then I'd like to hear it. I'd like to hear how it's going there. And I'd like to hear why. And uh, But if you don't, and you're just throwing out a number, then you got no place here. I'll just... I'll just... Like you, you explain why you think it's going to go where you think it's going to go. They should explain where, why they think it's going to do that. Absolutely. There's Miss Fish right there telling you guys exactly how it is. I sit here and I explain to you, based on what I know about these convertible notes, why the price is going to go up to $12.29 and why this chart that I'm showing you makes perfect sense that the price will go there, okay? The, these charts, these, the, these numbers that you're throwing out, I hear you throwing them out, but I don't see the price going anywhere lower than right now. We're 686. I don't see it. And, and if they were going to go lower than 686, I think it would have already done that. In fact, it's rising now. So let's just chill out. FUD, seed sowers, yeah, they're all over the place. Like I said, get your ass over to uh, Tanner's channel, and he'll probably applaud you for calling for 650 price. Get on over there. You can join in with the Tanner wusses. And you can be on that channel if you want to. Or you can hang out on the message board, on the Yahoo message board, while I watch SoFi go green today and explain how it's going to go to $6.50. Go on over there. Go, or You don't have to explain why because you haven't explained on my channel. You're just saying it. Just go over there like they do. That's what they do on the message boards. They throw that all the time. Here, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's go over here right now to conversations. Look at all the trash. It's on the, all the trash talk on here. And I don't put up with it on my channel. If you go on a trash talk, this is the place to do it, okay? This is where you trash talk. Not on my channel. I'm not going to put up with it. Nope. 
I'm just going to say remove, and I'm going to hit remove, and I'm going to take remove. I'm over here now, I'm going to get on this conversation board. I want you to see all the people on this board that are trying to say the same thing that you guys are here on my channel trying to say. And I want to, I want you to see how, how inundated it is. It, it's just overrun with hundreds of posters on here talking about, and I'm going to show you right here. Hold on a second. Bought $5 calls. <laughs> Hold on. We'll get down here. We'll get down here. Show more comments. And every one of them, almost every single person on here is bearish, 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 bearish. Because, see, they're desperate. Just like all the shorts that are borrowing more and more and more and more shares. Just more. Here it is. This cowboy, 640 by Friday, 550. Okay? Again, there's no reason and there's no justifying how or it could happen. But he's just throwing it out there. 640 by Friday, 550 by April. Okay? And uh, I, I laugh. Because I see there's just, it's just this board this morning early and last night I was looking at, especially last night, which I thought was funny, on a Sunday evening. Look at this, heading back down to the fives, <laughs> okay? If it hits five, then look out for a reverse split. And I mean, oh, this bull crap. And this is where you guys belong. If the market sells down, NVIDIA's event today, SoFi looks like 650 and a hawkish Fed. Yikes. And everybody, they're just so full of freaking fear, so scared. I say you have no place in the market whatsoever. Get out of the market if you're that scared. Look at this SoFi now at 694. How come it's not at the 650, guys? Thank you, James Anderson. So like I said, come on over here and make yourself comfortable in the conversation board on Yahoo and start with your shit. And you can just throw it all out there all over the place. You can just slather it all over the place like they're doing. Go ahead. Meanwhile, I'll be over here making a freaking ton of money on SoFi, all right? Buying it at 688 this morning and now up six cents on my 54,000 shares. I'll take it and I'm going to be green by the end of the day and I'm going to be green by the end of this week. I'm going to be big time green on the next earnings call. See, you people don't understand something and I'll make, well, some of you do because you've been on this channel a long time and I've explained it to you. But one of the things that many people don't apparently understand, those all those on here are talking about $6 this morning, is they don't, what they don't understand is that this company, SoFi, is executing their plan, all right? They're diversifying just like they said they would. And they're, I want to make sure you know this, Go look at NVIDIA, okay? Go look at PLTR for an example. PLTR on their earnings call when they first went gap profitable did not pop. PLTR did not make a big move on its first earnings call profitability. It wasn't until the second earnings call because one earnings call showing gap profitability, it could be a glitch. It could just be happenstance. It just could have been, you know, one out, one out of dozens, all right? But two is a different thing. And that's when we saw PLTR really make its move and basically double from where it was six months ago, eight months ago. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Go look at PLTR and you'll see that they've gone up almost twice since they had the second profitable quarter. And that's where we're headed with SoFi right now. They've done about everything they said they would. Outstanding. Everything. Everything. And even more. Robin Starker, $10 very soon. There you go. See? That's what we need to hear on this. This what we need to hear on this channel. And I want you to know, uh, and, and some of you are uh, new and just getting in here on the channel. Let's please all here at 10 Let's get, let's make a time, and we'll make it at uh, we'll make it at ten fourteen. 
That's 35 seconds. Let's hit the like button, everybody. In 35 seconds, we'll hit it together at the same time and get from 20 likes, hopefully hopefully up to 25 or 30 likes, okay? So here we go. We're going to start counting down. In 20 seconds, we're all going to hit the like button at the very same moment in time. Hopefully, you'll do that with me. And here we go. 15 seconds, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Like button, please. And I would make this channel get sent out to even more people. Xavier, yo! Marsha Brax, you mean 1047. Ha <laughs> ha It's going higher than that, folks. It's going all the way to 1229. And it may even go to 1454. And I have reasons for these numbers. They're not just numbers I picked out of my head. All right. If you hit that like button, there's a heart for you. And there's a heart for anybody else. There's a like right there. Thank you. There's a heart for you. Thank you very much. And anybody else, please. I want to thank you for being here with me as I talk <laughs> talk about good things with SoFi. And I'm not trying to scare everybody out of their position, okay? By saying that we're going down to 6 or 650. And you can all see that's not going to happen. Or it sure isn't happening today. And it would have been a perfect day for it to have happened. But look at the volume already. 11 million shares traded, folks. We used to trade 16 million in the whole day's trading period. And that was just back in October. TP, this stock is a great way to train to learn to control your emotions as long as the company continues to perform and your original thesis remains. Emotional control is the critical for holding stocks. It's completely true. And I've already said to many, many people, Thank you for all those likes. Look at that. We just jumped up to 29 likes from 20. Thank you very, very much. I sure do appreciate that very much. And I'm ready to put hearts on the screen for anybody else that hits that like button and gets us up to 30. Thank you all for being here with me. Got some news for you that broke over uh, last week at the end of the week. And that was the CRO of our company, SoFi, left the company and went over to PayPal. Well, so if I didn't wait very long to replace that person with someone with even better credentials, his name from J.P. Morgan Chase, Aaron Pinto, has now moved into that position of CRO, Chief Risk Officer. Okay, hold on. I got to kiss my baby. Oh, you look good. Mm, look like a snake skin. Well, yeah. Oh, boy. All right. So, uh, guys and gals, want to thank you for being here on this uh, channel with me. Hey, Xavier, I saw your message. I appreciate you messaging me with that information. I appreciate that very much. Mike Fratilia, the 30th like. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Thank you very much. There's a heart for you. And Clark, if anyone should be negative, it is me. 125,000 shares. The only thing that worries me is RS. And they don't, they don't have approval for one. Reverse split. Need to keep it that way. I expect millions from SoFi by 2027. Absolutely. And I want you to know, they're not going to do a reverse split. And I'll explain why. And I've already done this with many people who don't know this about this. They have a, they have a deep, deep uh, uh, reason uh, for them not wanting to do that is they've got to get the price right now to $25 to get their first uh, bonus, okay? Performance bonuses, they're called. So they're not going to do that because that would mean they'd have to get the price to $50, okay? So they're not going to do that. They're, they're not going to, all right? Not going to happen. Not, that would be very, very, very counterproductive for Anthony Noto and his performance bonuses and all those, um, Chris LaPointe. And Derek also, all of them, none of them would do that. Yes, <laughs> yep. All right, yeah, I just happened to see it. I didn't notice it before. I hadn't been really been checking my Facebook messages. So, yep, August, it's a real test of emotions. Yep. Yes, indeed. So, anyway, I want you guys to see some information you may not have been aware of. So I, I did some digging when it came to this CRO leaving the company. And I thought to myself, 
I wonder if anybody else has left the company that put them in a precarious position. And boy, did I dig up some information on this company. Going back here to this date, and that is July 21st, 2017, folks. Talking seven years ago, July 21st, 2017. And it says Tannenbaum, SoFi's VP of Finance, had quickly moved up, okay? And he had become <clears throat> SoFi's Chief Revenue Officer, CRO. <clears throat> it said that he left the company, okay? Because he wanted to start up in his own business. And even uh, the guy, Mike Cagney, who was the CEO at the time of SoFi, said, Michael has done an admirable job in his time at SoFi. And we wish him all the best as he builds his own startup in the payments space. So there goes Tannenbaum, and then it says here, Tannenbaum is just one of many executives to recently leave SoFi senior ranks. Over the last several months, SoFi has seen CFO Nino Fallon, co-founder Dan Macklin, co-founder of the company, Dan Macklin, left, okay? And this was previous to this guy leaving and starting his own company up. So... Here we had the co-founder of the company, and ladies and gentlemen, this was in July, three months later in September, the other co-founder, chief executive startup, so steps down amid allegations that he fostered a company culture that enabled sexual harassment. So <laughs> you've got the two co-founders leaving the company in a three or I don't know how long the other one was before. But folks, no wonder SoFi's share price <laughs> went down so much, okay? All right? I mean, this was, you talk about chaos now. This was total chaos when you got the two co-founders of the company both leaving and the second one leaving on sexual harassment charges. There it is. CEO Mike Cagney resigned. All right, so I just want to sh share this with you because if you think what SoFi just went through there is um, with this CRO leaving and hiring in the new CRO, uh, this is this was even worse, way worse, way worse. And I like to show you this because I like you to have a comparison of where we are now with where we once were, okay? So just wanted to share that with you. I thought that was very interesting information. And uh, now I'm going to address another thing that some of you have heard about. And that is last week, some insider selling. There were apparently several forms that were issued last week. And I want you to realize that that really isn't selling. That's the employees getting paid. Because what these were that they uh, sold were vested units. And they're called, these are uh, to be exact, the, the, what they're called stock base compensation. Okay. And they're restricted stock units. Restricted stock units is the form of compensation for these employees, okay? So having sold some is merely because once those stock units that were restricted stock units vested, which they just did last week, they had to pay taxes on the vesting of those shares. So that's why they sold so they could pay their taxes, all right? Just so you can understand that, some people got scared. Oh, insider's selling. They must know something. You know, the price is going to fall, blah, blah, blah. No, no, not what's going on there. And my God, I don't understand all the people on this channel this morning saying the price was going to $6.50 and $6 and the damn thing's going over seven. I don't know what's going on here. O-P-E-N, all right. Spartacus is talking to us about another company, OPEN. Uh, we can take a look at them right now real quick. But I, we're going to take a look at some of our other stocks too while we watch SoFi continue. But OPEN, Open Door Technologies, he's saying possibly could go. And he is telling us all at five or more in a year. Five or more in a year. Okay. Summary. And... Uh, we look at everybody's suggestions. When people are on this channel and they bring something my way, I'll take a look at it every time. I have no problem doing that. No problem at all. Having a nice day today. I would be very cautious about buying it going over three. Wait. Dave Ramsey says, take Social Security at age 62, but only if you do this with each check. <laughs> 
I took up his uh, suggestion and I just started mine. That looks good, man. I sure as shit wouldn't buy it there. I'd wait. Nope, I don't buy it at the top. Look at SoFi, folks. Remember, it's going all the way down to $6. Had about five people on here this morning talking about 6 or 6 dollars a share on this stock, and I asked them to explain why. I didn't see a single one of them justify it. But I can justify why the price is going to go from here to $12.29, and I got a very good reason. It's called all those convertible notes and all those institutions that just acquired them. Now you might want to know. Might want to know. Let, let's see if we can find out. Bought more at six ninety four. All right. I bought this morning at six eighty eight. I picked up two hundred shares at six eighty eight, and I did that in the face of all those people that were saying it was going to go down to six fifty. So wait, catfish. Wait, catfish. Don't buy it now. It's going down to six. It could even go to five. Don't buy it now, catfish. <laughs> Price now is at 696 and rising, going to go up over seven again and be on its way to close out in the green today. They've already used almost all their shorted shares that they borrowed today. They've used them all almost. All run it down and then everybody stepped in and said, I'll take that. And they bought it all up. Oh, yeah. So let's go over here. Um, uh, okay, let's see here. S O. S O F I. Okay. And what I wanted to look at was um, convertible note. <sighs> Law firm convertible note offering. Let's see if we can get this. Barron's is smart enough to realize what this means and says SoFi's capital raise could help convert bears into bulls. And let's get over here and see if we can figure this out. I'm looking for the law firm because they did a $750 million, The offer and sale of the notes and any shares of SoFi's common stock issue upon conversion of the notes have not been registered under the Securities Act. Let's go look at this right here real quick, folks. I want you to thank uh, thank you for being here with me. And uh, it says, uh, today a note announced its intention to offer subject to market and other conditions, 750 million. And just so you guys and gals are aware of it, so if I had so many people wanting to get in on these convertible notes for 1.25% interest return, <laughs> and that's not why they want it in. They had so many that wanted in, they didn't just sell $750 million worth. They sold 800 It says $862 million is what they offered and got $862 million. All right. The notes will be unsecured, unsubordinated obligations of SoFi will accrue interest payable semi-annually, as I said. So two times a year, maturing on March 15, 2029, unless earlier repurchased redeemed or converted. Note holders will have the right to convert their notes in certain circumstances into cash and, if applicable, shares of SoFi's common stock. Upon conversion, SoFi will pay cash up to the aggregate principal of the notes to be converted and pay or deliver cash shares of its common stock or a combination of cash and shares of its common stock at SoFi's election in respect of the remainder, if any, of SoFi's conversion obligation. And the thing you have to understand the notes will also be redeemable in whole or in part for cash at SoFi's option at any time and from time to time on or after March 15th, 2027 and on or before the 30th scheduled trading day immediately before the maturity date, but only if the last reported sale price per share of common stocks exceeds 130% of the conversion price for a specific period of time. And I believe it's 30 days. Okay, so here's where I'm at, folks. The price of SoFi, these shares in these convertible notes, can be cashed in or turned into stock. But they can only be done so when the SoFi stock price reaches $12.29. And in fact, they can't do a dang thing with them at all 
until the price hits that 1229. They can't do anything, right? And then when the price is 1229, they'll be able to get $9.45 per note. And that is a lot better than what they paid at $7.27 is what the deal was signed at. Now, it was my belief and understanding that the uh, the brokerage that made the offer and now had to go out and gather up nearly 100 million shares of SoFi stock in order to have these shares available for conversion when these uh, folks want to convert over to the shares. Folks, that is my opinion, why the price last week dropped all the way down to the low that it did. I think that this brokerage house wants to get these things as low as they can possibly because they can just make more money, period. And I want you to know, uh, talking about PLTR, someone just mentioned it. Uh, TP said PLTR bled down from the nines to the low sevens prior to its second profitable quarter last year before blasting off and setting new support around 14 thereafter. That's right. That's exactly what I told everybody earlier. I told everybody the same thing earlier, that SoFi, that that um, uh, the PLTR did not make its major move to the upside until its second profitable uh, quarter that they reported uh, earnings profitable. So SoFi is in the same boat right here. They they made their first profitable, but that's not approvable. That hasn't. Uh, that's not defined as a as a as a run, folks. But when we see that second quarter, which we're about to announce here in, in just over a month, we're talking uh, a month and eleven days, folks. They're going to be releasing on April the 29th, and we're now March the 18th. So we're one month, eleven days away. And it was funny. I had a, I mentioned that on Friday. Some guy comes along. You're way off. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I do. I think I do know what I'm talking about. I think I'm right, and I was right. So, folks, I want to thank you all for being here with me this morning. I know there's plenty of other places you could go. I want to thank you all for hitting that like button. We've got a lot of people over here on the channel, and it's saying right now that there's an error that YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. As such, viewers will experience buffering. All right? So if you're feeling like you're getting polished right now, <laughs> You're getting buffered. Uh, that's why. All right. And uh, look at this volume already, folks, at almost 15 million shares. And just to, to give you some relevance to that, I'm going to swing back here to the date of October. Right here, October. So you got November, December, January, February, and now March, five months ago in October. The volume was 17 million for the entire day, 16 million for the entire day, 17 million the entire day, all right, 18 million, 16 million, 19 million for the whole day, folks, 15 million in September, all right, this is where they used to be when manipulating SoFi was easy on them, that used to be very easy when they were borrowing 15 or 18 million shares a day to short with when the volume was only 18 million for the total volume, 19 million, 15 million, 19 million, 16 million. Those days are long gone, folks. We're not seeing 17 million and 17 million for the whole day's trading. Folks, it's changed. We got freaking 14 million, 500,000 traded in less than an hour. Holy crap, everybody. These shorts are screwed. I'm telling you, they're totally, totally defenseless to this volume. And they can keep borrowing all they want. And they can keep digging that hole deeper and deeper and deeper. All right? That's my opinion. I could be wrong. But I don't think so. Now, we've got 75 people here on this channel. I'd like to ask you to do me a favor, if you would. The time right now, as you can see, is 10.33. So what I want to do is in one minute, please, I'd like to ask all of you that are here new to the channel to please hit the like button in one minute. 
We're going to do it now in 50 seconds from now. And I like to time these down because what happens, I've discovered, is that when we get them in, everybody hitting the like button at the same time, it does something to the YouTube algorithm and makes them go, whoa, uh, what's going on over here? This guy's talking about something that suddenly everybody's got interest in. And therefore, then they'll send my channel over to even more people. So in 30 seconds, let's all hit the like button together. We've got 70... Five people here on the channel now. We've got 35 likes. Let's see if we can get up over 40 likes. And we'll do it here in about 15 seconds, okay? So here we go. I'd like to ask you to help me out and get this channel to even more people. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Please hit that like button. And you don't need to smash it. You don't need to bash it. You don't need to pound it. You don't need to ground it and you don't need to do anything you know physically harmful to your mouse i'm just asking you to please hit the like button and for each and every one of you do i will put a heart on the screen for you so there's a heart on for you and uh we are counting down and i'm going to make sure that i hit a heart on for every single one who does in fact hit that like button and uh, i'm very grateful for you helping out this channel because the more people that we show this channel to the more people will get an understanding of my, why they might should buy the stock all right especially below seven dollars right now so here we go please hit that like button when we get it counted down and we will give you a heart on the screen thank you very much 45 likes all right that's a big jump folks we just went from 35 to 45 likes so there's 10 Hearts on the screen for you. There's a heart on for you. There's a heart on for you. There's a heart on for you and a heart on for you. All right. And folks, now what we're going to see is this volume isn't going to let up. And I'd like to encourage you to be aware of that, that this stock used to have this much volume in an entire days of trading. Okay. The whole day. All right. From 930 till 4. This is what we used to see for the whole day. And now we're seeing that volume in just over one hour, folks. Why? Well, that's how much interest there is in SoFi right now. That's how many people who probably are looking right now and go, damn, this is a great place to be buying this stock because they just turned profitable and they're going to have this next earnings call. And by the way, they're adding $40 million a year to the bottom line this year. And next year, that will turn to $60 million that they've added to the bottom line because they're not paying that much in interest on those high, high convertible notes they had before. But what they were called um, preferred shares that they had out there, $300 million. And now those that were paying, they were, were paying a high interest rate on those, and which was about to jump all the way up to 17.5% interest that they were going to have to pay. They just paid all that off. And now they are only paying 1.25% interest. And what that equates to is a change this following year from 60 million in interest to a fraction of that. Basically saves them $60 million, all right, that they can put right to the bottom line. And I got news for you. Although they're not able to tell which one of the top five banks just signed up for Galileo and their software and they're, and they're working with this top five bank, they're going to show you that revenue on the bottom line. Galileo's got other contracts they're also signing now because if you didn't hear it or not, with the interview with Anthony Noto last when he was interviewed by Kathy Wood, who's been just buying crazy amounts of shares lately, Kathy Wood just buying, buying, buying. Matter of fact, I saw a video that was put up by Trading Fundamental, something about another 2.5 million shares. I don't know who, if that was her that bought, bought them, but somebody's added another 2.5 million shares. And I didn't watch that video, but I saw it on their title. And look, we're about to go up over seven, folks. We're about to go up over seven. All those people that were just here on my channel an hour ago saying, we're going to six catfish, we're going to 650. And I told them I had I had removed every single one of those comments because I'm not going to put up with that BS on my channel. I'm not going to do it. If we get there, fine, I'll buy the damn thing. But I don't want you throwing out that number on my channel. Go over to the message board on Yahoo if you want to, and you can put it all there where the, all those other FUD f ruckers are, all right? trying to destroy the price, okay? Trying to scare people out of their shares here. And I'm not scared. I just bought more at 688 
look at that. I'm almost up freaking 20, uh, 10 cents on that. I'm probably up about 7000 or $8,000 from where I was this morning when the price was at 686 So I'm glad, and I'm glad you're here with me to share this. 80 folks here, I would like you very much to pay very close attention to the fact that this SoFi stock is about to explode on this next earnings call, everybody. This next earnings call, she's going to go ballistic. That's my feeling, and I think that's exactly why they've run the price down here during the last two or three days is because they know it too, and they're just going to try to profit from it as much as they possibly can. All right, so that's why they run it down. They scare people out of their shares, and I've seen this so many times before for all of you, the 80 of you that are on this channel. I want you to take a look at this real briefly here, okay? This won't take long for me to show you this. You can see it right here. And I've shown a lot of people this on the channel many times, but you need to understand this. On May the 15th, on David Chiverini's downgrade, the price of SoFi was driven all the way down to this price that's on the screen, right over here, 445, okay? He downgraded with a price target of 250 and the so, and the SoFi low went to 40, 445, May the 15th. Well, look at that. On June the 14th, not even a full month later, the price was already back up to 1023. Why? Nobody knows, okay? It's just a mystery. The very next day, SoFi gets downgraded by Oppenheimer, Piper, Sandler, and Bank of America, and the price drops all the way back down by June the 23rd. That was like nine days later, 771. Well, from June the 23rd to July the 19th, we're talking three weeks, the price was back up over 10 to 1013. From there, July 19th, to July the 27th, eight, nine days later, price is at 894, and two days after that, 1170. Oh my God, folks, talk about manipulation. This stock has been manipulated like no other. All right, from 1170, folks, it was 19 days later on August the 18th, and the price was driven down to 789. 789. From there, folks, 27 days later, back up to 918. And that, folks, is the same number we were at two weeks ago. But keep in mind, from the 918, they were able to stay after this for 66 days and drove the price down to the lowest it's been this year, 641, well, in the last six months. But lo and behold, after 641, 29 days later, there it is at 1016. 29 days later, 1016, a 40% profit almost. Then on that same day, the price was driven back down and closed at 923. Seven days later, it's at 1049. I think that you can see, folks, that this is one of the most heavily manipulated stocks. And from each high to each loader, the, the, the change has been about 29.5%. 29.5% from each high to each low. And I'm pointing out to everybody here also that the volume has already reached 15.5 million shares. And folks, that used to be the volume we'd see over an entire year, uh, day, over an entire day. That was the volume we would see over an entire day was 15.5 million, 16 million shares for the entire day. And now we're seeing that in freaking an hour and 22 minutes? Holy crap. An hour and 12 minutes? Uh-oh. Look out, shorty. See, this is the main reason I keep telling everybody that the shorts are in such deep trouble. Because the volume level has gone way up on them as of late. There's just a lot of interested parties. And there's a lot of people that understand, in case you weren't aware of this, that the convertible note offering that was just made by SoFi last week was matched. There was a convertible load, uh, uh, load offering, note offering, a senior convertible note offering that was offered up here by Uber on November the 21st when Uber's price was $50, $54.85. They did a $1.5 billion senior convertible note. Uber, when their price was right around... Uh, $48 and or so, 
or $54.85 Uber, okay? And I'm going to show you <laughs> what has happened to Uber, all right, S stock since they did the convertible note, all right? And this is just so you're aware of the difference and what it means when they did this senior convertible note. And they did that on November the 21st. And now I'm going to show you the chart from November the 21st till current. And the price when they did the senior convertible notes, as I said, was far lower than we are right now. So I see this senior convertible note deal as an awesome move by SoFi to repeat exactly what or come close to. And here it is, November the 21st, right there. 54.85 a share and now it's sitting at 75 bucks a share. And this is when they did their convertible note, November the 21st, folks. So you need to be aware of this, okay? In case you weren't aware of it. I'm making sure everybody knows because it's that important. The price is nearly freaking doubled on this stock since they did the convertible notes. And look at SoFi now. In case you're not aware of it, uh, they're showing the day's range from 686 to 706. That's not true. <laughs> In the pre-market, I saw SoFi sitting at $7.11. And uh, it was up over a percentage point. And uh, it's going to go back there. It's going back there, folks. Yep. Rusty Patter message uh, Ian Long, buy time for GCT. Oh. oh, my God. They're attacking it again, huh? All right, maybe it is. I think this must be a sign from the SoFi Gods. Got 7777 shares at 777. Wow. I like that, Rusty. Sounds to me like you're in safe hands there. It sounds like you're in a, a safe hands. GCT. Let's take a look at it. GCT stock. We've seen one thing, every single time they attack this stock down, it just skyrockets on higher. So I appreciate you telling me about it. Holy smokes. <laughs> you remember when we first started talking this about this stock? It was at like $9 a share. It's at 35 now when we first started buying this thing. There's no way you can lose money on this if you got in when I first started talking about this. There's no way. It's not going to happen. But I agree, it looks like another uh, day of uh, manipulation, but they're trying to double dagger it here, so we'll wait and watch. I might pick up some more of it. But uh, I'm not too highly incentivized because I own it for such less. <laughs> it's hard for me to pay that much for it. Six ninety six dollars now. That's a new high, folks, for the day right now. They're showing seven oh six, dollars but uh, I don't see that number anywhere. I don't see it, not on the day chart. Never was it at 706. It was in the pre market. And it was actually, that's false because it was at 711. So there you go, folks. I'm pointing out to you right now SoFi is, in fact, at the high of the day in the day trading session. You're seeing that right now. It just eclipsed the uh, earlier high that they had tried to pull it down from right there. And that number was 695. And they tried to yank it all the way down. And this one bottom, 692. Forget about it, people. When you see a low right here of $6.87, and then the, the next low that they could get is $6.92, they're in trouble. All right, five cent higher low right there, and now you can see it's rising even higher. And how are they going to stop it from going up from here is the question I'd like to ask. How in the hell are these shorts going to stop it when they're only borrowing 15 uh, million shares a day with the short width? All right. Now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look at something else. It's called cost to borrow. And I want to look at what's going on just in case we're seeing a big raise in the cost to borrow SoFi shares today. So we're going over here and here we go. Cost to borrow. Was up here at 1.025. And by the way, the week prior on March the 7th, it was 0.037. And now it went up to 1.025, and here it's rising again today. It's still double what it was on March the 7th right now, where it is right now. It's still double the cost of borrow. Now, granted, that's not a large interest rate to pay, but if on Friday that's only down 1%, then that's a two, that's a loss for the shorts. That's an, an actuality. It's, a, it's not a winner there. Oh, my goodness. 
And look at this now, folks. We're going over 16 million shares. And I just got through showing some of you here on my channel. 16 million shares traded in an hour and 28 minutes. And we used to trade that much all day long. See here, back in October, 17,191,16,675. Look how low the volume used to be. 17 million, 17 million. Way down here, folks, the volume was so low. 17 million for the whole day. 15 million for the entire day. No wonder it was so easy for them to manipulate this stock. 19 million, 16 million, 18 million. A piece of cake to manipulate when you're borrowing 15 to 18 million shares to short with. 17 million, 17 million. The entire day's volume was at this level. 13 million right there. Oh my God. Folks, I'm telling you, things have changed. Things have big time changed, folks. Things have changed. And I, there's just too many people now wanting to buy these stock, this stock every time they try to run it down. There's too many coming in and swooping up those shares. And now why? Because I think they're all looking forward to this very next earnings call we've got coming our way. 697 now. Oh, yeah. Bought it at 688. Price is at 697. And I have it a lot lower than this. Bought it at 466 and 467 months ago. And now it's at 697, about to go back up over $7. And it will. I believe it very much will. I could be wrong, but I don't see how they can stop it. I just don't see how they can stop it from going any higher. And there's a lot of institutions, by the way, that you might not know about that own this stock for over $11 a share, over 12 and over 13. And I want to show you something here. I'm going to go over here to another bookmark that I like to show. And that is going to be hedge funds buying in bookmarks. And I want you to see the increasing hedge funds coming in on this stock and how much more they've been buying of it recently. So here we go. I'm going to show you right now, all 86 of you that are on the channel with me right now. And we've had 329 here today. You see my title, What's Next? Is it going to be tennis? I mean, they've already gone. SoFi has gone with football, with their stadium. They've, they've gone over into the NBA. They're going into PGA golf. And next, what is it, tennis? Look at all these institutions. Look at Kathy Wood having raised her percentage value by 143%. Look at Tudor Investment. Brand new came in big time. This is zero star rated analyst, Tudor Investment, Paul Tudor Jones. Just took up 480,000 shares of SoFi stock. I guess he's wanting to raise his star rating. Look at Schofield increases by 2100%. Look at Millennium Management increases their position by 645%, folks. What the hell do these people know that we don't, right? Citadel Advisors, Ken Griffin, up raises 632%. This is a shorter, folks. This guy's a hedge fund short and full. Raises his position 632%. Look at Jane Street Group, jumps up 125%. Look at Jeffrey's Financial, up 73,000%, folks. Oh, my God. Geo Capital, up 4.9%. These people, Dimensional Fund, just picked up 3.88 million shares. And, folks, guess what? They're, they're long. They're long on the stock. They're not day trading it. State Street Group comes up 8%. Ensign Peak raises 42% on their position. This is 1.2 million shares they just picked up. Armistice Capital picks up 18,000 shares new. This one here, 20, 224,000 shares new. And they're, this is liquidating the SoFi share tree, okay, is what they're doing. And the, folks, these are big time players using big time money. Okay, they own $53 million, $45 million, $28 million, $17 million, $148 million, $402 million. Folks, these people own massive amounts of SoFi for a very damn good reason. And they're not believing anyone who's on my channel today saying the price is going to six. And even if it did, they would buy another $5 million there. 
Yeah. You see my thumbnail today about what's next for SoFi. Are they going to get into tennis? And I hope you like on my thumbnail that I actually have a SoFi ball, the tennis ball with SoFi's name on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, why not? I mean, SoFi's expanded into every venue there is. They're going to be having the World Cup soccer coming to their stadium in Los Angeles. And uh, in case you've never and don't know this, the stadium that SoFi has now in Los Angeles is the number one top tourist attraction in the state of California. It is surpassing Disneyland uh, and uh, any other uh, location in uh, the area. They're all coming out to come to see SoFi Stadium and SoFi's mega shopping center, okay? It's the biggest attraction there is in the state of California, in case you weren't aware of it. Yep, Carl Seamark says they have influence in the NFL, the NBA. It has to be hockey and baseball next, the four big sports. It easily could. I, I easily see them. They've already realized the return on this investment of going into sports venues, and it's been a great way for them to get, at, capture more and more customers. And so they're going to continue this, I believe. And I already know, in case you don't know about it, TGL Golf, they had already, they were planning on starting it at the beginning of this year. They were going to have their debut on December the 30th before the roof had a problem because it's air supported and they lost power to the stadium and the roof came down. Well, it wasn't a steel roof. It was just had some steel girders and then the, it was a canvas type material that they have over the top. I'm not sure what the material is, but at, at any rate, uh, when the uh, power went out at the stadium, it, it it lost the air support that keeps it uh, floating. And uh, it came down and it tore up. And they're fixing it, folks. They already got it underway. They'll get it. They'll get it all together. And they'll be announcing the, the debut again, which will be on ABC, most likely. Because ABC is in also with uh, ESPN, ESPN+, Plus, ESPN1, ESPN2, and ESPN+. Plus. And folks, they're going to be showing these uh, golf matches on TGL Golf. It's an indoor venue at the stadium that's already, the auditorium's already built. It's down there in uh, Palm Palm Beach, Florida, Palm Gardens. It's at a college there. The World World Cup will be the most watched sport event in the world. That's right. And SoFi is going to have their name all over that. And folks, this is just more exposure for this company, in case you weren't aware of it. Now, I want to thank you all for being here with me. I want to thank you for hitting that like button. I'm very, very glad that we got so many people here that are coming to the channel because of uh, news that's breaking about this company. Uh, I already mentioned several things that are looking very good. One of them is the fact that all these institutions have been coming in like mad. Here we go, folks. Back over seven. 698 right now. And again, I question each and every one of you who was here earlier today. If you guys want to go back up the screen here on all the conversation, you're going to see that Catfish had to remove a lot of people's co comments today. See right here? This one here by Peabody's Raw Honey. I deleted this message. This one here by Mel Smith. I deleted this message. They're all calling out for $6 price targets and $6.50 and $6.30. And I said, no, you're wrong. And not only am I so confident that you're wrong, I'm going to delete your messages because they're negative and they do not match my, uh, and I even asked each and every one of those people that, that put those prices out, could, could you explain how that's going to happen? I don't mind you uh, having different opinions from mine and you're all entitled to your own beliefs, but I ask you please to define and explain why. Why is SoFi's price going to go to six fifty or six dollars? Don't just throw it out there like they do on the message boards every day on Yahoo. Give me a defining reason why. Explain. Come on, break it down. I want to hear it. And not one of them came up with a reason. See, they just throw out the number. And as, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I could be wrong, but they're shorters. They're shorting the stock. And they want you to sell your shares to them because it's going to go all the way. You might as well sell them here almost just under seven and get them back at six. That's what a smart person would do. Don't take the loss from seven all the way down to six or 650. Sell them now and then buy back lower. That's what they're trying to convince you of. And I said, nah, -uh, not on my channel. Not on my channel, folks. 
six ninety nine. Oh yeah, I'm ringing that bell, folks, because I bought it at six eighty eight this morning. Again, capturing almost the very low of the day, as I always do. And what do you know? With all the naysayers. Oh, once she drops below seven, she's going to six. <laughs> all right. Good for you guys and gals. I'm glad you believe that. I'm glad that's where your buy orders are. Uh, too bad you didn't buy it at the lowest it's ever going to be again, 686 this morning. I feel sad for you. But you keep believing that 650 or $6 price, just like David Chiapanzi. And as I said to them this morning, why would you throw out that number, $6.00? Six fifty. Why don't you just jump on the champ Chia Pansy wagon and say the price is going all the way down to three dollars? Don't stop there at six or six fifty, you dweebs. <laughs> Mel, Mel Smith, I'm buying. Yeah, Mel Smith bought a bunch of shares. He's got a lot of shares. He's a big cat here in the tank. I want to thank you for being here. Oh, DB joins the tank with a splashy donation. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you, DB. Yes, I am buying TENX, and I own a lot of BITF. I did sell the majority of my BITF at $398 the other day. I'm not even looking at 10X or BITF now, but let's look at some TNX. Give me a moment, folks. I'll be right back. Just give me a moment. I'll be right back here. 10X, Stock, Yahoo, TENX. T-E-N-X. Where is it now? I already told you about this, too. You don't need to just uh, follow this stock every day. Oh, that looks good. A good buying opportunity again on T-E-N-X. Uh, buy it and then set your sell orders in at $49, at $65, at $87, and at $98. Bucks, okay, buy this stock and put them in there and just leave it. Yep, just leave it there. All right, DB, thank you very much. Good morning and thank you, DB. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, my typing skills today. All right. DB comes right into the tank, doesn't say anything at all, but just goes, bam, there's some money for you, Catfish. Thank you for what you do. Holy smokes. Uh, let's go take a look at BITF this morning, too, just to see where it is. And uh, like I said, I need to take a break here just briefly. I'll be right back. BITF. Uh, do, 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 do. Come on, BITF, where the heck are you? There, it's loading up. Carl Seema, my only concern is that I had already filled out my position at $8. It's order to cost average down. I am buying extras. I hear you. I think Ortex short count is way behind. I believe we were well over 20% shorted, and I believe you're right as well. I believe you're right as well. 705. What the hell is that? That's not that was earlier. Oh my God. Look at this thing, folks. What the hell is happening with SoFi now? All that fear and all the scaredy cats on this channel this morning. What a bunch of wussies. I told them all, get your butt out of here and head on over to Tanner's channel. Oh, you weak-minded, sorry, <laughs> scaredy cats. Oh, yeah, baby. Breaking right back up over $7 and gonna go green today. 17 million shares already traded in an hour and a half. We're going to go over 40, 50 million again today. And what is going to happen now? How are they going to stop this SoFi from running up, folks? How are they going to hold it back? BITF at 228. That's a good place to be buying some of that. 
I haven't looked at Bitcoin today yet. I did not do that, but I'm going to look at it right now. You guys remember when I started talking to you about Bitcoin, that the price of Bitcoin was around uh, $55,000. And uh, I told you that it was going way higher. I told you so. And I told you why. All right. Now, like I said, folks, just please give me a minute. I will be right back. I, I want to thank you for being here with me. Just give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. I got to go. I got to. Uh, the dog is no longer here today. Willis has gone back to with my stepson. Thank you. And we want to make sure and put DB in here now for that donation right then that DB did. Thank you very much. So DB, you go to the very top. DB, going to the top, back up to the top spot. All right. DB. All right, there you go. And YZ came in here with $50 donation on Friday. Gosh, dang. And I make sure everybody knows. All right, I'll be right back, folks. Just give me a minute. Let me go get some more coffee, and I'm going to clear my sinuses. I'll be right back. Hold on, everybody. Don't go nowhere. I'll get some more water here. Get some more coffee. Ugh.
everybody, it's time to get back on track with Catfish Tyler. I am so glad you're here with us today, and I hope you have a good time with the King Cat. I'm out of here. Go see if I can get myself in some trouble. Bye-bye, everybody. Have fun with King Cat. All right, we're back in here. Yes, indeed. Back at it. Back at the wheel. I want to thank you all for being here with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I know there's many other places you could go and hang out. We're going green, baby. I believe it. I do indeed agree that we are going to be going green today. And uh, boy, are they making an effort to stop it, though. Boy, I have to tell you, I'm impressed with how much they've driven so hard. They've worked so hard, and they're trying so desperately to try to keep this price down. And uh, you got to hand it to them, boy, that they're dedicated to what they're trying to do. But they're not going to scare anybody out at down half a percent, folks, or even less than a percent. That's not a scare tactic that's working for them. I'm afraid they're going to have to get it down 20% to get any stop losses, and that's not going to happen. It's not in the future. Burt Barron said, good morning, cat. Checks. Uh, GT, I have to hold on. Hang on. Hang on. GNS, okay. GNS on the five-day. Yeah, I, I already told you, man, I made a ton of money off this GNS stock way back when, when they were talking about going after the shorts and there was just so much money to be made on this thing. It was insane. But I I, I got uh, to one point, it got very bad for them, very bad. And I just stopped. I stopped messing with them. I just stopped messing with them. I made so much money off of them, but then I just stopped screwing with them. Yeah. Co-founder leaves March 25th, 2017. GNS. I threw in the towel with them. I said, I'm done. They dropped it just nothing, fractions of what they were at one time. Now, why are we getting such a delay on this screen? My main page shows me I got a major delay, so I'm going to change this right now. DB, hello. Can you let me know a good entry price for GCT? Yeah, we're going to watch it. I got it on here. I got it on the chart, and I'm watching. Let's look at this one-year chart on it. See if we can get an indicator on the one-year chart. All right. Quite honestly, this right here is a 20% stop losses being triggered right now on the stock. And so I like this number 34.13. Uh, we'll, we'll see if they can get it down into the 3388s. So maybe 3389, because I see right here it was a level of resistance uh, at 3231, but I see another level of resistance at 3390 right there. When they were trying to drive it down, that was a level of resistance before it went right on down. But uh, you might be good to put in a, a small order up here, uh, right around this number, right where we are right now. I think you'd be okay here. Look for 30, look for 3397 or 3389. Okay. Cause even if it gets to 3388, it won't be for long. So 3397. And I'm only saying that because I saw that as a point of resistance on the way up and it dropped way back down from there. And by the way, don't buy a lot there. If you buy a lot at 33.97, that's your entry point, a small amount to test the waters with, okay? All right? Right here where we're at, you can see this thing made a long climb and then that was a resistance point at 34.50 and that thing dropped like a rock to 25.96. So you might even want to put in a massive massive buy order in there at 25.97 or make it see, now you know why I just said the 97, because look at that price. It went down to 25.96. So 33.97 would be the first place I'd pick up a few shares. 33.97, but I wouldn't go heavy at all there. Uh, but that could easily be the point right there where we are, where it turns and comes off of that 97. There's 33.93 right there. So here we go, 33.89. And if that fails to hold up right there, 
then then it's going to go all the way down to this. It's going to go to $30.84. All right, so just be aware of that. If this fails to hold here, right here, it could easily drop all the way down to here. We'll keep an eye on it, but don't come in here heavy at all. No, this is an entry point only. Entry and testing the waters. 33.66 might be good. There's the 33.67 or 68, and that might be it. That might be it. It might have been it. 33.66 is what they were trying for, it looks like right now. So I would pick up some right here on a market share buy. Look at that. It's already back to 33.99. So they were going for the 33.66. That's what they had. And now I would, if you want to play the short game on this, you're probably pretty safe to pick up some right here after they just hit that 33.66 number, which we know they like so much. So, uh, but be cautious. Again, you're not going to get a lot here because if it doesn't hold up at the 33.66 that you just hold, it's going to come down here to 30.84. All right. Or maybe this number right here, which looks like uh, 32.31. 32.31. So I'm looking at that number there for one bottom. Uh, right where it is right now, 34.03 was a bottom before 34.03. The next place I'm looking for a bottom is 3390. The next place I'm looking for a bottom is 3231. And the last place I'd look for a bottom is 3084. And it could easily go all the way down here to 2596, but I don't think that'll happen again. I think that was just an entry point for the people that were going to run it on up here like they did. So just be cautious. Be cautious with it. And look at this big old candlestick right here that just came in at 11.13 again, folks. It's the same freaking time as on Friday. 11.13, they start in with a big sell uh, there at 11.13. We'll go over here on the one-day chart and look at it. See if we can see how many shares they just dumped. Right at the one, and it, was, and it registered at 1.14 or 11.14. Same thing they did on Friday. Exact same thing. Same time. Exact same time. Because I even mentioned to people on Friday what time it was. I said, hey, it's 11.13 in case you didn't notice. And there it is. Let's move it over here and zoom in on it. One day... Hey, I thank you for being here. There's 72 people on here right now. What we'd like to do here, it's 11, 1120. Uh, do me a favor in 30 seconds. So let's hit the like button together, everybody. Uh, let's see if we can get the likes from 51 right on up. Let's see what we can get to. Man, I might have to go take a Zizol here, folks. Well, the dog's bed is still in here behind me, and I better get it out of here because I think it's just really bugging me right now. Uh, my number one allergic uh, reaction is to dog dander, they said, animal dander. So uh, I've been with that dog here in the house with me, sneezing my full head off. There it is at 11.14, probably 11.13. And I'm trying to pick it up on this chart on this chart right here and see if we can see that big, big spike. Come on, this page is slowing down Firefox. There it is right there. It wasn't, it was nothing compared to what they were doing on Friday, that's for sure, whatever it was just now. There it is. Just 2 million shares, no 12 million like we saw a lot of on Friday and 15 million and 9 million and just 2 million shares there at 11. And notice the price was unaffected by that, was literally unaffected by that right there, hardly. All right, there's where it came in at 11.14 and they made the price drop. And this is what I'm talking about from $7 to $6.97. So see how that big sale order right there made it drop $7. We weren't seeing that on Friday. 
We were seeing 12 million share orders and supposedly several of those at 12 million shares and we were not seeing the price move a penny even, hardly over a penny. And I mentioned the oddity of that and I thought that didn't make any sense. And I think those are fake orders. I think they never were filled and I don't think that they ever, I think they were failure to delivers. And uh, that was on Friday's chart, folks. We saw so many of these outrageous massive spikes on Friday's chart. Look at these spikes here. And we added them up, folks, and they didn't make sense. They didn't make sense to the volume total for the day. And just for curiosity's sake, what was the volume total Friday? 52 million. 52,674. And look where the hell we are now. Holy smokes, everybody. God, 21 million shares already traded against these suckers. And how are they going to stop it from going up? That little 2 million share was a real sale order, not like the fake ones we saw all here on Friday. Look at that fake order there that they tried to make you think that 8 million shares were traded right there. And the price only dropped from uh, 698 to 696. 8 million shares. And then they tried to show you over here, 9 million shares. The price dropped from 698 on 9 million shares to 695 on 9 million. I don't think so. And then over here, they tried to show you how many shares, 10.81 million shares. And the price didn't even fall one whole penny. I showed you this on Friday. They None of this made sense. Here, they're showing 12.55 million shares and the price didn't even drop. I don't think so, people. I don't think so. Open door. All right, now let's get back over here and look at some of these other ones. All right, so it was, in fact, 3366 was their number there, DP, that they were aiming for. 3366, and they got it there. It was there for just a fraction of a second. And so, as I said, once I saw it turn there and come back up over 34, I thought it was a good spot. They triggered the 20% stop losses, and that's what they were trying to do. And that's how they got it to 1366 is by triggering those 20% stop losses. So I think you're safe to get a few shares here, but entry would be light at this stage of the game, and hopefully that it holds up. But you can see back down over 20% now. So just be very careful with this one. I would be watching for a little while. Um, <clears throat> now, some other stocks that we want to look at today and see how they're doing compared to the rest of the pack, PLTR. And I show people, man, this damn thing went ballistic on its second positive earnings. Went nuts. God. GNS going right on up. What they announced today. Group releases additional details of Fat Brain AI trend transaction four hours ago. Man, I just don't see that. that to me, that just isn't enough. Not even merit a 17% move. I, I say no. Just be careful, everybody. Just be very careful. We buy at the bottom, not at the top, my friend. I appreciate you telling us about GNS, but we buy it at the bottom, not at the top. There's a lot more risk to the downside than there is upside on that one, if you ask me. I could be definitely wrong, but I don't think so. <clears throat> we got our eyes on another one open, and someone mentioned this to me. I said the same thing earlier. Don't buy this here by as it approaches three. I would not do it, and I was glad I said that because it's dropping now.
And now they try the double head fake on GCT here. They're trying uh, what I call the double dagger. Yeah. Oh, extreme caution here, folks. Very extreme caution. I did like seeing that 3366 number hit and then turn and bounce off of that. So others were watching that, but we're looking at it again and they're definitely coming at it again right now. So let's just be mindful about this one. 10X, I'd be buying here. You know the damn thing will be back up over 5 or $6 on this next announcement. They got some big announcement coming soon. They're going to, six days ago, they announced that uh, they were going to be presenting at the 36th annual Roth Conference. And I want to see when this presentation is for this uh, Roth conference. Conference. All right. I see that that you didn't buy into GCT yet. So it says here, folks, that starting right now from March seventeenth through the nineteenth. This is when this uh, conference is, the Roth conference. And it says that 10X Therapeutics, a phase three development stage pharmaceutical company focused on identifying, developing, and commercialing products that address cardiovascular and pulmonary diseases with high unmet medical need, today announced that it will participate in the 36th annual Roth conference in Dana Point, California from March 17th to the 19th, 2024. 10X's CEO, Chris Giordano will provide an update on the company and the ongoing development of Level 7 done. In a conference session, investors can attend in person or via webcast. <clears throat> webcast, click here. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> Let us find out more. First name. Uh-oh. -uh. Registering. <clears throat> March 18th at 3 p.m., folks. Ah, it says here this presentation will begin in six hours and 29 minutes. So, 3 p.m. Pacific time. All right. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. Be square. I got gotcha. you. Hope you've got. 25 of those shares for sale at $49, 25 at 65, 25 at 87, and 25 at 98. You just make a lot of money off of it one day. Just make enough to go out and have a very nice dinner and cocktails or a nice bottle of vino. Je ne sais pas si c'est possible qu'il y a quelqu'un ici qui parle français. Je dis aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup que vous êtes ici avec moi aujourd'hui. And, uh, you know, say it's possible. Tengo um, amigos or amigas aquí que hablan español también, pero yo puedo hablar español, español como ustedes. Gracias por ustedes aquí como amigo hoy. And, uh, si c'est possible, no hay alguien ici que va a hablar español avec moi. Digo, merci que vous êtes ici avec moi. Or Jodia. <laughs> and now we're not parlé about 
plus tard après qu'on fin parler anglais avec tout le monde ici qu'il là. And that is Creole for you. A little bit of uh, French, Spanish, and Creole coming your way from Catfish WSFI. That's right. Stock symbol SoFi is what we predominantly talk about here, but we talk about many other stocks that we've made a lot of money on, and uh, we're going to continue to do that. One of them is this one, S-O-U-N. And someone was gonna was asking me what I was going to do with that, and if I was going to hold it. Look at that. Beautiful, down 7%. And you guys know I sold this again the other day. I sold it at the high. I said, I'm out. Sold it all. Tally ho, S-O-U-N, I said, because I don't hold through earnings. <sighs> Can you believe that, though? Bought that stock at 375, 378, 370, so a whole bunch of stock down there in that price, and then sold it all at 770, 733, then bought it back lower again at 576, 572, 566, 566, 566. Oh my gosh, this stock has just been a freaking gold mine for us. We've just been killing it with this one, S-O-U-N. Those of you that bought with me and sold, and I want to thank you for uh, doing so uh, and making a lot of money off of it, making lots and lots of money off of it. And uh, unbelievable, sold all those at 705, 7, 692, 698. I mean, we just been buying it and bought them back down in the lows again and then sold them up high again. So this stock has been killing it, man. Day traders dream come true. And it looks like it might be a good place to be making another entry in it even here. Uh, looking at this six month chart, though, though, just look at that ridiculousness. Oh, my God. The money we made. Oh, my gosh, folks. Look at the money we made. Dollar sixty three in February. <laughs> Eight twenty five. Holy smokes, smoking. And uh, let's take a look at some other ones we've got here on our radar right now. STEM, we're going to look at that. Some of you are holding STEM with me, I know. And uh, by the way, I understand uh, another one that we're holding that we're kind of long on is NU. And apparently that has done very good too. NU, NU. So let's go over, take a look at NU. We have a few others here recently that have been brought to our attention. One of them is RSI, Rush Street Interactive. This is one that our Danny Dimes gentleman thought looked pretty good. Uh, Double K is the one that brought this to our attention. And S-O-U-N, looking good. Get on back over here to SoFi. There we go. So fast, so fast, so fast. I got 73 people on this channel right now. And uh, let's do 8, 16, 24, 36 is a good number. And so at 1136, right now, let's all hit the simultaneous like button. Boom. If you don't mind, 1136. A multiple of 8, 30 close enough, 8, 16, 24, 32. Let's hit it right now. Hit that like button and then get these likes up to maybe 60. Let's see if we can accomplish that. That'd be nifty. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here with me on this channel. I know there's plenty of other places you could be. Open door looks like a good spot right here. Looks like it's turned off this bottom, but we might see a lunchtime low, so just don't take my word for it. And if you're coming in here, do it lightly. And then we might see it continue to go on up. This made a nice move today. Dave Ramsey says, take Social Security at age 62. Open door technologies rises at market dips. Take it in the key facts. I burned one whole calorie and hit the like button. Yeah. Part of Catfish Tyler's physical fitness program is including hitting the like button. Lose a calorie, hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen, please. Come on over to the program and hit that like button. And let's see if we can get up to around 68 or 70 likes today. So far, here we are. Monkeying around, trying to get this screen to come up. 
And we're looking at a lot of other stocks as well. There's many other stocks that we've been talking about on this channel that have done very good for us over the last few. We're looking at NU. All right. They just tried to run it down. And now the turnaround on NU, folks. And it's probably going to go back up here to 1174 or higher. High was 1176. And by the way, the 52-week range on this stock was today's high, 1176. Right there. So how about that, folks? We just hit the new annual high on NU. Those of you that are holding NU with me, congratulations. I'm not holding a whole boatload of shares, but I've got several. And so there you go. NU going off today to a new 52-week high. For those of you that were not aware of it. We're looking also at another one here, GNS. And now it's up 17% at 58 cents. And extreme caution should be used here. And I would, if I owned it, I'd be taking profit here. That's what I would do. I'd get out. I would get out. I had somebody asked me about it earlier, and I would certainly be considering cutting loose that stock and getting out of it right now. And uh, if I was shorting SoFi, I consider the same thing. Get out of your shorted positions now. Why you can, for the last time, below $7. Get out of them now would be the smartest move you could make. Because, folks, when SoFi releases earnings this next time around, they're going to blow people's minds, is my opinion. I think they're going to absolutely slaughter the shorts. And look at this crossing over seven right now, folks. So this is a good place. The last time that you're going to see the picture below seven dollars ever possibly so i'm gonna take a picture of it right now last time below seven i like to capture an image of it right here right now no other place i'd rather be and i got it in all your comments at that moment in time i think that'll be cool to have a picture of that very cool indeed Last chance, folks. <sighs> Last chance for so far below $7, but I don't know for sure. I burned one whole calorie. Good morning, KMO504. <clears throat> We're about to have a green, green day. Yeah, that's soon underway. You can see it. it's okay. 22,800,000 shares traded before lunchtime, folks. We're going to smash through 40 million shares today. SoFi is going to be green. God bless all of those shorters who worked so hard for us this morning to get the price down to 686. So thank you for all of your effort. I'm sorry that it's 11 and now 12 cents higher than where you work so hard to get to and that it's going to be at $12.29 within about probably three to six months. But that's the price you pay, Shorty. And we want to thank you, <clears throat> all of you who are here on the channel right now. <clears throat> Good morning. We are sharing in uh, many other stocks that we're looking at right now, besides just SoFi. And you saw my thumbnail, folks, about is it tennis next? Well, it might be. They're all, they're all over the sporting world. Someone even mentioned earlier it could even be going into baseball or hockey. And uh, that's the next biggest ones. In case you didn't know it, <clears throat> Mickey, Ma Mickey Mocky Salapets. Hey, Tyler, why do you want to sell SoFi when it hits $12 when it will be higher than that? Well, there's going to be a reason, first of all, that it gets to 1229 and even higher. But I didn't say I was going to sell it all there. <laughs> I've already got sell orders on SoFi all the way up to 3998. So there's no way in the world I would sell all my shares at 12. My shares are up for sale. Uh, and I can do it to such a high number because I have a, um, I have a margin account. Some people can't go that high. They can only go. Someone told me they, they were not allowed to put in a sell order on SoFi higher than $24.99 right now. And so if you've got that ability, put it in at $24.99. <clears throat> if 
And don't put all of your shares up there for that amount because as it goes up to 10s, 11s, and 12s and higher over time, uh, then, you know, it each, here's here's what you don't understand, Mickey. I'm a day trader, all right? I make money day trading. And I've been day trading so far for a long time now. And I know the numbers where they're going to hit where I sell. And then I know the numbers are going to pull it back to where I buy back in, all right? So that's what I've been doing for everybody on this channel now for over almost a year now. And they've watched me do it over and over where I've sold at 1013 and bought back in the sixes and I've sold at 1023 and I've bought back in the sevens and I've sold at uh, 10, what was the last one? 1049 and I bought back at 641. I mean, folks, I have sold this stock so many times and bought it back at such incredibly lower numbers. It's ridiculous. I mean, it really is ridiculous. And uh, it doesn't pay to hold it long. That's why it doesn't pay as much. Now, it's going to pay all those people who bought in when when SoFi was down in the fours and the fives and the sixes and the sevens. It's going to pay all those people. And then they'll hold it for 20 years and it'll be worth 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 a share or maybe higher by then. It could be in the hundreds. And uh, I'm certainly not going to limit it. Okay, I'm not going to limit how high this stock can go. Some people say, how high do you think it will go when it reaches its peak? Well, it's already over $28 a share, this stock was. Okay. And uh, the other thing, Mickey, uh, that I have is I have a lot of stocks for sale up at those numbers so they can't be borrowed. I don't want shorts to be able to use my shares against us. Okay. And you should do the same thing. If everybody who owned and bought SoFi long put their sell orders in at $24.99 right now, you'd be surprised how short of a time it would be until the price was at $24.99. But there's just so many that come in and don't know this. And so people buy it and they're just going to hold it forever. They don't put a sell order in. And they're not thinking because now, guess what? Every single day they're calling the brokerage and saying, hey, can I borrow some? Yeah, I got plenty. We got a lot of people who bought this stock. They just don't have it for sale. But if they were to all put their sell orders in at much higher numbers, there would be so few shares on the tree, not to mention another 100 or 90 so million that just got taken off the tree. See, here's the part about this convertible note deal that people are missing. That convertible note deal locks up virtually almost 100 million shares that get taken away from the shorts to borrow from because they have to be secured. Those shares have to be secured by the brokerage that's offering the deal for the convertible notes. So they've got to gather all those shares up, which I think they've been doing during this week. And uh, even today, I think they got more because the lower they can get those shares, the better for them. And not only better for them, believe it or not, the better for SoFi. I know it sounds crazy, but this is true. So think about it. This brokerage that just squared the deal away and signed it all at a price of $7.27 a share and got all these people to sign up for the convertible notes at that number, $7.26 per share. Well, hell, if they can get them now at six six eight uh, 97 and 696 and it's whatever, that, that's that's just more money in their pocket, folks. I'm telling you, if, if they were down there buying just now at 686, and something tells me they might have been buying on Friday too. I'm pretty sure they were because they've got to get these shares. They've got to have them. Just signing the deal with everybody doesn't mean anything. Now they the brokerage has to go out and absorb these shares and take them under their wing and and they can't be touched. You're talking about not just $750 million, but $862.5 million worth. What is $862 million divided by $6.98 total? What is 862 million divided by seven? It's approximately 123,142,857.1428. 123 million shares at $7 a share. 
So that's how many shares just got taken off of the SoFi outstanding share tree. And that's not going to make it easier on Shorty either. All right. And if I can just get this message across to every single long who owns shares of SoFi stock and make sure they put sell orders in on them so they couldn't be borrowed, that would make the price go up so damn fast, folks, your head would spin. Mickey Maki Salapets, I'm just want to go long on the stock average buy in at 740. Yep. I hear you. What do you what do I think of BTTX? I like buttocks. If you were brought over to this channel because you're trying to figure out about tennis and what's going on with SoFi and tennis, I'll tell you. Uh, SoFi is doing this deal. Um, they're opening up a whole new golf program, in case you weren't aware about it. It's called TGL Golf. It's being introduced to the world by two of the best players known in golf, Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. And SoFi is going to be doing an indoor venue that they are going to be having teams from all over the country. They have teams from Boston, teams from New York, teams from California, and teams from all over. And part of who's behind this is the Serena Williams sisters, okay? <clears throat> BTTX is a pink. First of all, it's a pink stock, meaning it's on the pink list. It's down, it's a penny stock, okay? Now, the thing is, <laughs> it's a two cents a share so if it goes to four cents a share you doubled your money all right all right but let's go look at the one year chart uh no <laughs> i don't think anything of bttx except this and that is the downside potential here and there's a term that says never try to catch a falling knife and so i would definitely not be going into this stock that chart looks absolutely horrendous and man, what a cliff. From 20 cents all the way down to two and then down, oh no. <laughs> wow. All right. Look at here, four days ago, Better Therapeutics announces it will seek strategic alternatives and will be delisted from the NASDAQ. <laughs> How are you going to trade that when they're delisted? I'll just say no, step away from that dangerous stock. That's nothing like SoFi. Their charts would look nothing like SoFi. Their growth would look nothing like SoFi. Look at their daggum earnings. They're losing money. Earnings, negative 6.39 million, negative 40 million, negative 39 million. No, that's what I think about that one. I don't even want to show that to my people to consider. Don't try to catch a falling knife, everybody. Meanwhile, we're looking at SoFi. <laughs> Look at the volume already. Folks, in just over two hours, we're at 24 million shares almost. We're definitely going to go over 40 million shares. And I'm watching this very closely. I'm watching these numbers right here. 78, 83, 85, 78, 85. This is what I'm looking at for the trend. This is what tells me what's really happening. 78, 84. That's that's better. 71 now. That's good. Very good. We're going the right direction. And I would consider maybe entering in some more of this. And maybe you get it the lowest price it's ever been. 697. Uh, I'm going to try and get a picture of this. Try and capture an image of it. 697. And all your comments at the same time. All right. Well, good job, shorts. You've got the price down here right before lunch, 11 cents higher than the previous low. I'm not sure I'd call that an achievement. <clears throat> and I know I don't think six cents down is going to scare a single institution out of their shares. 
And six cents down isn't going to share a single person that's on this channel with me out of almost 80 folks that are here with me now. Hey, Cap, what do you think about GOEV? I've looked at this one before, too. GOEV. Uh, if that's an electric car, and I think it is, uh, I don't like, um, I'm not into, into uh, I have looked at this before. Um, I do not like electric car business. Uh, and uh, not that I'm against saving the world, but unfortunately, electric cars are not going to save the world from anything. And uh, in fact, it's a known fact for anybody with half a head on their shoulder that all those electric stations that they have to have all over the country are, go are going to require the burning of fossil fuels and, and coal to get that power. That's a, sim it's a simple thing that they don't seem to understand. And even the congressman here in Michigan was asked and she was talking so much about all this uh, electricity, electric cars, electric stations, charging stations. And the guy finally come out and said, excuse me, but I just have one more question. Uh, on, he was asking this panel. This was actually at, the, at Congress. And uh, the person in control of uh, energy department was on the city there at the panel being questioned by all these congressmen. And uh, finally, the congressman was asked the final question, well, how are we going to power all of these EV charging stations all over the United States? And he said, well, we'll have to use coal. <laughs> and I just thought, well, there you go, people. There you go. All this electricity is generated by the burning of coal. And I got news for you, a news alert. There are far more many coal powering electric plants than there are hydroelectric in the United States. Most of the electricity generated in the United States, I believe, is generated by the use of coal. And it's see what I'm talking about. Let's go over here and, and, and let's just ask the omnipotent Google. What percentage of the U.S. energy is created with by coal? Let's all find out together. As you can see right here, folks, 28% coal. 28% coal. 17.8% renewable energy. 12.7% nuclear. All right. So just so you're aware of it, most of the electricity in the United States comes from coal. And the demand will only go up with electric cars, all right? I just hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's the facts, folks. Those are the facts. And uh, here's another thing that you might find interesting. What energy source is used to create steel. Let's find that out. There you go. The major energy source that is used in the steel industry is coal. 80%. All right. And you got JB on a podium leaning forward saying in, in down in Kentucky and all in the Appalachians. And he's saying, we're going to close all the coal factories. How the hell are you going to do that? When you, how, you, how in the world are you going to make steel to grow and create cities and bridges and all of our infrastructure? You're going to start doing all that on plastic? 
No, folks, it's done 80% coal. I'm only sharing this with you. You guys, we're not talking stocks here. I'm doing a little deviation from that. We can't completely always just talk about stocks because there's other things in the world that are equally as important. And I hope you'll agree with me that the kind of stuff I'm showing you right now can be enlightening and you don't remain under the, the cover of, of some sort of a mythical, uh, hypothetical way to run the world. And that is not going to be done on petroleum gas, on LP gas, on natural gas. You cannot create steel with natural gas. You must use coal to create steel. And that the steel industry in places like Indiana and so forth, where the trailer capital building com uh, uh, capital of the world, steel is needed. And you can't have steel without coal. All right. I hope that you like what I'm showing you here. And if you do, I hope that you'll consider at exactly 12 noon. Here at 12 noon, let's let's try to hit the like button together. And uh, if you like the kind of information I share with you, because, you know, it's important to know while the president's telling you he's going to close all the coal factories that you won't be able to have any steel anymore in this country. We'll have to buy our steel, I guess, from China. I don't know. But in case you also didn't know this, <laughs> China increases coal factories. That's right. It's a great resource to track plant openings, retirement plans, and cancellations across the world. In 2023, it added 50 gigawatt watts in coal power. China, folks. China is in a flurry of approvals for new coal-fired plants in recent years. All right. This is what I'm showing you, the news, as of the end of 2023, a sudden flurry of approvals on new coal-fired plants. Well, I wonder if that's because they heard old Joey leaning forward to the podium and telling everybody he's going to close all of ours. And maybe uh, maybe they know that's the only way to make steel. I don't know. I'm just taking a guess at that. I don't know. Mickey Mocky Scott Salopets, Elon is going to crack that. All right. Whatever you say. You go, Elon. You do your thing. Jeez, had to resuspend my microphone here. So anyway, I'm just here to let you know I'm not a big advocate of the electric car industry. Uh, and uh, so therefore, I don't uh, do a lot with the electric car. I'm looking right now at GOEV. And I see it's gone crazy here and it's gone through the roof up 75%. Good for them. But another reason I would uh, caution you about buying this, uh, very much so, uh, we're we're cat we're catfish, or I am. And uh, contact me when, you're, when you see something that's down 73% and then I'll take a closer look at it. But this one here on the one-year chart, that doesn't look good. <laughs> That doesn't look good. And today, regardless of what the news is, and I don't even see three hours ago is the options market predicting a spike in GOEV stock. Canoes, uh, Oklahoma City manufacturing facility approved as foreign trade zone. 13, canoe to announce fourth quarter in fiscal year earnings, March 11th. I don't know, maybe they just released earnings, but I don't buy a stock up 75%. I don't do it. I learned my lesson about doing that. People have gotten hold of me and said, hey, man, look at BIOR. And I jumped over there and I said, shit, it looks good. The chart looks good. Man, it's, it's up real good. I think I'll buy some of it. Man, did I lose money there? It wasn't a lot because the next day I saw where it was going. I got out and it went even lower. Oh, my God, that thing collapsed. And that's what happens nine times out of ten when you buy a stock on a high. 
Too much potential for downside risk buying a stock at a 52-week high. Buy it at a 52-week low and maybe you got somewhere to go with that. But I warn people about buying on days like this. I say, wait till tomorrow and get it at, at, at 9.45 in the morning is what I say. On this one here, wait for tomorrow and they'll shake the shit out of this tree at 9.45 in the morning and you can catch that drop. And then it might go on off. But beware, that's what I'm warning you, not to buy here at 336.01. Wait. Okay, now granted, that number is not usually a number to stop anybody at. Usually it's going to be from here. Three uh, Chances are it's going to go to 344 or 349 before it really stops. So this is a pretty safe place to buy some for a day play, but only as a day play, folks. And then sell a damn thing at 349 or whatever, you know, duck. It's not a long timekeeper because tomorrow morning they're going to run it back down to 313. Okay. So, as far as my call on that one, uh, wait for tomorrow morning, 313. Put a buy order in at 314, 313, 312, and 311 on that one. And let's see if I'm right Doug, tomorrow. Let's just see if I'm right about it. I know one thing I'm going to be right about so far here. Going to be over 25 million shares here in a minute, and we still got a lot of time to trade it. Looks very good. It's doing perfect. It's absolutely doing exactly what I thought that they might do. Accumulate shares here for as low as they can, and then push it to 1229 and on up to 1454. Because they have to get these shares as cheap as they can. Each day here on this last week at every low, I have a, a feeling that the brokerage that offered the convertible notes has been taking those shares off the table. And they're gone for good. They're not going to be around until two, a long time from now, okay? At least until the price hits 1229. I know that much. I know for a fact that every share that was just acquired this week by that firm or that uh, brokerage that did this deal for the convertible notes, every share that they locked up will be locked up until the price of SoFi is at 1229. And I know that for a fact. I like knowing that. I hope you do. Casey Trestle House, welcome. Oh yeah, buying right now is going to benefit everybody. I've been just encouraging everyone to buy this SoFi stock since it was $4.66. And the reason why is, like you just said, when interest rates do start falling, they're going to prosper even more. And it's to be uh, observed that as of yet, interest rates rising over the last three years, which they have steadily done, have not kept SoFi from just growing into profitability, gap profitability, have they? In fact, their revenues have been going up and up and up and up every single year, even during all of this inflation raising interest rates. Ever since they started raising them, SoFi was right in the thick of it and kept making money. Because they were smart enough to realize that the student loan business, they couldn't just count on that. They needed to diversify. They need to go more into the technical. And they have. They've done everything that they needed to do. They're doing perfectly what they should be doing. I'm very happy with what the direction this company is in, going in. I want to thank all of you who hit the like button. I was going to do a countdown. Let's just do it at 12.08. <laughs> And we'll hit the like button together at 12.08. So we've got another couple of minutes here. And uh, that way we can get the most uh, efficiency out of hitting the like button. So folks, yeah, in a minute and a half, we're going to count down. We'll hit the button at 12.08 and see if we can get the likes up from 67 to 77 or 75 likes. So just hold on here. And we're going to do this in one minute and 20 seconds. We're going to hit the like button together simultaneously. And a way for me not to forget to do it this time is to just keep it up on the doggone screen. And so I'm going to do that. I want to thank you very, very much for your being here on this channel with me. I'm very grateful. I know there's many other places you can be. We're sitting here right now watching SoFi rising and rising and rising. And it's going to keep rising and rising and rising, in my opinion. It will be green many, many days between now and the next earnings call. 
We just have to keep acquiring it every morning when they run it down. Because they do it now every single day, first thing in the morning. That's what they've been doing every day. We might as well take advantage of it. Let's look at the five-day chart and see if I'm right. But we'll do that in 30 seconds because we're going to hit the like button together, everybody. Hopefully, you'll be considering doing that with me. I'd appreciate it. We're going to hit that like button now in 10 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. All right. Let's see you hit that like button. And at the same time, let's see SoFi jump back up over $7 here. Let's see them all happen at the same time. We're at 698 as I speak. Come on, everybody. Hit the like. Uh, you will see a heart on the screen for you. Hit the like and you will see a heart on the screen for you. Oh, yeah. I'll hit a heart on the screen for you if you know what i mean <laughs> you'll see a heart on your screen if you know what i mean <laughs> here we go i am hitting the heart on the screen for you now anticipating the countdown and hopefully you can see there's a heart on for you <laughs> We're going to see if the changes were at 69 likes. Someone just took one away because they don't apparently want to see a heart on the screen. But there's a heart on for anybody else that jumps in here. And that would be a shorter that would have took a like away just then or hit the dislike button. Because they don't like what I'm telling you all about this stock. And that is that it's just going to keep going up because there's no way that the shorts can stop it from rising. They don't. They're not borrowing enough shares every day to keep the price in check anymore. See, when they used to have 16 million shares and 15 million shares all day long, it was easy for them to keep it in check. <coughs> and it wasn't even costing them any money. They would borrow the shares and return them at the end of the day. <coughs> well, they're not doing that anymore. They're borrowing them. They're keeping them. Because... They don't want to return them. They want to keep them. <clears throat> and I'm glad. Let them keep more and more and more. Let, let them keep more and more. Because there again, not only do you have the $123 million that's being taken away by the brokerages now for the convertible notes, you got them storing away bor borrowed shares and holding and sitting on them. Last time I checked, I think there was around $159 million, and I think there's even more than that now because it takes them a while to report all this, and I don't think Ortex is up to, up to time. So thank you all for hitting the like button. I appreciate that very much. And uh, we're looking at some other stocks today. We've got our eye on OPEN. I said look to buy this back at 288 or 289 and uh, you can see what's happening right now as we go and fast forward. You can see it clicking through and it's basically hit that wall and it's sitting right there for a while. Uh, we're looking at GCT. I do think that that was at the very bottom. Uh, and look at that. It's down now. Uh, they had it all the way down. Let me hit the make sure I got this right. I was saying, look, they're going to take this down to 3366 and it might even drop lower. So if you get into this, do it very lightly and look for it to go possibly down even to 30 and change. So I was right, apparently. It looks like I was right. Now they've even driven it, driven it down below 22% down. So still watching this, uh, trying to get an indicator of where it might be a good place to buy this stock. And I, what I did was I went ahead and went on the six-month chart and I saw some, some numbers to me that looked interesting. And one of them was right here. And uh, you can already see it's fallen below that. So the next number it's going to go for is right there at 3231. 3231. That's where I see. And right here, there was resistance right here at 3403. 
So it's already dropped way below there. The next number we're looking for is 3231. That's the next bottom. And after 3231, we could even see a, a drop from 3231 all the way down to resistance at that number, 3084. So just go ahead and put in a buy order at 3089, all right, for some at 3089, and then put another buy order in right there, 3233, 3233, put a buy order there. That's what I would do. Based on those chart, that chart right there, these are the two points it could drop to, that one there, and then the next one's going to be over here, 2596, <laughs> holy crap. But there's one right there, 3231. I bet you it went all the way down to 3213 that day too, not 3231. If you were to look at it on the historical data, I bet you it shows you February 23rd, it was at 3213. Let's go see if I'm right. February 23rd. February 23rd. Uh -huh. Look at that. It was $30.50. So there's a lot of room for this to still drop before it hits a solid, solid bottom there. All right. Holy smokes. Look at SoFi. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Folks, I think the damage is done. And now the true carnage will begin. Watch this thing here very closely, folks. 24, 789, 795, 798, 24 in very small quantities. As the price rises again, it's going to push right on up. And they cannot hold this in the red today, my friends. I don't believe so. Not on the volume that we're seeing coming in here. 24,832. I'm looking at the one-day chart now on SoFi, so be with me here. One-day chart. We're going to refresh this right now. And we're going to look at what they're doing right here in the moment. We're going to see what's happening with the volume at the very second that we're in on it right now. And what we have here, folks, is a very, very nice cup and handle. There was your cup, there's your handle, there's your drop, and there's your pop. And look at the 10-day and 50-day and the right now. Oh, my God. This looks awesome, folks. Popville. 45-day crossing up over the 50-day. And it's lunchtime, folks. It's lunchtime. What an odd time for SoFi to be running up here. Yeah. It's an odd time. A very odd time. Get back over here to the chart. So now is the time I think <clears throat> I'm going to take another picture here. The last, maybe the last time so far I was at below $7. And the, and the cool thing is, folks, one of these times I'm going to snap this picture and it is going to be the last time that it was. All right. I believe that. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to have all of your comments on the day and time when the price was at the lowest it ever was. Unfortunately, I did not take out my camera this morning when I bought, when they got it down here to the 688 and the 686. I didn't take a picture of that today. I'm sad that I didn't. <laughs> That's all right. I'll have shares that I bought there. I'll have that record. <clears throat> That's all I need. That's all I need, everybody. All 83 of you, if you're wondering why I have is tennis next. Well, 
in case you weren't aware of it, this golf venue that we're starting, the indoor golf arena. I'll show it to you here now. And just before I, I leave this, folks, here's the deal you need to understand. Our, our president wants to close down all the coal power plants. And once he made that announcement, the people in China increased their coal capacity by 23%. And they started buying and they permitted more coal power plants last year than any time in the last seven years. This is China. Ever since they heard JB make an announcement on a podium, he was going to close all of our coal factories. So I went back here on Google and I searched that for one. And then I said, how much does the coal industry provide for steel? And it says the major energy source used for feedstock in the steel industry is coal and accounts for 80% of the total feedstock used in the production of electricity. And then I went to Google and I searched here, how much of the United States energy relies on coal? And 28%, the highest percentage of our produced electricity for all these plug-in cars is going to be from coal. So how is JB going to close all our coal factories when we can't make steel using natural gas? And the only way to do it, 80% of the factories today are using coal. You answer me that question. And coal is so heavily filtered right now at all those factories that they bellow out of the smokestacks. It's clean. It's one of the cleanest forms of energy there is nowadays, believe it or not. Coal. Oh, my God, everyone. Come to the come to the facts of life here at, at SoFi, SFI Radio, where you'll find out that JB can't close all our coal factories because we can't plug in our cars without coal because it makes up 28% of the United States energy supply. All right. And there's places where they don't have wind, like they blow out in the plain states and other areas. And they don't have a lot of sunshine like they do in Florida or California, and especially up here in the wintertime. You know how much sun we see here in the wintertime for solar power panels? Places like Seattle, they get no sun out there virtually. They have like 10 days of sun out there a year. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, but you know what I mean. Look at that, folks. Back over seven. So maybe I did get that picture for the last time. I'm going to try to take it again right now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go, so if I go. Here's everybody's comments on the day that it happened. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Going green, everybody. Going green. You know, it's interesting. I had about 80 people on the channel. I started talking about the coal and electric cars. I've got 60 on here now. Maybe they didn't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Oh, my God. You're kidding. That's scary, catfish. Man, <laughs> old JB. Most votes ever received in the history of a presidential election by a guy who went on the train and traveled around the country to people sitting in their cars blowing their horns. They asked him, aren't you concerned about the massive, massive mega rallies and the hundreds of thousands of people showing up around the country for Donald Trump? He goes, no, we'll see who wins. He already knew. In the bag, baby, in the bag. Didn't have to go out and didn't have to waste his time out there on the streets and in the stadiums and auditoriums trying to speak, and he didn't have to do any campaigning. He knew. He already knew. Announced to the whole United States that they already had the most complicated, fraudulent election thing that's ever been perpetrated, or whatever. There's a word. Executed. <laughs> Well, we'll just close down everything at 9.30 or 10 at night. Everybody will say they're really tired and they got to get some sleep. But at 11 o'clock, they'll just pull the plug on the whole television network broadcasting of the election. 
who cares that the last election, Hillary Clinton and Trump went all the way till 2.30 in the morning before they made the announcement and there was a concession of a victory for Donald. They're just going to shut everything down at 11 o'clock. Everybody's so tired. It's so late. Let's just get to bed. Yeah, Rusty Pratter, President Dementia. Yeah. He's lost all of his memory because now he says everything that he says is absolutely the opposite of what he said 30 years ago. Marriage should be between men and women only. Gosh, damn it. I'm not going to allow for that idiot. You know, and then, you know, now he's, oh, the LGBT, I've got your back. <laughs> what a turd. Typical politician. Tell everybody what they want to hear. That's what he's being told to tell everyone. Tell everyone what they want to hear. Damn it. Well, that's not the truth. I, we don't give a shit if it's the truth or not. You tell them what they want to hear. But, you know, only a small percentage of the country really feels like, I don't care. We have an agenda. You go out there and tell them anyway. Yeah, but that's kind of weird because I was just telling everybody like 20 years ago, no, no, men and men, women, no, women and women married. No, 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 no same-sex marriage. No, 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 no. <laughs> Now he cares all so much about the black community that he passed a bill that put more black people in jail than the history of this country has ever seen before. He wrote the bill, the crime bill, that put more blacks in prison and in our jail system than ever in the history of this country. And now he's out to tell everybody how much he loves them so much. And if you're not voting for me, you're not black. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What a freaking joke, everybody. All right. Off of politics. Back to SoFi. So what I wanted you to know was there's a big announcement over the weekend or uh, last week, near the end of the week, that they lost or they C CRO, their chief risk officer, went over to join in in the forces of PayPal. But SoFi has now gotten another guy in there who's even more experienced in his uh, in his past history, and I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, they've got a whole new guy on the, on board, and uh, so they're not concerned about the CRO going over there because they've got him a new guy, and he is uh, going to do very well. His name, uh, I would presume, he'll do well because he's done well for J.P. Morgan Chase. His name is Aaron Pinto. See. He also uh, was most recently with Wells Fargo. But SoFi threw an offer onto the table for him, I guess, that he couldn't pass up. And uh, so they now have another individual by the name of Aaron, A-R-U-N Pinto. And he is running the show for the C chief risk officer. As we watch SoFi about to go green and buying it today at 688 was beautiful. Yes, indeed, everybody. 688 a share. We stole it from the shorties. And by the way, I bought their borrowed shares that they now cannot return because they don't have them anymore. And all of those shares that were bought this morning went from the hands of borrowed shares to the hands. I'll keep those. Thank you very much. And that's what's been happening for the last week and a half all the shares that you've seen in this massive increase in volume like we've never seen before on this stock. I'm telling you here, and I'm here to point out to you folks, we have never seen this much volume over a 10-day period ever, ever. This is not 16 million, 17 million, 20 million, 22 million. This is, this is insane, folks. This is crazy. This is a lot of demand. And you know what the rules of finance are all about, right? Supply and demand. Supply and demand. Well, there's a sh ton of demand right now, folks. You can damn sure see that today at 1230 with 25 million 313 traded. There's a lot of demand. 
that not like before when there was only 16 million and 17 million and 20 million shares a day. There's a crap ton more than that. There's three times as much volume now average daily. How are they going to keep up with that? That's the question, the main question I keep asking everyone. How in the hell are the shorts going to maintain control of the price when the volume has gone up triple and a quadruple the volume we used to see daily? It's not the same game anymore. It's a different game that's being played. And it's costing these shorts money. And it's going to cost them a lot over the next week and over the next two weeks, three weeks, month. And when we make this earnings call in a week and uh, what are we at now? The 18th. Yeah, a week and 11, I mean, uh, one month and 11 days. I don't know how many trading days that is, but it's not many. Basically, one month of trading days left here, folks, less than a month. And they're going to have the earnings call come out. And they're going to beat expectations in a major way. They're going to have to revise their numbers. Because I honestly don't believe when they did their last earnings call and their forward statement about guidance that they were included in that they were going to do the, I don't think they've made the convertible note decision yet. And they have to now, I could be wrong, but I think they've got to now add that to their bottom line, the savings that they're going to have on interest on this convertible note deal. But I think I'm right. Seven now per share and right on up, folks. We're going green. We're going green. And the only reason we're not green already, borrowed shares. That's the only reason we're not green already. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Looky, looky, Lou. Tap, tap, tapping on seven's door. Oh, yeah, we're tap, tap, tapping on seven's door. Oh, yeah, we're going to score. Oh, yeah, folks, we're we're knocking on seven's door. And uh, we got some others we're looking at. OPN still following. Now, I know, now, you know why I told you don't touch this thing here. Someone asked me about it this morning. I said, I would not buy here. I said, no, 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 no. And there they are, back to 3388 again. 3388 on GCT. It's actually improving from where it just was. It was down over 22%. TENX got an eye on you. We're uh, I've already scheduled on TENX. I'm uh, going to be watching the presentation. I've clicked on here and subscribed for the webcast. That's going to be in about five more hours this afternoon, and this is going to be a big announcement, maybe some great news, and 10X could pop like crazy, depending on what he has to say about uh, their studies in the uh, phase three development of this cancer, of this heart uh, hypertension drug that there is no other cure for, by the way, none. BITF, all right. PLTR. Yes. Okay, GNS has now achieved another bottom that we just saw right there. That was at 51.99 and I think that you might be safe to day trade this, but be cautious as I said, man, when I saw that, I said no people, don't do it. The downside risk is far too much, but here we might see another run on a leg up. There's your attack right there. Look at that big candlestick right there. Came at 12.02. Someone decided to attack it. Oh, ho, ho. there we go. Back up over seven. And I believe I did, in fact, get the lowest price this of the day when I just took the picture. The next, the first, the last time before she went over seven dollars. Oh, yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, let's just call it that. The last time you could have bought it under seven was today at lunchtime low. And after that, the damn thing took off and there was no looking back because everybody knows what's going to happen on this next earnings call. They're going to show gap profitability again. And this thing's going to fly. And it very well could begin today as of today, the low of 686. And that could be the 686 launch platform. Let's just call it that. The 686 launch platform. And you might want to call this the number where shorties 86th Yahoo. 
that's an appropriate number. They decided to 86 the idea of shorting this stock anymore. Huh. Coincidence? I like it. I like the sound of it. The 86. In case you don't know what that means in police terms or on CB radio, 86. The number 86 means we're out. Stop. Okay. So I guess they decided that was the number at 6. 86, they would 86 shorting the stock. And now they don't give a freaking f- how high it goes. They don't care. And this is what I've been telling you guys about institutions for a long time. Once they get their bottom, that they have worked out, that they pre planned and coordinated to achieve, and they go long, these hedge funds don't care how high it goes. And they have the same, the exact same ways and means to make the price go up to 12 now that they just used to make it go down all last week and today to that 686 number where they 86 their shorting positions, perhaps. And uh, it looks to me like we's about to go green here, folks. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. 63 people on this channel right now. Um, I want to thank you for being here with me. I know there's many other places you could be, but we're looking at some other stocks today as well, besides just the ones that we've got. This is one here, GNS. And it looks like, again, it's continuing to propel higher here. Uh, and I this was one of my favorite stocks to trade back some time ago. I mean, I was killing it with this stock. If I go back to messages to the one friend I was sending the most. Hold on a second here. Maybe I can find it. Ah, well, I don't see it now. Then hang on, I'm gonna do it this way. Here we go. Because I was trying to keep him abreast of this one here, G and S. And I kept showing them these pictures, the charts, and what they were doing. It was insane, folks. GNS was just going nuts. And I was making so much money on it. By the way, uh... Hold on a second here. So the first the first picture I showed uh, my friend here about SoFi when I told him to buy into this stock the very very first t- first time was right here and I'll show you where the price was when I told him to buy SoFi for the very first time. Uh, hold on. Let me do this. There you go. <laughs> and actually, I had told him to buy it the day before on four, at 466. And see the date on here? It says May the 16th. May the 16th. That's the day that was on there, right at the bottom below it, May the 16th. You can't maybe see that, but that was the day. And I told him, buy this, buy it. And God dang it. I sent him that message. Then on May the 17th, that was what was happening with it. May the 17th, right there. So he was very grateful, I'm sure. 
and he did buy it. And I just wanted to share that with you folks. Uh, but this, I cannot find the GNS. I'm, it must just go back too far in the history of this to when I was trading GNS because I believe it was about two years ago. I believe it was. Year and a half at, 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 at the minimum. Just give me a second here because I want to show you if I can find this GNS information. You guys aren't going to believe what was going on with it. Every day it was in and out and out and in and it was just insane. I was absolutely killing it. Every day. Hang on a second. Let me check something else out here. Uh, I was also telling him to buy this stock that I just pulled up on the screen that you guys can see here in a second. Let me just, uh, but I was trying to tell him to buy this stock, R-I-O-T, when it was in the $8. It just broke over $8. R-I-O-T, and you can see where it is now at eleven sixty three. It's another good call. Eleven sixty four. I sure wish I could find this GNS, man. I'm going way, way back, man. Way back. Appreciate you guys hanging here with me while I try to find this information about GNS because one thing that you're going to find the most craziest thing about it is the price that it was at the time. God, dogs. Looking back over some of these stocks, I see that I was back in there. Man, I just wonder where they are now today because I traded in and out of them so much. And these were great day trading stocks. Like I said, this GNS. Oh, come on, baby. Uh, I was showing him WBX at 531. Let's see where that is. I was telling him, man, get in on this one at 531. Oh, God, look at that thing. See, this is why I'm out now. 
these were these were really running. This stock was at five fifty one a share. GNS in pre market three twenty three a share is where it was when I was telling them about it, and I and I uh, and it went to two ninety nine a share at ten twelve that morning, but man, and that was unfortunately that's the last one I have. I already raced off, uh, I raced off what I had gotten in on these, but um, Pro Shares was another one that I had was B O I L. I'm gonna take a look at that right now and see where it is. B O O I L Pro Shares. This was another one I was making a lot of money on. Oh God. <laughs> Look at the price I told him to buy this stock right here. Look at the price I told him to buy this one. Right there. See that? Holy smokes. Yeah. VOIL. I filled at 665. I bought shares that day. All right, let's get back over to SoFi now. How high is it now? Oh, yeah, baby. Keep on pushing on, SoFi. Going to break the high of the day here very soon. And look at all the effort to try to hold it down under seven, just like they tried so damn hard on Friday to do. Oh, boy. Look at all these people that just came in. David R., welcome to the tank. Casey Dresselhouse, what are your thoughts on BITF earnings? Negative 03, expected zero, negative 0 0.19 actual. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> don't matter. BITF is green today, I, th I saw. I don't think that mattered to him. <laughs> yeah, apparently, I think it was way oversold last week when Bitcoin was up 10% and BITF was down 10%. And I told you it was. BITF is going to be fine. They the reason that they they were down so much is because they just bought a massive amount of new miners, brand new miners coming online. They're going to equal the same production of CLSK, and this stock is priced at two twenty seven a share. And how much is CLSK right now? They're going to be able to equal the production of CLSK and CLSK stock. Currently is priced at how much? Remember, Bitcoin BITF is at two something and CLSK is at 1770. So I'm very happy with buying BITF here, knowing that they're going to increase their capacity to be equal to a company's capacity that's at $17. I'll just say that. I'll tell you that much. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right. Oh, my God. I just saw 702 come into view, everybody. And there's nothing that's going to stop it from rising. 
There's no way they can keep this down. There's too much demand. There's too many people that know the plan, the program, that it's all going to get 703. Ah, look at this thing, folks. 703, how could it be? 703, 702, what you gonna do? Or shorties are screwed. Ah, 701, <laughs> Look at that thing, folks. Look at that thing blazing a trail. 701, 26 million, 26 million, 428. 26 million 468, 26 million 466. It just went down 2000, 26 million 470, 472, 26 million 475, and 26 million 559. That's a very large buy, folks. That's a very large buy as we're about to break green. Very large buys coming in here. I'm getting your comments. WRN. Did I look at that one yet? I don't think I did. She's green. Yeah, you see what I mean? She's green. Western copper and gold, huh? Good price. The only trouble I have with stocks that are this low is a lot of times they'll want to try to get their price up so that it can become more uh, reachable by bigger entities like institutions and stuff, which normally won't touch a stock that's under $5. So a lot of times they'll do some sort of a split, three for one to push them up to seven dollars. Then it'll come back to five, and it's just a major loss. But uh, let's look at the five year on this. So this is what I'm doing. I look right here. That was a big point of resistance one time when it was falling, when it had been all the way up here in the two sixty two range. And it stopped right there at this price where we are now. All right. And then it made a little move up and then it fell back below. And now we even fell back here. So I like this. I like it where it is here. And they just did two weeks ago a private placement. So that's why they probably fell. Huh. Yep, two weeks ago, neural private placement. I like it. Only thing I, ca I caution against is them trying to get the price over $5 a share. The volume is, this is going to be like watching the grass grow. Not a lot of volume there. Nothing like SoFi. SoFi's volume. This is what has me so excited about this stock, SoFi, right now, is its volume. More than anything, I'm very, very happy to see that they're not trading 15 to 17 million shares a day because I know that was what they were borrowing to short the stock with every day. 15, 17, 18 million shares a day borrowing to short on it. And that ain't going to work for them anymore. I mean... <laughs> Today, I don't know how many shares they've borrowed yet, but I know one thing, they're in deep trouble right here. They've already gone through freaking almost probably all of those shares that they borrowed to short with, and the price is going green. I mean, the doggone chart's about to go green. Look at this thing catching up to itself right now. 26,769, 26,769, 732, 26,775, 26,774. Did you see it drop there? 26,775 just dropped to 26,774, people. This is when they really are getting in trouble, when they have to throw out fake shares they don't really intend to sell. 26,782. I'm watching them. 
26783, 784, 26786, 787, 26788, 26790, 26791. They're in trouble. And they're, the, the, the indication of the trouble is that they when they're throwing out shares that they yank back off the table. They try to give you the impression they got a big wall of sell orders somewhere. 26812, 813, 26813, 555, 26814. 26,819, 26,820. Man, I want to catch them doing this. I love it when I point out to you guys these, these, these anomalies. And one of them is when they start loading in share orders they don't really mean to share. It's called sh shill bidding. 26,825s, 26,826. Price still at seven. Here's what you need to be paying attention to. Look what the low was here this morning. The low was 786. The ne next low that was achieved was right here, considerably higher. I mean, 686, then 692. That's a six cent increase. And then the next low they got to from 692 was what? 690, 695, yep. A three cent increase. And then the next low, 695 again. It bounced right off of that. The next low was right here, right there, 697. And now the next low, 699. Here at the very end of lunch, folks, we're at the very end of lunch time. Oh, I want to get a picture of the very last time the price was six ninety nine, folks. I want to have that for my wall of pain. I want this. Uh, go for it, shorty. Give it all you got, man. Let's get over here to the one-day chart. I want to thank you for being here with me, folks. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to get in on this one day chart right now and refresh this page and show you the volume they're using right now to try to stop the run from going green. But now you got a problem. See, they can't just use borrowed shares. They got to go into their own pockets now. They've run through the borrowed shares and they have no more of those left. Not one of those shares will be returned today. The shares that will be returned will be their shares that they're holding. And they may even sell some of their long positions to get those shares back over to the brokerage houses. Because every one of those shares they just used was borrowed, got bought up by somebody going long. In my opinion, I could be wrong, but I damn sure don't think so. I can be sure of one thing, not a single institution has dropped out of their position, not one. Not freaking one of them. SoFi going to go into the tennis move next with the Serena Williams sisters. That's what I'm calling on. I can't guarantee anything, but I know they're involved already in that TGL golf and they're speaking for it. They're investing in TGL golf. You think they might invest if SoFi was to say, hey, we are thinking about going into tennis too as well and maybe get a sponsorship in tennis. All that could easily happen, folks. They've already branched into football. They've already gone over into the NBA. They're going over into PGA golf. And next, most likely, could easily, easily see him move into tennis or maybe one of the bigger players like baseball or hockey. And why wouldn't they? I mean, they've had so much success in these other sports venues and gathering customers that they might as well go ahead and just branch right on into those as well. Sign deals with them. 
And I'm looking here, we're at the very end of lunchtime, folks. So it should be no surprise to see him try at the lunchtime low. That's why we call it that after all, everybody. 10 million shares. I uh, Well, it was, I'm not sure what it is now. That's a good question. Let me see what they're showing here on cost to borrow. Interesting thing is they used to show you a chart up here. That, was, that would show you how many uh, shares were available to borrow. And it says right here now, I'm seeing right here, shares available to borrow. Three, uh, what is that? 3,700,000 shares left. 3,700,000 shares left to borrow, available to borrow. Hey, honey, buddy. My wife is home. I thought she was going one appointment to the next appointment to the next appointment. And I got a surprise visit. Well, Shorty, you're 11 cents away from the low of the day right here, even with your lunchtime low efforts. So that's pretty sorry. <laughs> I bought it at 688 and I'm never going to get a chance to buy it there again, most likely. I showed you earlier I was sending pictures to my friend to buy SoFi when it was at 477 on May the 16th. 467, I think. That's where I bought it, and that's the day I bought it. 697, 698, SoFi running, folks. Right back up from 686 for the low and now 697. One of these days we're going to be watching this thing and it's just going to completely explode to the upside on some news and it could even be today. We don't know. None of us knows when the news could come. They could rocket this thing up. Some people might say, well, what kind of news would that be, Catfish? Well, I've already explained there could be several reasons, several catalysts. There could be a buyout. There was a guy, David Chiavrini, who gave us a target price of 250 but I heard him about six months ago saying we were a prime target for a big legacy bank buyout or maybe a buyout from Apple because, according to him, it was fairly well known that Apple wanted into the fintech space but may not want to inherit all the troubles of getting it all in place. They might want to just take over somebody who's already got it all down. That's what he said. David Chiaverini, the guy who's downgraded our target price to $3, was on CNBC telling everyone that there's a chance that we could be a buyout target. And we already were. Even before we got our bank charter, I know Charles Schwab tried to buy SoFi out. They made them an offer. And SoFi couldn't get what they wanted, so they turned them down. I bet you I bet you right now Charles Schwab would have, is wishing they would have just gone ahead and gave them what they wanted. And they still may one day. And by the way, if they make an offer to SoFi to buy them out and it's something that's good for the company, they'll have to do it. The Anthony Noto is not going to be the deciding factor there. They have to do what's they're required to do what's best in the investment of the best for the investment community in the retail buyers and the stockholders. That's what they're they're obligated to do is to make the best business decisions for their stockholders. So, so I said, why in the world would Apple want to do that? Well, for one reason, the one of the biggest holders of Apple shares might be accumulating so far right now, and that is uh, Cohen. I think his name is Ryan Cohen. Ron, I've been taking pictures of these lows. I've been taking pictures of them. I did. Damn thing, though, I got my orders, and I was telling everybody to buy this at 688. And I said, put in my orders at 687 as well. And uh, and I had orders there. I was filling, so I, I should have taken pictures there. I wish I had. I forgot. But they'll be on this chart right here. You'll be able to see them. I'll move this over here, and I'll just... 
take a picture this way. There it is. I can take a picture like that. That'll be good. Get to show everybody that the low of the day was 686. And I got it on this day. And I'm going to make, make sure and zoom in on that over here. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, I would encourage you to take on the belief, everyone, that there is nobody really selling a share here. Not one. No real seller of a share. There's no one that's real that owns SoFi that as long is selling here. Nobody's down uh, less than a percent in selling. That would be insane to think that. You would be crazily mistaken to think anyone is really selling shares here from them when the price just hit 704 just then, right here, right there. 703 again. No one's really selling. And so you think you yeah, the grand delusion. That's what it is. Grand delusion, everyone. Just like the Styx album says. It's just a grand delusion. And the illusion can only be maintained for so long. Because then the smoke clears away and all the illusion is lifted. And the reality is this thing is a $16 stock by the end of a year and a half from now or even 20 or higher. And I say that because they have many, many reasons to 2026 in June to get it there. June 2026, $25, $35, $45, all of those numbers mean big things to the company uh, executives. Come on, Shorty. Borrow, 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 borrow shares. Borrow shares to run it down. Borrow shares, borrow more, borrow more. We'd love to see you just keep borrowing and burying yourselves deeper in this. Everyone realizing that the stock price down 1% is a not a sell number and there's no massive selling go there's no hysteria there's no panic there's no real reason to sell it period none and all of us here that are on this channel should be aware of that very aware very well aware of that and uh bitf we're going to take a look at that down red now coming after it their earnings was not good they missed the street today but they're buying more and more of these bit miners. Watching it go through a fast forward phase too, because see, when I don't click on this screen for a while and I let it sit for a little bit, it uh, catches up and it does it in fast forward motion, which is kind of neat. We get to see what it's really doing in more of a real time scenario, just like here now. It'll be catching up so you get to see it a little bit faster. But, uh, I'm very, very pleased to see the price was this morning at 686 and now 10 cents higher. And uh, the sad part for the shorts is they're having to use borrowed shares here today to try to work it down. And unfortunately, it's uh, right now seven, uh, uh, nine cents higher than it was. Holy smokes, alokes. Whoa. Oh my gosh, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I have an incredible meal, which was just placed in front of me here. Oh, my gosh. Ho, ho, ho. Folks, I have an incredible meal hanging out here in front of me, and I have to have a bite. Mmm. Whoa. Sausage gravy and croissants. Two eggs over easy. And beautiful hash browns. 
Whoa. Mm-mm-mm. Well, there you go, everybody. SoFi's morning low, 686. So, SoFi's lunchtime low, 695. Nine cents higher. I like that. Yep. Wow. Hmm. So we're talking to IB Mac. IB Mac says inside tip, they are going into the makeup industry. IB Mac, can you provide me a link to that? news and are you, I'm guessing since you're here on a SoFi channel that you're talking about SoFi. IB Mac inside tip they're going into the makeup industry. SoFi I'm guessing is who he's speaking of. We were talking about some other stocks here a little bit earlier. And uh, we got a couple of members on here right now talking about uh, things everyone should know, T-Rex. Divacar, uh, Joshi says, T-Rex, question mark. I don't know anything about T-Rex. But I'm going to look into them. GRX. TRX Gold Corporation. And then we'll try TREX. TREX, Trex Company. All right. Let's jump over here and look at T-Rex, everyone, just quickly. Take a look at T-Rex. Huh. Well, they're priced right at 100 bucks now, roughly. And let's go look at the one-year chart, year-to-date. Hmm. Well, they were all the way down to 93.89 this morning. Certainly manipulated and looks a lot like SoFi there up and then down and up and then down and looks quite similar to SoFi's chart today. Up and then down and up and then down and up and then down and just up and down all day long. Sawtooth, 694 now. Come on, give me that one more time. There it is. You were talking about the Williams sisters. Yeah. Ah, they're going into the, okay. The Williams sisters going into the makeup business. Mm. 
Folks, I'm sorry for uh, being a little bit rude here and eating in front of you, but then again, um, at the same time, I'm certainly not going to miss the opportunity to take a take advantage of a low, the second low of the day, and at least get a picture of it. I've already bought here this morning at 688, so I'm not concerned about missing at 694 just then, but I did definitely want to get a picture of that, which I did. And now it's already at 696, so I'm glad I did it. There's your bottom on BITF, folks, it looks like. Someone was asking me if I was going to be buying any more BITF. I said, Ab absolutely. They're about to equal the hash rate, but I'm waiting to see what they try. They might even try a double dagger here. So, But I would, if I were you and you own BITF, I'd pick up some more shares right here. At that number right there, down 17788. And I like that number. Don't go in too heavy because they might try a double dagger where they make you think there's a false bottom, then they run it down to the real bottom. So be careful there. But that looks good. Almost as good as SoFi here trying to be manipulated. Wow. Well, I hate to, um, again, be rude, but I'm going to tell you, man, my wife makes some of the best sausage, biscuits, and gravy that you could ever lay your lips around. <laughs> I mean, mm. she's got it down, everybody. I'd like to say, say thank you to DB today for your donation to help the cause of this channel. And then if anybody else wants to pitch in a little bit or just listen to my music while I'm talking about our stocks, then I'd appreciate it if you stream my music on Apple Music or Google Play or any of your music providers. That helps this channel a lot too by people streaming my music. And I have um, over 120 songs on YouTube. And you can find the link down below this channel, right, where you can click on to go to my music channels and uh, either on Amazon or on Google Play. or And you can also just go directly to your music provider and look my name up, Tyler, last name Self, S-E-L-P-H. And once you click on that and you find me, you can click follow and uh, subscribe or whatever to my channel and just hit the playlist and let it run, folks. Let it go and enjoy the tunes. There'll be many that make you laugh, some that'll make you cry. Somewhere you'll hear no lyrics at all. It's just, and uh, no, 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 nothing but me whistling, believe it or not. Just whistling. Mm, wow. Well, here we come on 29 million shares, everybody. Every single day I watch this happen, I think. I wonder how many of those shares today went into hands that won't let them go until they're in the 20s and 30s or if they let them go at all, ever. Or if they just pass them on to their children and their children's children. 
I know some of them do. I know some of these shares that are being bought right now are going in the hands of somebody who's not going to sell them. Wow. Oh, man. I'm almost through putting you through this eating torture, folks. Don't worry. <laughs> Sorry if I'm making you hungry. But wow, is this good. These are farm fresh eggs we get from a farmer right around the corner from us. Not like the ones in the store, folks. Free ranging chickens, folks. They're, the egg yolks on them are just this orangey orange. Uh, nothing at all like store bought eggs with the yellow yolks. Oh, look at the leg up going. Another leg up now. Let's make another march on this hill right now. We're on $7 hill right now, everybody. <laughs> mm. Soon we're going to overrun $7 hill. And over $7 hill, there'll be a little valley, and then we'll be at $8 hill, and then $9 hill, and $10 hill, $11 hill, and then $12 hill. And those hills might be overcome all in one day, about a month and nine days from now. That will be our next earnings report, folks. It's coming. Another 200,000 shares just traded in the last minute and a half or two. Price is rising, as you can clearly see. It's now at 697. And uh, I think at this point in the game, all of the longs are starting to realize it's over for them, folks. Look at that crossover. There's two times it's crossed over the 200-day. And... Uh, Look how far they ran it down below the 200-day moving average. Then it crossed over. Then they ran it back down below, crossed over this time. And it's not looking back now, I don't think. I don't think so, people. No. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's a thing of beauty. Going to be going green, folks. <clears throat> Shorties have got themselves in a major pickle right here, folks, and they can't even hold us down 1% today. Uh-oh, now only down 91.91%. And I am looking at a major problem for Shorty here, volume. As I mentioned to you guys earlier, we have now seen more volume over the last 10 days than the history of this stock has ever experienced. We've never seen similar volume as to what we're seeing right now. And we've never seen so many institutions coming in and buying and adding to their these hedge funds and these uh, ETFs adding positions in SoFi. We've never seen it like this. Never. 
there is no equaling what we're seeing right now from all these hedge funds coming in. Look at these massive numbers of increases by these hedge funds, folks. <laughs> Increasing by 143%. This one just bought 480,000. This one increases by 2100 by 645%, 632%, 125%, 73,000% increase. These, these, this is un, unheard of, folks. It's never been seen. These guys and gals, they're coming in heavy because they know, they know, in my belief, I believe they understand the execution of this company and how they're getting their, meeting all of their goals. And they're meeting all of their goals right in line with the timeline that they've given everybody, okay? Uh, it's not as if these folks are faltering in any way. They are not. They're doing just exactly what they said they would do all along, and they've been doing it at the pace they said that they would do it. And now we're at 28665 And again, like I said, we're going to cross over 29 million shares. As we again cross over, it looks like $7. Give it up, shorts. You're not going to hold SoFi under 7 bucks. It's not going to happen. You're not going to hold, hold it under $8. That won't happen for you either. You're not going to hold it under 9 10 11 or even 12 Years from now, you'll have a hard time holding it under 30 or 40 That's right. Every single quarter, they're going to show gap profitability. Every single quarter going forward. And they're going to become even more and more and more profitable because of their moves like removing all that high interest debt that they just got rid of. Converting what amount amounts to, as of July, in the two months, as of July, well, March, April, May, June, July, four months away from having to pay 17 and a half interest. And now they're paying instead 1.25. That's genius. That's a good move, folks. And all that money drops right to the bottom line. Buy now or pay $10 next month. Ron, yep. Yeah. It's very simple. Yep. Yeah. You either buy it now at $6.97 or you pay over $10 in a couple of months. Or maybe even less than that. I've seen it so many times. I've seen three times specifically when the price was way down and went over $10. Once was it when it was driven down to 4.45 a share and went all the way up to 10.28 in 29 days. Then, folks, here we go. 6.98 now tapping back on Seven's door. And what are they going to use in the way of shares to make it stop this time? Where are they going to come up with the shares? 6.99 coming next, folks. Here it is. And I'm going to take a shot of this too. And don't get me confused. I'm not taking shots yet. There you go, folks. Maybe the final time for $6.99. Or we're going to get right here captured on our screen. And I'm going to make sure and get the time and everything in here on this picture. Yes, indeed. Now, what are you going to stop it with, Shorty? How are you going to stop it now? Just saw 694 and we're already five cents higher in 10 minutes. I love it, actually. Five cents higher in 10 minutes? How much will it be 10 minutes from now? 7.05? Yeah, I'm taking pictures. <laughs> I want to capture the final time 6.98 was seen on the screen with a soap eye emblem by it. I want to have it for history's sake. And there's a 6.99. And it'll be cool for everybody to see that it all happened in one minute's time. 6.98, 6.99, and then 7. And they'll be able to see how much volume it was done on. Six 
Say goodbye to 698, everybody. At 11.37 a.m. Say goodbye to 699, everyone. At 11.37 a.m. Lots of buying here. Oh my gosh, that chart looks awesome. Shove it on up, folks. Shove it up. Right on up higher, folks. All the 699 shares are gone here in a second, folks. They'll all be gone. I believe all the 698s are done, tapped out. I think they're gone. Sure not seeing that happen anymore. I'm so glad all of you are here with me while I take these pictures of this and, and, and document the history of the price so we can all see the last time a 698 was achieved. And now I'm going to, it says 1137 on my screen. I need to refresh it. Because I need to make sure that everybody... Now, it'll show down in the bottom right, so people will be able to see that. But let's just refresh it and get to the real time that we are. And there we go. <clears throat> so far. There it is. I'll get off my screen. Yeah. Anybody think they want to sell here? <laughs> Anybody at all want to sell this stock right here? Uh-oh, 698. Next up on the chart, 699, folks. Just went over 29,104. Two and a half hours left to trade as of yet. Still, we got a lot of day left here, folks. A lot of daylight. 29,104, 621. Look at this thing, folks. Is this the last time we see 699 on the screen at 1.25 p.m.? I sure hope so for all of us. I really do. I believe it. I believe that we're about to see. I'm going to capture a picture of the last time 699 was ever seen. And I think it's going to be today. I'm very optimistic about this stock. I have many reasons to be. Many, 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 many reasons. I have tons of reasons. <laughs> and so does everybody else here. And that's why you hold this stock. Many of you are in the sevens where I am. There it is. 699 now. Going right on up, folks. And that'll be the end of it. Oh, my goodness. You can hear your heart beat. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 1 30 p.m. when it happened, folks. 1 30 p.m. when the last time we saw 698 was at 1 30 p.m. And that's a dang good looking chart right there, folks. About to break over into seven with 29,171 now. We've seen another 170,000 in two minutes' time. They're coming in, folks. There's some buys coming in here. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled, folks. And it's my intention, as I said, to capture the lowest price that it was the last time it was below $7. And this is now, in my opinion, this is going to be the last time we're going to see this below $7. And I would encourage you to pick up some here before it does break back up over 7 and goes, like someone just said, on its way over 10 Because that's where we're headed next. Too many interested parties in seeing this go to $12.29 now. Too many interested in seeing it get to that number to stop it. Shorty's got not only uh, 
longs like us and retailers coming in, but they've got a lot of different types of institutions coming in now and adding to their positions on these lows. It, uh, equity funds, we saw state treasury funds, we saw school funds, we saw insurance company funds buying in. And that was when the price was at 788 and higher. Now we're back down into seven. I think they're buying more. All right, we're going to have to refresh the screen because this time Yahoo is showing says 125. And it certainly is not 125. It's 132. And uh, when I had these pictures in my portfolio to show the last time the price was down below $7, I want it to be accurate with the time. I want to I want to see an accurate number. And I want to see each and every one of you make a lot of money off this stock. And that's why I'm here taking these pictures now for our big old party we're going to have. Oh my gosh, are we going to party on this? Last chance for $7. Better get in before you holler. <laughs> yep. Time now, 1.33 p.m., 74 people. You might be wondering from my thumbnail why I'm talking about tennis. Well, the reason I'm talking about tennis, folks, is because SoFi has ventured into all of these new sponsorships agreements with all of these sports, including now the NBA, the NFL, with their stadium purchase. Uh, they're moving into golfing with TGL Golf. If you haven't heard about that, it's oh, there it is, folks. The last $6.99 share. And now we're at seven. And I'm so glad I just refreshed the page here. So I could have the right time of day that the last $7 share was sold or $6.99 share was sold. All right, we got 70 people on this channel. I would like to ask you please to do me a favor. And we're going to do this at the same time. We're going to do this at one. 30, let's see where we are now. We're 10 seconds away from hitting the like button together. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Please hit that like button with me right now. I'd be very grateful if you did that. Very, very grateful. I see we've got 77 likes right now. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you who decided to buy this morning when the price dropped below $7 and with me at $6.88. And that was a no-brainer, folks. That was a no-brainer. And I am capturing the time. I'm refreshing this page now. I want to thank you all for being here with me. And I thank you for hitting that like button. And let's see if we can get this up over 80 likes here right now. Let's get up over 80 likes. All right. I'm trying to capture this picture right here, too. And we get the chart in here as well. We've got the type. I'm refreshing the page. There we go. There it is. All right. And that way I'll be able to, James Anderson, we're going green. Yes. Yes, we will be green today. I do believe there's no way to hold it back. With this massive amount of volume that we're seeing right now, folks, how in the world can they stop it from going higher? Wow. And there's there's no fear of anyone to buy this at $7. You can see that for sure. They're probably very glad that they're able to get it here at this price. I love it how Yahoo is showing the time at 1.33 right now, and it's really 1.36 p.m. And what they're doing is delaying the price. That's what they're doing. They're delaying it so you don't know that they're actually over $7 already. That's my opinion because I've seen this game played by Yahoo many, many times. They don't want to show you the real time, so they start delaying the time. 
Now, when the price is falling, Yahoo will never delay it a fraction of a second. But when the price of the stock is rising, Yahoo will suddenly decide to start delaying the time. And you're seeing it right now. They're showing the time is at 134. It is actually 137. But they're not showing you that because they don't want you to see that, folks. They don't want you to see. There it is. I just took the last 699 right there, I think. And this is why Yahoo is not showing you the real time. They don't want you to know it. They're delaying right now three minutes. And I just took a picture of the last 699 right there. <laughs> the final time for 699. Isn't it fine? Blowing shorts minds. Look at this thing unwind. It's like a coiled up freaking spring just ready to bounce. That's what I see. That's what I see. Coiled up, coiled up, compacted, compression, and it's compressed big time. Stressful shorts, shorting, borrowing, borrowing more, shorting more, borrow more, short more. Let's get to the real time, Yahoo. Stop delaying the screen for minutes. There it is. They're still delaying the screen by three minutes. But it's my point here. Google Finance seems to be more real time. Good to know that, Mohan S. I appreciate it. There it is. They're showing the time now at 1.35. They're delaying by four minutes. And there's a reason why, everybody. There's a reason why. I'm curious, Mohan, what are they showing the price on Google Finance right now? Is it 7 or 7.01? I wouldn't be surprised at all because I know once Yahoo starts delaying the time that they're doing it for a reason. They don't want people to know how high the price really is. They don't want them to know. They don't want people to know the real price at the real time. They're delaying right now by three minutes to keep you from knowing that, they're, or that the price is really over seven, most likely. And I've seen this tactic. Come on, let's get the last minute this thing was at $6.99. It's going to happen, folks. They're, my guess is it's already over seven in real time. That's why they're delaying it. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Yep, Amon says seven. Yep. You see how they play this game on Yahoo? Man, oh man, are these people, this, this, this group right here on Yahoo... And they'll tell you, by the way, so they can get away with doing this, that this is all for entertainment purposes. And just so you know, this channel that you're on right now, I am not a financial advisor. I do not hold a degree in finance. I just happen to know how to look at charts and determine what might be happening based on the chart action. And that's my primary source of information is the charts. And my attempt right now is to capture a picture of SoFi at the very final time the price was below $7. And I'm sitting here taking picture after picture because I want it for the record that I caught it the last time the price was below $7. Five minute chart looks great. I believe it. Let's go look at it. Five day, and then see when I go to five day chart, they go to five minute increments. See, there it is. Whew. 
big buy right there that came in. Two and a half million shares at 11.15. You're right, that does look great. Looks awesome. Time is not 1.36 p.m. Even though Yahoo wants you to think that, it's actually six minutes. It, time is not 1.38 p.m. Now 29,568,000 shares traded. Oh, 701. Look out, shorty. I got it, folks. I got the last time, 699. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. One thirty-eight p.m. was the reality of it. The last time it's six ninety-nine was achieved. One thirty-eight, which was really one forty-three, according to what's on this screen right here. Yep, I have it down in the corner. One forty-two. Congratulations to all you longs. We're going green. Sunfire to the moon, I'm with you. No matter how many pictures you take, LOL. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm done, man. I knew it. I knew it. When I saw them delaying the screen like that, I knew the price was seven and going to go seven or higher. As soon as I saw those shenanigans again on this Yahoo format, delaying the time. And I want you to be aware of something. If you go over to another stock like this OPEN right now, and let's just click on OPEN. What time are they telling you it is on OPEN right now? This is what you need to compare to, all right? I want you to look at this. They're showing the time at 144, real time, 144 on OPEN, and they are delaying SoFi. So I prove it to you right there. It's not happenstance, folks, and it's not coincidence when Yahoo starts lying to you about what time it is. This 140 p.m. they're showing here, and you glance over here to open, and they're showing the real time 144. See? See how it works? See how the game works? See, these guys on Yahoo message board and the moderators and stuff of Yahoo, they're shorting SoFi, okay? I'm convinced of it. And this is one of the reasons that I'm convinced of it, because of these types of games that they do all the time to try to dis to give you disinformation, okay? See how they didn't want to show everybody the price was at 702 and they're still showing a five minute friggin' delay. But you go back over here to open and they're going to, if you refresh the screen, they're going to be in real time. I love it when I expose these people for these mistruths that they try to represent and try to show you. Look at the time, 145 here on open. But SoFi mysteriously says 140 p.m. What a quinky dink. See how they work? Oh, yeah, they even got the volume reduced. Yeah, sure. Yep. I see that. Man, oh, man, oh, man. I took a lot of pictures right there, folks. I got to do some deleting here. But I did catch it. I caught it all right. Select.
Here we go. There we go. And delete all those. All right. We're going green. Yep, six ninety nine, seven dollars, six ninety nine, six ninety nine, seven dollars. Seven oh one now, folks, and about to go green. Oh yeah, run it on up, run it on up. There she goes, 702. Getting ready to ring the green bell, everybody. Are you long term or short? I'm long, long, long. I've got, I've got. Yeah, it's on my phone. I guess you can go into that and make an appointment to do your blood work. Oh, okay. I I love you, beautiful. And there it was, the last time that six ninety nine. Could be recorded right there. Seven looks way better than six ninety nine. I know it. Seven oh one looks better than seven, and seven oh two looks better than seven oh one. And all those numbers are going to be in our vision soon. And you know why? Because Shorty's got no way to stop it. Shorty doesn't have enough shares anymore. They're not borrowing enough shares to stop it from running now. They simply can't do it. 30 million shares already. We still got two hours and 10 minutes. We're going to bust 40 million again today. And those of you that are on this channel with me now know that I've been telling you all along that there was no way they were going to keep us at bay here with this volume. I'm telling you all along, 40 million a day will be the success of this stock. 40 million or plus a day and they won't be able to stop it. Because they just got too few shares. And now we're seeing 60 million and 80 million and 186 million. And gosh, dang, look at the volume lately, folks. It's just flying in here. 131 million, 187 million, 83 million, 76 million, 59 million, 69 million. What are they going to do with this kind of volume right here? 69 million, 52 million. The days of 16 million a day are long gone, folks. Henry Vartan uh, Vartanian, what do you think of SOUN long? I think you're fine to be buying SOUN long here right now. I I, I think it's um, a good opportunity to get back in on it. I like it. Here we go, folks. I'm getting ready to ring this green bell. I got it sitting right here, and I'm ready to ring it. When we reach over 30,200,000 shares, will we be green by 30 million too? Yes, we might, most obviously could. I like it, Henry. I've already had it back up on the screen this morning earlier. I was showing people S-O-U-N and what it was doing. I haven't since been looking back at it, but I de definitely did S-O-U-N. And it's just, I was, I'm at a point I've made, I bought it so low and it's so high 
and I've sold it so many times at the highs and bought back at the lows that you just absolutely can't move. There's no way I could lose money on that position this year. Impossible. Impossible. The numbers that we bought it for and what we're, what we're getting, uh, what we've sold it for, it's just impossible to lose any money on that. So I'm, I would be happily long on this because to me, like I said, there's really like, there's nothing to lose. For that, for those who don't know what we're talking about, it's S O U N, and we have just been absolutely annihilating it with this. And as, at this price right here, especially at eight thirteen, I love it there. Eight thirteen is what they're going to try and hold it. Today's low was seven eighty seven already. <laughs> oh, jeez. 910 to 787. Wow. That's very SoFi like. But down 8% there, 813 for sure. Go for it, man. Pick up some more right there at 813. That's a very good number. Look at it. Bounced off of that. It's gone. They couldn't even hold it there. I like Sohn here. By the way, um, I was already buying a whole lot of sewn at a 769. I acquired this three days ago, 769. And I also bought it for more than that. I bought it for the smaller chunks. I bought 50 shares at 836. I bought 50 shares at 838, 839. So, and I'm holding those. I'll hold on to those. But my lowest is 769, where I got the most shares. And I love what I'm seeing here with the chart right now. I just showed you at 813, they wouldn't hold it there and they can't. Just like they can't hold SoFi in the red today. I don't believe they're going to be able to hold SoFi in the red today. I mean, look how much they've come after it and how many times. Once, twice. You're done here, folks. SoFi will run. And it's about to go green. SoFi is about to go green, SoFi, if you know what I mean, SoFi, it's about to go green right now, right now, right now, oh yeah, SoFi, she's about to go green, it'll be the greenest green that you've ever seen, <laughs> SoFi's going green right now, 30 million 182, they're still delaying the time on us. Delay, 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 SoFi Yahoo page. And I love how I show you guys how they're doing it. Now they're almost cut up, caught up the real time. They're only one minute behind the times now. Well, I guess once it broke over seven, they said, screw it. Let's just tell them what the real price is at the real time. We're done. We couldn't hold it under seven. We tried. We tried to help them. We tried our best to hold it under there, and we were delaying it four or five minutes but it just fell apart on them fell apart on them just like their efforts to hold this thing under seven are falling apart on them folks it's become the new nemesis there we go 702 oh yes she's toggling to 702 everybody 702 i'd like to ask you to please give me a moment to get them um, something to drink here I will be back here in just a minute. I appreciate your patience, all of you, for being here with me while we talk about this and other stocks. And I want you to know, probably when I get back, this will be green. So I'm going to take a little break. And thanks to all these people who are keeping this commercial free for you today, everyone. Say thank you to these people right here. <clears throat>
Okay, everybody. That's it for me, King Cat. I'm gonna turn it back over to Catfish Tyler now, and I'm gonna get on off here and see if I can find me some fun to get into. You guys have a good time here with Catfish Tyler. I will catch you guys on the flip. All right, and don't forget to hit that like button, everybody. I sure do appreciate it. Talk to you later. All right. Welcome back. Dreamed of your ticket out. Welcome back. Got my sheet back here in the background. I'm going to put my Harley up here so you guys can see me with Harley. My nice little Harley bike. Yep. Well, thank you for being here on the channel with me. And we're going to see how long of a delay we've got on the screen right now. And oh, goodness gracious. Holy mother of God. Look at that thing, folks. 705. I told you when I got back, it'd be green. I told you. You are all believers now. You can believe it. That was easy. Yes, it was. That was very easy for us to make money on SoFi today, buying it at six eighty eight a share, and now seeing us up almost twenty cents on it. And a new high is coming. A new high today. Thirty one million shares. Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do now? Another million shares traded in the last fifteen, twenty minutes. Uh oh. Some serious volume starting to come in here, folks. Some serious volume coming in on the one day now. Let's go to the one day and look at it. Thank you for being here with me. I want to thank you very much for being here with me. And I would like to ask you all to do me a favor at 2.04 p.m. And that is to simultaneously hit the like button in 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Hit that like button, everybody, and let's get even more people over to this gorgeous-looking chart and show it to them right now. Everybody who hits the like helps this channel get perpetuated further and higher and better and to more people, folks. We're getting thousands and thousands of people every day coming over to the channel. We now have about uh, almost 1,800 subscribers, which is up 1,500 from six months ago. That's a lot of people coming over that have learned something more about this stock they didn't know before. And right now we're watching it as it starts to make its ascent. And I don't see any way to stop it. I already told you it, even an hour ago, there's no one that's really selling it here, everyone. The only ones that are selling it are, sh are shares that have been borrowed. And now they're getting those shares over into the hands of people who want to hold this stock for a long, long time. Like me until it sells at $39. Bartanian, I thought we were long-term here. No, I have a very large core position of over 50,000 shares, and then I day trade about 5,000 to 8,000 shares a day. I mean, I have done that. I don't do that every day. Sometimes people are here with me on the channel. They just watch me buy at the low, like I did this morning at seven, uh, 688. So... And I've always told everyone every time I bought this stock at $6.88, I've always sold it over $10. Every single time I bought this stock at $6.88, I've sold it over $10 every time. And still hold a big, huge core position of SoFi. SoFi is going to make me a millionaire. And many others on this channel are going to be who are already millionaires, I believe, that hold over 100,000 shares of SoFi, far more than I hold. I hold about half that. But you see what we got on the screen, it's green, and that's what you're going to be seeing in the future of this stock more often than the reds. And some of those green days are going to be up massively. Some of the some of the deep green days that we see here with SoFi, and I've already told all my people on this channel, you better have your sell orders in on this stock as high as your brokerage will let you put them in. 
because I've owned stocks before and seen them go up 400%, 500%, 600%. And they only do it for a day. (laughs) And if your orders aren't there for sale, they won't fill. Now, I know some brokerages only allow people who are on margin to put unlimited sell orders in pretty much. But even regular people with regular accounts under $25,000 who aren't trading on margin, they can still put sell orders in on SoFi at $24.99 right now, I think is the limit. And I would suggest you do that so that the shorts can't borrow your shares. I tell everybody on this channel every single day, please tie up your shares on all your sell orders on this stock. Make sure you put them in at $24.99. And guess where this price is going to go one day? $24.99. <clears throat> that's what I think I could be wrong but I don't think so and I'm sure not seeing it red today in fact I just saw it jump two cents from 703 to 705 and when you see jumping two cents it might be a guy to acquire a little bit more because this stock doesn't usually move two cents to the upside that fast just letting you know just a little tip for you there right there in case you weren't aware of it I just saw it jump from 703 to 705, and I don't see that very often with this stock unless someone came in big. And I'm going to go over here to the one day, and I got some big green candlesticks showing up here. And I got a gorgeous looking chart that is just in line with where it should be on the 200 day moving average right now. Just in case you're not aware of it, just where it should be. Gorgeous. How are they going to stop it? See, because there becomes a point, folks, in every battle of of longevity like this. Of a, It's called a war of attrition. And we've seen a lot of little battles won lately by the shorts, but the, the war will be won by the longs. All right? And this is why we're green now, and we didn't stay green, and no one was really scared this morning to sell their stocks. The only one sold was another borrowed shares going from people who don't want SoFi from people who do. Those those shares went from those who didn't want the stock to those that want to hold it till it's over 10, 11, and 12, and 1454. You might wonder why I keep throwing those numbers out. Well, there's very valid reasons for those numbers. And one of them, the 1454, is double the 727, where was the offer of the convertible notes at $7.27. And the ro- the brokerages that have to acquire all those shares for the convertible notes when they convert needs to get them as cheap as they can. So no wonder, damn, the price of SoFi just dropped over the last four days to the lowest it's been in, white, in a very long while since November the 21st when it was $6.41. You can go back over here to the SoFi historical data, and you can see what I mean. Come over here to the lows, and those lows are located. Oh, geez. Just give me a second here. Here are the lows right here. Today's low of 686, right? Today's low, 686. Well, folks, I got news for you. I'm going to roll this back, and you tell me the last time you saw a number in the sixes. I know where it was. It was November the 21st, and it was, oh, look at that. Here we saw, uh, there it is, 641, and it was November the 21st. Okay, so I'm showing you this number for 641 because look where the price was at 1016 within a month. Okay, that's why I'm showing it to you. And then the next low that they could get us to was what we just saw just now, 686. So for those of you who may not be paying any attention, I'll go to the very low that we were over the last year. All the way back here, we're going to drop all the way back to the lowest this price has been, and that was all the way back in May the 15th. And here it is. <clears throat> there was the lowest it was, 445. Okay? And the next day's low was 461. So 445 was the low. And you come up to November the 21st. And what was that next low that they could achieve? The same low as the day after 
the lowest they got it. <laughs> and by the way, 641 is 44% higher than that low of 445. So the last low that they could get back in May on David Chiaverini's downgrade to 250 target, they got it down to $6.45 uh, $4.45 and the next low was 6.41 and that is a 44% gain on the lowest they could get it. And it was a long time after May. June, July, August, September, October, November, five months, six months, and they got it to 641, but that was 44% higher than the 445. And then after the 641, this is the new one today, 686. That's the new low that they've driven it down to from the last high up here in the nines, okay? From 918. And that number is a familiar number because if you go back before to before they got it down to 641 on November the 19th, what I just showed you, look where it went from for the high before that down to. Okay, hold on. It was 66 days before that, and the price was right here, 927. 945, 957 in the 10s. There's a number right there it is. September 14th. That's the number I was looking for. 918. And from that day on, September 4th, 918 was the price. They drove us down. So that's why I show you that number. It was from September to October to November 21st. And the price had gone from 918 to 641. So I'd show you that high because it's the same high as we just recently saw of 918. All right. Make sure you're aware of that. And then from 918, do you think they're going to drive us all the way back down to six? Well, they already drove us from 918 to 641 in 66 days. Now they got us at 686. <clears throat> but the difference is from 641 to 686, and look where the price is now. It's over seven, right? It's still 705. Okay. So 6.41 times 8.1% plus, that's 692 a share. We were just at, uh, for the low today, 686. So about 8%, 6.41 times 8% plus 692. So still, um, so a 44% gain from the 445 to the 641, and now another almost 8% gain from the 641 to the number we just saw, 698. And those no matter which way you look at it, folks, those are gains that are higher lows by nice percentages, all right, even though they, they're happening over a long term. But they explain perfectly then why we see the 200-day moving average over this six-month term just steadily increasing. There, That's the reason the six-month chart sh uh, shows the green line 200-day moving average doing nothing but going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Because the low was at six, was at 445 back here, and then it was at 641, and now it's at 686, and it just keeps getting higher. The low keeps getting higher, period. Any way you look at it, folks. Now, it's not at launch point yet, but folks, we still have, look at that, 706 I just saw, folks. <clears throat> this looks very strong. And I am an advocate of attrition and volume. 32 million shares now. It's been about, what, eight more minutes, another million shares? Trying to add to my small 112 shares of portfolio as quickly as I can at these levels. Hello. Yeah, I hear you, man. I took a picture of what I think is the last time we're ever going to see the price below $7. I took a picture of it. 
and it happened today at 1.42 p.m. Today at 1.42 p.m., I'll tell you what happened. Today at 1.42 p.m., <laughs> ding dong, the shorts went long. This is our new SoFi song. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. <laughs> ding dong, the shorts went long. Found out we're all King Kong strong. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. Ah, SoFi, it grows and grows and grows. And this is what we know. And this is why we sing and we ring that bell. Yeah, ding dong, the shorts went long. This is our new SoFi song. Ding dong, the shorts went long today. All right. <laughs> that was easy. Oh, yeah, everybody. This is the day it begins. And you can see it happening right now before our very eyes. Nice. The, 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 the shorts went long today. <laughs> I can see there's only about a one minute delay on the screen right now. <laughs> Uh, I hear you, YZ. Let's close over 710. Yes, I hear that. Let's hear it, Richard. My price average for share is actually right now 670 so per share. <laughs> Only because I've been able to buy it back some lower big chunks. Rivian, okay. Uh, I happen to know inside information about Rivian because my son actually is working, so I'm not allowed to talk about them too much uh, because my son is helping them with the re retooling. One of my sons is. I have another son who's into natural gas <clears throat> down in the central Florida here in Orlando, Florida, where he delivers natural gas. Oh, baby, what are shorts coming out? We'll try to make it red again. Oh my God, they're in panic mode. Call up the brokerage, borrow some more shares, borrow, 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 borrow more. They're borrowing, borrowing, burrowing, burrowing, borrowing, burrowing in. That's right. The shorts are borrowing, burrowing, borrowing, burrowing in. <laughs> oh, yes. They're burying, scaring. <laughs> ah, they're a terroring thing. But the shorts will lose this war, my friends. The battle is in their short-term vision, but the war is in ours. Uh, I know you're not an EV guy, but I will. <clears throat> All right, folks. Let's cost the shorts a lot of money today, all right? Let's cost these shorters a ton of money. Nice. That's a nice game right there today. Huh. 
See, now this is what I like. This is at the bottom, folks. It's starting to make a move. <clears throat> Two hours ago, Rivian owners can now access Tesla's supercharger network. Okay. All right, I see him. Thank you, Ron. God, the five year chart, man. Jeez. It's not pretty. Folks, be careful. <laughs> Wade into this, folks. Wade in if you're going in on Rivian, all right? I mean, you know, pick you up 100 shares. You got a couple thousand to play with or more than that. <laughs> Get 50 shares. You got a couple thousand to play with. Be cautious. This is one you don't have to be cautious about because the charts tell a different story, and this is what it is. Up, 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 up. Right on my trend line. The 200-day moving average bumps along, it goes up over a little bit, bumps along, it goes up over a little bit, it bumps along, it goes up over a little bit, bumps along, it goes over a little bit. But if you pull this out, folks, this thing could skyrocket on this trajectory just like it did from here to here, but it could do it on the next earnings call from right here all the way to freaking way up here, way up here. And I believe it will. Honestly, believe it will. That's why I own the stock. That's why I have such a whore, huge whore, uh, core holding. Or <laughs> <Whore> holding. <laughs> I almost said. Everybody, stick with me, all right? We're going to be fine with this stock. We're going to make a lot of money off of it, man. It's getting ready to get get go get crazy around here. You haven't seen nothing yet. But don't. 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 No, you ain't seen nothing yet, huh? Baby, baby, here's something, here's something you're never gonna f forget. Baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't been around. No, no, I'm serious. Yep, plus the Fed meeting tomorrow, Wednesday. You know what's in interesting? Have you guys not noticed that the last few Fed meetings, the last three that I know that they were going to have, they've been in a major fall of the market the day before and the day, the next day before. Two days prior to that, they started to stir about everyone was so scared about the Fed. What are they not so scared about this time? Ah, well, they already ran it down. They ran the price down a couple days ago, and I told you it was being manipulated down. The whole market, I told you, was going to go to a newer high. I said that, I said it as plain as the nose on my face. And you guys and gals know that, that I told you that it was all being manipulated and all the markets were going to go to brand new highs after this run back here. All of them are going to go to another new high now. I mean, Look at the NASDAQ, even just less than a month ago, the newest high was 16,080, and now it's at 16,160. And rising, almost up 200 points, and it's rising as we speak, just like SoFi's about to do. And there's a good reason for that. There's nothing they can do to stop it. There's the NASDAQ right there. And I show you this over the six-month chart. And I wanted you to know that when I'm, I'm showing you this, because when you look at the six month chart, you can clearly see what's going on with the NASDAQ. And that is it's been driven down and up and down and up and down and up weekly on some sort of Fed notification or in inflation rates or jobless and everything you can think of they use to yank people out. But the overall out, out, outcome is that if you look at the long term chart, the doggone thing, look at this manipulation, boom, down, oh, boom, down, oh, boom, down and every time going right on back up it's just shaking the this is just absolute manipulation like i've never seen before in the market folks i'm telling you over the last month these have been the way the market's been manipulated and look where it started out 15 635 okay that was the high and it was even lower down here 15 4 15 482 February the 21st, but look what the NASDAQ has done since then, but look how they've shaken the tree out, shaken the tree out, shaken the tree out. 
I mean, this is just becoming a regular thing. And they shook it uh, out again on Friday. They shook it out again on Friday. And now look at it up 195 points or shook it out all last week. They shook this thing out last week big, just like they've been doing each week. And they do it over one or two day periods, folks. And they're, they're really trying to shake them out thickly. But then they just, man, off it goes. Isn't that amazing? Man, it's amazing. I show you these longer term charts because they apply. And you can see that they are not just doing this to SoFi everybody. It's happening to the whole market. Somebody is playing big time with this. And they're, and it's, again, they, they use they use headlines. The big wheel they got, they spin it. And they say, this time it's interest. Oh, this time it's going to be the, this time it's inflation. Oh, the Fed this, the whatever. They, they, they give you the reason. Everybody agrees with it. They all sell everything. And they run everybody out, shake it all out. And then it's right on back up. I mean, look at that freaking NASDAQ chart, folks. It's absolutely crazy. The thing has been going up from here, 15.4, all the way up to a high of 16.05. So there's 500 points. And then it gets on another run. They After this 500 point, they pulled it back 100. And then they made it go off. And it went to 16.299. And they pulled it all the way to 15.866. 600 points that time down. Then they run it up to the next high. And what's that? They tried to shake out the tree even here. They did a little shake out at 16,291 and ran it down briefly to 16,263, a 30 uh, point drop. And then it jumps all the way back up here to this high. 16,443 on March the 8th, a week ago. 16,443 and then look at that massive down to 16,170. Only to run it right back up here to here again. The same peak there and the same peak there and the same peak there, the same peak there. Then run it right back down. But be aware that this is the deepest drop shakeout. This was a moderate shakeout. And they look identical. See how they all start to make that little recovery and then one more little shake before the bounce? There it is. It's falling, falling. There's a little recovery. Then the shake. There's your cup, handle, drop, and pop. There's your cup. There's your hand, there's your cup right there, there's your handle right there, there's your drop, and there's your pop. And here it is again. There's your cup, there's your handle, there's your drop, and there's your pop. And here, what do you got growing here? A cup? I'm guessing a handle. We're going up to six six sixteen three fifty. Then they're gonna drop it back down to where we are here, and then she pops on up. Most likely. Hope you like my assessment. And uh, people say uh, there is no manipulation in the marketplace, but I would highly <laughs> suggest that that's uh, something we all know that unfortunately we, we witness manipulation every day, especially with this stock. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> I believe that these uh, acquisitions of these convertible notes by this brokerage has to now go out and get all the shares and had to get them as low as they could. And so congratulations today. They got them there. At 686, they started buying them and they bought them until as it, it continues to rise here. And they have no reason to stop it now. They got in all those shares and locked them away. 100 million shares today. They, they only got 32 million count. They still got to get 70 more. Have they already got 30 each day before? On the other lows, is that the question? Is that what they did, break it up over three days and decide to acquire the shares that way? So they got them going back here to historical data again now on SoFi. I'm going to have to refresh the page here. Forrest L says, I see those Rivians all the time in Arizona. KCM, pop, lock, and drop. Yep. Seven oh five, folks, and guess what I see here? I see a cup, a handle, a drop, and a pop right here, baby, on this chart even. People say, what do you mean, catfish? What the hell are you talking about? Well, well, look at this chart right here today. There's your cup. There's your handle right there. There's your drop. And there's your pop. Boom. Off to the upside. There's your cup right there. There's a little bit of a handle. 
there's your drop, and then there's your pop. Boom. Here's your cup. <laughs> this is a bowl, all right? Here's your bowl. There's your handle. There's your little drop. It wasn't much of one there. You can barely see it, but right there, you can see there was a small drop right there. There was a small drop right there, right there. Boom. Back to six ninety nine after it broke over seven briefly, it dropped. See, there's your drop right there, and then there's your pop. And here, right now, cut. There's your handle. Here's your little drop, and pop. As we hit thirty three million shares with an hour and a half, and we're definitely going to go over forty million, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about a lot of things going on and including the sports world that's going to be stunned to see SoFi's all over the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN+, Plus, ABC. We're right around the corner from that, folks. You're talking right now literally you're about eight months away all right, from that being implicated and going into kicking into gear. They were going to start it in December, because see, this is an indoor arena, so they were going to start the season December 30th on ABC, and they had the roof issue with their stadium, but that roof issue is being solved right now, I can assure you. We have plenty of cash right now on hand to take care of that roof repair, all right, down at the stadium in Florida, and they're going to start this indoor golf, and in case you haven't heard about it, it's going to change the way golf is played because it's going indoors and they're going to let uh, the people that are in the crowd interact by listening with headphones or whatever so they can hear the communication between the people that are playing on the field and the like their caddies the players and their caddies will hear the whole dialogue and it's going to be a lot more interactive customers will be able to be more in touch with the game and closer 707 here we go everybody 2.34 p.m. and the clock has, the gun has gone off. Boom! All right, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Oh, man. On your mark. <laughs> Get set. Uh-huh. Where did all the 686 shares go? Long time passing this morning. Where did all those 686 shares go? Long time ago. Ah, uh, where did all the 686s go? I've been searching, but I don't know. Uh -huh. And look at so far grow, uh -huh. and look at it grow and grow. Ah ha ha ha! ba Where did all the six and nineties go? Oh, long time passing. Ha <laughs> ha Where did all the six and nineties shares of? Of so far go. Uh, uh, where did all the six and ninety shares? Uh, I looked around, but they're no longer there. Oh, well, will they ever return? Uh, they may just never return. Oh, yeah. Singing catfish. <laughs> Where did all the six ninety nines? All the shorts just can't seem to find. Where's that so five six ninety nines? Uh, so long ago. Ah, they'll be singing this. Where's the so five six ninety nines? Oh my goodness gracious, seven eights all they find. Oh, when will? They have a return. When will the shorts ever learn? Oh, yeah. 
singing the price up, Mopar. <laughs> Where did all the seven woe ones go? <laughs> They're down there deep below. <laughs> Where the seven all ones all go? <laughs> Not long ago. Ho, ho. Where are all the seven O oh, ones gone? Ah, they're in graveyards way beyond. Oh, when will the shorts ever learn? Ah, when will the shorts ever learn? All right. Yes. Calm down, Ty. <laughs> you don't tell me to calm down. No, no, no. I'm here to sing a song and make the price go up. It's all there is to it. <laughs> and introduce some of these younger folks to some of the classical music of the 1960s and the 70s. Stuff that you can't compare to today. All natural. All natural. They play the guitars. They bang on the drums. They have the beautiful voices. How about that group that came out? John Denver introduced them on Saturday uh, on uh, Johnny Carson's show. And they sang a song called Afternoon Delight. Oh, my gosh. Everybody go to YouTube and put in Johnny Carson Afternoon Delight. John Denver. Let's go. Hey, you know, <laughs> in my pawn shop that I used to own, I used to have a big jug. It's still behind me back here and it's full of change. I dumped a lot of it out recently for some uh, group of kids that came by for donations and I didn't have any cash on me. And uh, anyway, I had a bunch of change in there because I had a sign on the side of the jug that said, put money in this jar if you want me to stop playing. <laughs> Or stop singing. And uh, there was a lot more money in there for people that when I'd be singing, go over and just uh, throw money in there. And it got a lot in there, boy. I have no idea. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars and probably some pennies in there. It could be worth thousands. Who knows? I'll leave those over to my grandchildren. Maisie will be the one playing with that. Look at this price on SoFi, everybody. Can you believe it? It's freaking green. Can you believe that? And it's it's going up to 710. And it's going to 720, I do believe. And she's going to pass 720 on her way to the 40s. Soon after that, she'll be on up to 780 and 90. And then she'll go right past 8 like 8 was a bowl of butter. Melted butter for you dip your card into and your potatoes. <laughs> I'm on. We look great in five-minute chart. Ah, yes, we do. Everything is looking fantastic for us all. I hope you had yourselves a happy, fantastic St. Patrick's Day, and I hope you come to my channel and saw me on my St. Patrick's Day outfit. Tell everybody St. Patrick's Day. Had ourselves a good time. We had some Rubens with our fresh cut brisket. Oh, my goodness gracious. And beef tips, burnt beef tips. Oh, it was unbelievable. I got myself fatter than I was before. Ah. Singing a little happy song here this afternoon. As the shorts get burned. Done went through all them shays they went and borrowed. And today they just got themselves slung right into the corner. We don't know how the hell they're going to take care of themselves. <laughs> They had better watch their backsides, I believe. Uh, they could have themselves in a real pickle. It looks to me like those shorts are kind of underestimated what was going to happen here with SoFi today. And I believe they have now got themselves in what they call down here a bear trap. And in case you don't know, I think that might be good image for old catfish to use on this next video, per se. I mean, put a big old bear in a trap. Oh, it sounds good. Sounds delicious. 
hey, how you folks doing? You going to get all liquored up on this stock once y'all hit over $10 and think you done hit the gold mine? <laughs> I can guarantee you, I start talking like this here. I wouldn't have many viewers for long here talking about stocks. But why not just have some fun with it every once in a while, everybody? <laughs> That's what catfish is here after all, entertainment purposes. I'm not here to try to fool you into thinking I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just tell it like I sees it, folks. And what I sees right now is a chart that looks something out of God's creation of heaven above. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I know there's many a time when I'm around these hair parts talking and I was talk like Mr. China man, but sometimes you just got to kick call that in the rear end and call out the sophistication and start getting like what you was brought up. And this here's the way I used to talk when I was a little kid. <laughs> I was growed up down there where the stills and the shine was flowing. <laughs> you speaking of shine right now i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all everybody that they're getting their eyeball shine right now big old shiner for them shorts <laughs> they're getting their masses whooped all over the place here and the dang volume just gotten totally out of control on them appears to me <laughs> my my viewership is dropping like a rock right now. People just can't take it. A pawn shop owner once told me, "Don't buy gold or diamonds at a retailer, and do instead buy it at a pawn shop because the pawn shores actually sell it to you for what it's worth." Yeah, it's a dang straight truth right there. I'm here to tell you. Them old pawn shops, they get you the best deals and they get some, no of them diamonds themselves. I know, I purity, I can tell you what we're looking for there. Clarity, color, the three C's, cut. Clarity, color, and cut. It's as simple as that there. Them on selling them people on them black diamonds and them colored diamonds, you'd be throwing them out. <laughs> now they're telling everybody, get yourself one of them here. What they call them diamonds? <laughs> they are they, they're black <laughs> oh my goodness gracious sakes of lord <laughs> have myself a good look at that done they were hitting themselves a whole new damn high today i told you so <laughs> somebody up here earlier said it should be nice to see old sofa up there 710 close out over 710 now i agree with 100 <laughs> percent Oh, goodness gracious, folks. Y'all have to have some fun once in a while. I see I'm just losing one customer after another here in my station today. But I don't care. I'm going to keep bringing it. <laughs> I go on catfish, the doggone crazy country boy talking out stocks. Entertainment is the reason I tune in. But you're very, very serious about SoFi. Thank you. You're dang straight I am. I'm going to shoot right from the hip with that SoFi there. I'm going to tell you how it is. I've been studying it down here stocks for so long. I feel like I'm just, I feel like we're drawn at the hip. <laughs> you guys and gals, I'm going to thank y'all for hanging out here with me today. I know I can be annoying at times. I realize that y'all tuning in here now, new to the channel, probably think everybody that's here with me is a bunch of plum idiots. But truth the matter be told, I know what I'm talking about. Come here stocks, I'm telling you now. I'm going to get more famous than ever talking like this here. <laughs> I call myself a trading retard. Catfish Tyler, the retarded trader. Well, I ain't nothing about retard when you talk like this here. Don't mean you're dumb. Just maybe didn't get all that, you know, superior schooling and all going on into their college and their, their stuff there. <laughs> maybe they'd had to drop out. Maybe they need to take over that still for Poppy. He passed away when the thing blowed up. <laughs> oh goodness gracious folks today i've been having so much fun here with y'all like i always does and i figured time to kick a little country into gear here for you <laughs> and uh see how y'all took it if you can take it or not because if you're holding on to this here so far stock you got bad take just about pertinent anything don't you <laughs> 
Oh, goodness. Can you tell? I've been around these here parts, know how to talk just like them other people. When you're in Rome, you got to talk like a Roman, right? <laughs> okay, I understand. I got to get back to the reality of things, and we're going to have to stop messing around having so much damn fun here. 710, get down, James Brown. <laughs> This ain't no ho James Brown. What you talking about? Jeez, old Pete. This here the folks down there where I grew up, around them parts in Kentucky, went to me to school there, and I learned all the laying of the land. I found out I out there in the steels. How much coke have you done today? Grippy wants to know. Don't have nothing to do with that artificial stuff. Or I read. You got to be kidding yourself. Don't know stuffing that shit up your nose. <laughs> Richard C. The accents were ten dollars. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all just got hold her here for a minute. Might bust my belly open. Pipe burp. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Richard C. coming in here in the tank, splashing all around with his donation. <laughs> Apparently, he likes his here talk. So Richard, are you in the you in the tank? Richard C. Uh, <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Look at that long ass list of people done gave over some funds to me to keep this channel here. And now you start to probably wonder what the hell you did. Oh my God, have we created a monster? <laughs> so bitch. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's a laughter channel, folks. I'm bringing to you today. Some bitch just hit eleven now. Damn near knocking me out of me chair. Goodness, frickin' gracious! What's this dang thing doing? She done cut loose on us. <laughs> I see here, I got me a long delay on here, so I'm going to refresh this here page first off. Y'all hold on here a minute now. Maybe I need to do this more often. It seems to me just as talking like this here, get this dog on stock, I'll kick it right in the damn booty. <laughs> she just going off like a banshee on all of us here, and including them damn shorts. Ain't got no idea what the hell's going on around these here parts. <laughs> <laughs> I refresh the page. I see we got 50 people here sticking it out <laughs> through my crazy antics this afternoon. I want to thank you for being here while we look at this gorgeous SoFi stock and look at that gorgeous chart. And folks, I think they got all those shares they wanted for that convertible note deal. I think they got them all. <laughs> Our mom's at 7-Eleven and keep laughing. <laughs> uh, I think a time ever we change over a go with my friend come from Taiwan. <laughs> he like I talk a Chinese with you. You're like an experienced Chinese person. Come on, tell you all about good stock you buy. That's what me catfish Taiwan do have today. Talk a Chinese too. 
we cannot not just do uh, the language of people of, uh, down the south, Florida, and so forth. We have to keep uh, keep uh, people informed all the time. Kicking the booty. I <laughs> uh, see what I'm going on in Haiti. Not good. Very bad. I have a bad time. I have a loser prime minister. People take a president or whatever you call him. He's not there no more. Interim. They take him out. I don't know. All the gang members are terrible. It's not a good time. I try to talk a Chinese and talk about that. So I changed now back to regular voice. So anyway. Yeah, it's uh, very depressing what's going on with uh, Haiti, Haiti right now. Haiti is in a state of utter chaos with these gangs. And believe it or not, um, to some extent, the, I've looked into the detail of this, and there's there's a real conundrum going on, and that is that some of these gangs, the member and the leader of the one in particular is so... Well, the word is idolized. All right, by the the citizens who think he's fighting on the behalf of the poor people because of all the corruption that for so long has been misplacement of monies and funds that have been come into that country, and uh, they're um, these gang leaders. The 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 the, the head honcho is sort of uh, he's a do gooder. He's a he's, he's a stealing from the um, you know the rich and giving to the poor. All right. That's the way that they consider themselves and are, are looked upon from the people in the community. And uh, I saw an interesting interview on one of the channels. The guy was brave enough to go down and do an interview with the guy. And uh, they, as he walked around town and stuff, everybody was like, at him, almost like Jesus walking around. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, you know, can do no wrong and uh, you st keep up the good work and, you know, cheers and that kind of stuff going on. Because I can speak the language. I know the language. I know what they're saying. But anyway, uh, that's Haiti. It's 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 had a very interesting past. And it's uh, the second country in the, United, in the Western Hemisphere to gain independence from Europe. And that's part of the problem with it, that ever since that day, it was neglected by the rest of the world. And there was no trading going on with the... There was no interconnection. The Dominican Republic was Spanish owned under Spain. And so Spain was still there and working with Dominican Republic. And uh, they were at a, you know, they had a nation that was recognized in the trade commission. But with Haiti, once they overthrew uh, the French and defeated Napoleon, and uh, the reason that they didn't go over there to even try to get the island back is because they knew they were going to get blown out of the water by Henri Christophe having taken over all the forts and the Citadel and so forth and Capetian. But anyway, um, not to get too far away from the subject at hand. Right now, we are talking stocks and it's a terrible situation down in Haiti. And uh, I wish I could go down and change everything. I read over the weekend, it didn't sound too good. No. <clears throat> they are uh, in a period of I told Cheryl when I first saw the story, I says, I guess I got a job offer I might be taking. She said, what? And I said, I'm going to go down and run Haiti. Can you imagine? I mean, I could get a lot done down there, I guarantee you, but I don't know whether or not I'd be accepted by some of the gangs they might have. And I kind of stand out as a target being one of the white people there than there's so few of. I uh, can't really hear you. Can't hear me. Can't hear me. What What's going on? Why can't you hear me? That I've heard, I've heard other people tell me before that they weren't able to hear me, and uh, they could. Uh, other people said, "No, it's not you, Ty. I can hear you fine." So sometimes it can be on your end, Henry Vartanian. Because I'll show you right now what I'm talking about. I go over here. I go to sources. I go to audio controls, audio mixer, and there's my mic right there. And you can see it's at full level. It's maxed out. It can't get any louder. It could if I was to send some more here, maybe. Let's go see. If, oh, wow. I'm glad I didn't do that. Hold on. Ah, there we go. Maybe that helps a little bit. Let's get it up a little bit more. All right. Hopefully that helps a little what I just did to it. I'm not sure if it did, but I think it might have. So there you go. <coughs> Ah, it's nice to see us sitting here today in greener pastures, finally. And 
as I've already stated, I'm very certain about this fact that uh, so if I, well, I'm not very certain. I can't make any guarantees as I never do, but I feel very confident that SoFi is going to continue to go up now mysteriously and strangely. And it's my summation that the brokerage that just made the deal for the basically 120 million shares of SoFi to be converted over from the convertible notes has now gone out and acquired all the 120 something million they needed. And it's my presumption and guess that now they've taken 120 more shares off of the market that they can't borrow, the shorts can't borrow. And I'm not saying exactly 120 million, but the price is around $7 and the amount that they had was 682 million, 682.5. That was the value of all the convertible notes because they were oversubscribed. They were looking for 750 million and they got 862.5 million. So 862.5 million. Yep. <clears throat> Divided by seven. <clears throat> That's 123.21 million. So basically 123 million shares from the way I understand it, from what was explained to me on uh, by Uncle Bruce, and I think he knows, and I think he's a reliable source, is that uh, that's 123 million shares that no longer are available, that were easily available for the shorts to borrow. And uh, now they're not. And then it's also been my my belief, and I've been saying to people, that the, that my belief is that starting as of four days ago, uh, my belief is that they started accumulating the shares that they wanted to get for the offer um, that they just did. And so I think that's what, one of the reasons the price has dropped from $7.61 for the low, which was $7.95 for a high. I think one of the reasons it's dropped from there all the way down here, a dollar and nine cents today, was because they needed to accumulate 100,000 shares. 123, a million, 123 million shares. Because now they have to have those shares set aside for the convertible notes. It's as simple as that. If I buy a call on SoFi, which best do you think? I don't recommend buying calls because I don't like anyone getting caught into a term. All right. So, and I don't do uh, calls. I don't do, I don't do any short shorting of the stock at all. I've just been trading it on the highs, selling a portion of my portfolio on the highs and then buying back on the lows. And there's been about usually a one month duration between each of those, you know, where you can get the highs out and then the low is a month later and you get back in and then a month later it's high and you get out. And each time it's been over $10. <laughs> Down here in the sevens, over 10, sell it. Down here in the sevens, over 10, sell it. Down here in the sevens, buy it, up here, 10, sell it. Done that so many times, five times in the last year. And I'm not going to stop doing it. And I'm not going to stop holding on to my core until I'm doing that in the 18s to the 20s. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then it'll be the 24s to the 25s where I'll be doing it one day. One day in the future, if I live long enough. I'll be trading this in the $24 range. And I'll be telling everybody it's still a good buy then. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody, because it is a good buy. And that was proven today by everybody that came into it when they ran it down this morning. And it's becoming now a very daily occurrence. Open the market, run it up a few cents, down hard, and then off you go. And, my, and Friday... Friday's chart didn't even look as good as this one. Friday's looked good, though, because it came out and got knocked down at the very beginning on Friday, and then it just went up and up and up and up and up and up all day Friday afternoon, the chart. It was it was m moving up and down five and six cents, but man, it, the whole day, that damn thing on Friday just went like that. I looked at it at the end of the day. I went, man, that's a damn good looking Friday chart. Even though it was red, it was looked good. <clears throat> and it now we're green, and it looks even better, doesn't it? 
doing the same damn thing, except this acceleration and climb is a lot steeper angle than what we saw on Friday, people. I'm just letting you know right now. This is a different, this is a different uh, look to it. This has a different look and a different feel from Friday. And the volume looks good. Seventy-two people on this channel right now with me. I want to ask you here at three o two. Three o two. Right now it's three o one and some change. In ten seconds, let's hit the like button together, everybody. See if we can get over ninety-five likes. Right. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom! Hit that like button. See if we can get us up to ninety-five likes or more. For each and every one of you that gives me a like right now, I will definitely, definitely show you my appreciation with a heart on here. <clears throat> uh, Forrest L. said, uh, Quran at you leaps. Quran leaps. <clears throat> Forrest L. says leaps. <clears throat> Hism says they're freedom fighter, yeah. Can't really hear you. We can hear you well. Armand says we can hear you well. I can certainly hear myself better now that I raised my um, gain. And I did raise it quite a bit. So hopefully that increases the volume for you too, whoever was just listening and having trouble maybe hearing me. But someone said they could hear me fine. Uh, I want you to know how grateful I am for your here being here and hitting that like button right now. Goodness gracious, it means so much. And there you go. <clears throat> Thank you. There's a hard on for you. There's a hard on for you. There's a hard on for you and a hard on for you. And there's a heart on for you. Thank you. 93. Nice. 93 likes. We're about to break over 1,000 viewers today. And I mentioned on my thumbnail, is it tennis coming next? And there's a reason why. Because SoFi is just getting themselves into so much right now. SoFi, so much going on. Think about it, man. They got that awesome stadium. They're filling it out with Taylor Swift every single day for seven days, sold out in a row. I can't even imagine how an artist can perform that many days and that many hours on the stage every night. It's amazing in the first place. <sighs> Yeah, there are times when I talk low, I'll get in here and I call it the golf voice. I'll bring it in real tight like this and I'll talk with what I call the the, the, the golf voice. And uh, I, I moderated it a lot. I know that. It gets sometimes really loud and crazy though here on this channel. <laughs> I'll let you know that right now. Now, we're looking at some other stocks today, O-P-E-N, still being suppressed, if you will. GCT was down 22% when we looked at that earlier today. Someone mentioned this is another place to be buying, and I said, it looks to me like it, it is. And it was down 22%, now down 19%, so that would have been a 3% gain off of that buy earlier today on this one, GCT. Every, every time they've come hard at this with no news breaking out, it's always bounced right off of it again. So, <clears throat> But we're just going to watch this and see if they may even come at it again tomorrow uh, morning. But it has really gone crazy. I mean, I called this out about three months ago. I, I brought this stock to everyone's attention. I said, man, you got to get in on this GCT. And we did right down here in the nines. Ten dollars and so, you know, jeez. Wow. All right. Now, as we continue on here, we're looking at SoFi, as they're going to make a nice little effort here on their part. And I love to see them do this because, to be honest with you, all they're going to have to do, they're going to be forced into a major corner here where they've got to just add to the volume even more, and that is not, that is not what they want to do. They don't want volume buyers to start coming in on this stock. 
they don't want to they don't want to trigger hey the volumes are really increasing the money flow is coming in and they don't like having to do that they don't they would just as soon see money flow going out and we had a guy on here that was keeping us abreast of that i don't know where he is today elon where are you Henry, yeah. Okay. Well, I had other people say they could hear me fine, so I'm not sure where the loss of volume is coming from. I'm certainly hearing myself as loud as I need to be here for sure. Uh, and I already showed you here, uh, sir. This is my mic audio volume and it's maxed out. I'm completely maxed out. I couldn't, I couldn't take it any higher. And I don't have any, a, a, a way to change it any further. So, and this microphone I have is a $300 mic and it's sitting in front of me. So, others are seemingly hearing me fine. I'm not sure what's going on on your end. But the other stocks that I'm talking about, I'm showing you on the screen. O-P-E-N. <clears throat> and we're looking at the one-year chart on this stock. And you can see that it's made moves up into the 450 range a couple of times. And it's it's been knocked down today. Uh, yesterday was the, really the day that it was hurt the worst. But anyway, <clears throat> they knocked it back yesterday and now they're taking it back up. They knocked it down the last week anyway. You can look at the five-day chart and you'll see what I mean. There it is. Ran it all the way down there to 253. This is what you call a cup, a handle, a drop. Ah. So we're looking at this one. They're not going to let it move from that number too much, 288, I don't believe. I think they're going to be comfortable with keeping it there all the rest of the day and hold it there all day long. I mean, till the close. Oh, now it's at 292, so it goes so show. Show what I know. I just wanted to refresh that screen. The volume's good, higher than it's been normally, so that's good to see volume closing in, coming in. <clears throat> GCT today, look at that. Boy, they came at that hard. Someone was asking me, was it time to get in on that? And I said, no, I would I would hold off here for a little bit. They might try and pull it down even a little bit further. And uh, But they did have it down here. You can see the 33, and I said 33.13. If they got it there, buy there. But uh, I was looking at this longer term chart on it, and I was trying to see comparisons with bottoms. And this was the only place I could see one was at 33.90. And... Uh, that's critical, 33.90 here, and it's holding above that, so we might see it bounce off of this. Then there was 34.03, so 33.90 there, 34.03, had two pretty good little bounces, you know, but hard to say exactly. It's, it's, it's at one of those points that I told her there's been two points before where it's been here, and it really needs to go up from there. I would look to get in here, 30.84, and uh, or at this price right here. 3231. And that's what I was talking about GCT earlier. Looking at 10X today. And they have a uh, annual report at a conference that's going to be today. I'm scheduled for this 10X. Um, I'm scheduled for it right now. And it's supposed to be a presentation. And I'm, I'm for the webcast, I'm going to be listening to this to hear what 10X has to say about the Vesemenden. <clears throat> And uh, so I've got that prepared. There it is right there. And it says that right now we are how far away from the time? It usually has a countdown. Two hours and 49 minutes away from the presentation on Le, Le Seven. 
I'll put this. I, I, I don't know whether you'll be able to get this. You might have to. You might have to subscribe <clears throat> for this. But here it is. 10x. There it is. You can try it. Maybe you'll get to watch it. But at any rate, all I did was just do a Google search for it. And uh, then I got to this page right here. If I back up from here, I can tell how I actually got here. Register. Here's the register for it. So you can register here. Register for the 10X if you're interested in hearing about it. Right here. That's the webcast by 10X, and you can uh, register for it right there. And once you register for it, you'll immediately get a link to the, to the broadcast, which will tell you when it's going to come on. And that's what I was just on just there. It'd be worth it for you to listen because, folks, <laughs> and then you better keep an eye on your stock because who knows what this damn guy's going to say. <laughs> he might say, yeah, the FDA is so happy with this that they're getting, they've told us 90 more days and we can really, I don't know what the hell he's going to say. So I'd be watching, I'd be watching 10X tonight just in case. And shorts, if I were you, I'd be watching your back right now because you got your stu self stuck your back's against the wall, man. I guess there's nothing to see but a wall behind you. Now the question is, what the hell are you going to do about it? <clears throat> what the hell are you shorts going to do about this uh, stock that needs to go to 1229 before all those convertible notes can be converted by all of those institutions who would be highly incentivized to get the price there? What I want to be able to find out here, folks, and I'm going to look right now with all 62 of you here, is let's go see if we can figure out real quick. <clears throat> Purchased. So if I convertible notes. Who? One of the things that it says here that there was an option for these purchasers to exercise their option to purchase additional notes. Well, they did that. <laughs> they didn't just get $750 million of convertible notes. They got $862.5 million. There's a video here by uh, our friends at Trading Fundamentals, Fundamentals of Investing podcast here on Google that you can, if you want to dig deeper into the offering, they do an explanation of it right here. 36 minute video. See here. It says here on March the 5th, SoFi slumps on plan to sell up to 862.5 million. Well, they did. That's my understanding. What I'm checking to see here is if there's, if there's any way to figure out who purchased these. That's why I said purchased SoFi convertible notes. <clears throat> Let's put in acquired. Uh, 
I'm just interested in seeing if I can find out here, folks. I appreciate your patience while I dig a little bit. Tools anytime. Past week, six hours ago. It says here uh, on the Globe and Mail down 29% year to date. That's if you were holding long, folks. If you were day trading this up over the last year, you'd be over 800% in the plus. <laughs> Just so you know that, if you've been day trading this stock since way back when in October 31st, <clears throat> and I have it all written down here on a piece of paper, folks, but take a look at this. <clears throat> if you've been day trading this stock, and if you had bought it for the price right there that it was in the very beginning, at $5.44 and you had bought 100 shares at $5.44 and then you sold it every time it got to its high and shorted there and then sold your shorted position every time it got to the next low. I have a piece of paper showing here, right here, all figured out mathematically going from highs to lows every single day and how much the gains were after all that time, your gains would have been 839, 839.2% one year and three months. And that was only going into June right there, January, into January. We're three more months now, or another month and a half anyway, right? <laughs> so... They're trying to show you how down it is, but if you're day trading this thing or trading it every time from a high to a low to a low to a high, you're making out like a freaking bandit. And these hedge funds are and have been on the shoulders of weak-handed retailers, folks. <laughs> Isn't that eye-opening? And the crazy thing is, some of the durations of these percentage moves, I'll give them to you. One of the durations, let me make sure I still have the screen like I should. Yep, I do. One of the durations to make a 31% change was six days. <laughs> One of them time, it made a 45% change in 84 days. And five days later, it was a 15% change. Six days later, a 42.5% change. Five days later, a 22% change. 30 days later, a 23% change. Nine days later, a 125% change. Folks, when the price went from 455 to 1023, that was a 125% change done in 30 days. Then a 32% drop, and then a 31% pop, and then a 13% drop, and a 30% pop, and a 48% drop from 1170 down to 789 in 27 days. <laughs> Holy smokes, folks. After that, a 16% raise, and then a 43% drop. <laughs> Oh my God, in 29 days, it went from 918 to 641, a 43% drop. And that was the last low it was, 641, until today's low was 686, right? That's true, 686 today is the new low they were take, able to take it down to, which I figured out was about 8% 8, 8, 8 higher than that 641 low. Today's low was 6 was 8% higher than the low of 641 that we had interesting huh i think it's interesting to know that i think it's very interesting to know how much this stock has been manipulated over to over time i think it's incredible and i think it's great in a way because we can take advantage of it we can take advantage of this heavy manipulation 
you guys saw me last two weeks ago. I sold at 913, three or four days. 913 bought back in the 870s. Uh, then back at 913, sold again. Back to the 870s, 920 sold again. Then back to 870. I missed 920 by two cents on the day it hit the 18, the 918. But folks, man, all those 913s I sold at the 8,000 one day and bought back at the 874, 72 it was awesome. And now look where the price is. After the last time I sold it at 913, I was just able to buy it back at $8 and uh, $6.86. God dang, man. And the hedge funds are able to do it too. And now they get to run it back up over 10 again, which they've always been doing over and over and over. Down in the sevens, back to the 10. Look at this. I mean, it's so easy and simple to see how many times they did it. I mean, it's just amazing to see that what they did with the stock price uh, over and over and over and over again. 455, 1023, 771, 1013, 894, 1170, 789, 918, 641, 1016, 923, 1049. Back over every time, down in the sevens, back over 10. They've been doing it and doing it, and they're not going to stop doing it. That's my call. People say, Catfish, what makes you so certain they're going to take it back over 10? Well, because they've already done it five times in the last year. Why wouldn't they keep doing that? It's a gold mine for them. And until they are, and they realize that I have a very small audience here on this channel, not everybody's going to hear this, and so they're not all going to know. But they're doing it and they keep doing it. And I believe they're going to keep doing it because it's so it's making them so much money, so much damn money. And guess what? To them, you know what the risk is? That much, really. Zero. Because they've already made so much money at this stage of the game, shorting it from down in the 20s down all the way to the fours that there's no way they can lose any money now on it. There's an, this is a no-lose situation for them right now, and that's why they can continue to come in and borrow and borrow and borrow so many sh shares right now. Well, it's a no-lose situation now, but when it gets back to 18 to 20, now we're going over their dollar cost average because they started with very low volume in the 20s running it down, but when it got to 16, they started coming in very heavily. And so they dollar cost average down, and when it got to 10, they made even bigger moves on it. So their dollar cost average has kept coming down and now we're starting to push that a little bit. We're starting to get close to that number where I think their dollar cost average is. Now, I don't know what their dollar cost average is right now. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing. It's not $20 anymore. Not after how heavily they were accumulating when it was down there in the fours and the fives. Because that's when they were really coming in. God, dogs. You look at that chart, folks, over the last two years. And you look at that volume and man, were they a massacring this thing when this price was down here in this range. When it started out, like I said, over here, there was hardly any, you can't even see the candlesticks as it was going up and down. But right here, folks, they started in a massive way when the price was around $15, shorting it. All this time, look at all those massive candlesticks accumulating, buying, shorting it down, shorting it down, shorting it down. And they still had plenty of shares when they started to make it go up to short it down even more because they were the ones that bought it here and gave a fake head fake to everyone. Then they shorted it down here. But this has changed now, folks. This is all changing. This is all a different story now. This is starting to change on them. And it's starting to rise on them. I don't know, and I can't figure out why in the hell my 200-day moving average isn't on this screen right here where you can see it. I don't know why. It must be because of the weak interval or something. And then I look for patterns. I see over here, one, two, three, four, five days down, then two green over here right now. One, two, three, four, five days down. Five days in a row again right there. <clears throat> five day stretch and then let her get on off. And there she goes now. 
I see 709 over here. What's they, what are they trying to show us here? Delay of time again? Seven minute delay I'm looking at? Uh, I've been looking at some other stocks today, folks. Um, one of them is BITF. And as you can see, it just went green. See what I mean by getting in here, folks? <clears throat> that was a good spot right there. I told you when I jumped over, I said, hey, look, this thing's at the bottom right there. It looks to me, I, I think you're safe to climb in here. <clears throat> Uber at $75 on November the 21st, right here on this date right here, when the price was half what it is now, practically, it was at $54 a share and they did a Big old convertible note offering of 1.5 billion senior convertible notes. And no, so you see what I mean? Look how the price has just gone right on up here, up here, up here, up here, because they, they can start converting the notes when they get it up high enough. See, they can start converting the notes that they got at 53 for about $60 or something. Once they get it way up here, they got to get it up here first. It's the same with SoFi. For those convertible notes to be cashed in, they have to get the price way up higher. They've got to get it to nine twenty nine a share before they can convert those notes instead of just getting 1.25% interest off of the money. And I know they didn't get those convertible notes because they expect to get 1.25% interest. They could go down to the damn bank and put it in a savings account and get better than that interest. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. 709, folks. We've already had one of our uh, folks on the channel with me comment to the fact that uh, it would sure would be nice to close over 710 and I would be elated to see that. And that would be at the beginning of a very good, long, steady run. And look at this volume now. We are going over 40 million shares, it looks like, easily. Yes, we will be. <clears throat> and I've been telling you guys and gals all along, the 40 million a day will be the kiss of death and the war of attrition will be won by us if we can hang on to over 40 million shares a day. And we're seeing that steadily, 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 steadily. Looking back over the history here, only one day. Every single day that you look at for the last 10 days has been over 40 million shares. And that's very good. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days there. And now 10 days in a row over 40 million shares. And that's what's going to kill them, folks. That's what's going to kill them. And I told you it would. You just have to be patient. We just keep seeing it. How are they going to hold it down? Just today, you can see we're going to go over 40 million shares and they can't suppress it. They can't keep it down. I mean, Granted, if they weren't making their su their suppression efforts by borrowing a ton of shares. I was watching uh, Hurricane Lopez. He was pointing out that they had borrowed almost every single borrow. Every share that they could borrow was almost used up last week on Friday. They used every, they only had like 280,000 shares left to borrow on Friday. They had maxed it out trying to stop it from going up and being green. What are they going to do today? How are they going to stop it today? They're going to be their own monsters. They're going to be their worst own enemy by getting this volume over 40 million shares. And it's definitely going to do that right now. There's no question about it. It's going over 40 million. And I see... Yahoo's already started their five their four minute delays. The time is being delayed. If I go over to OPN, they're showing the time right now. If I click on a refresh screen here, they're showing the trading time on OPEN right now is probably 3:30. And it is. It says 3:30. But if you go over to SoFi and you click on this screen, and you refresh the page, they're saying it's 326. And the reason that they have a four minute delay is because usually it's because the price is higher than they're showing here. They just don't want you, 
the public to know it. They can go over here to G GCT and refresh the page. And what time does it show on GCT? Well, I'm going to guess it shows 331. And that's exactly what time it shows, the real time. But go over to SoFi and click on this refresh page. And by God, they got a four minute delay on the price. And as I've said to you before, it's of my belief. This is because Yahoo is indeed whoever is behind this. Oh, look, they actually updated it to 331 just then. Amazing. They finally caught it up to the real price and time. What do you know? You saw it earlier this afternoon, those of you that were here with me, though. You saw what they were doing, delaying it five minutes, and the price was, you were showing me on a Google that was higher, two or three cents higher. So don't be surprised. Huh, cool. I'm glad they changed it. Look at that. Now it's 7.09. Oh, look at that thing. Look at it catching up. Just jumped from 7.07 .07 to 7.09, catching up just then. Look at that thing. 37,995. 208. I don't believe it. 37,995, 597, 697, 612. Oh my God. 37,998, 066. 37,998, 418. 514, 37,999, 228. 38 million. It just went over 38 million at 332. We're definitely going to go over 40 million and we're definitely going to go over 710, it looks like. 38 million and 7,000, 8,000. I call these numbers out because I want you to see what is a tactic known by these uh, people as what they call shill bidding. And you'll see the number here. When they get desperate, it'll, it'll drop because they put in fake orders that they don't mean to fill. They're not going to fill. And so I'm showing you and I read these numbers out so that you can catch them when they do it. 38 million, 010. I think they just did this. 38 million, 011. 38 million, 012, 38 million, 012, 311, 012, 423, 121, two shares bought there, 38 million, 012, 912, 941, 38 million, 13, price looks beautiful, folks, 38 million, 16,000, 17,000, Oh, yeah, we're definitely going over 40 million shares. That'll be beautiful. And by the end of the after hours, it'll probably be about 43 to 47 million shares traded today again. 38 million, 029. I'm looking for big, big buys here, too. I want to catch any massive buy-ins, which I expect to see happen here at 3.34 p.m. And I see we got a lot of people here on the channel right now. I'd like to ask you to please, let's see if we can get, and uh, we're not going to do it yet, but let's do it. And we're going to count down and we're going to hit the like button in 20 seconds. And if we all hit it at exactly the same time, it might jump over 100 likes. So we got now 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom. All right, let's see if we can get up over 100 likes right now on this channel. And I'm very grateful to all of you who are on the channel with me. And let's see if we can jump it up to get over 100 likes right now. That would be really sweet. And uh, we are looking at stock symbol SOFI. Time now is 3.35 p.m. Lots of news about SOFI is coming out lately, circulating. And you can't be confused about it. The number one story that recently came out and they were using this on the message board, talking about insider selling. Well, you need to understand, those are different types of shares. They're called, these are called restricted stock units that the employees get paid with, restricted stock units. All right, so they have to sell those when the, the, those units become vested, and they just vested last week. So they had to pay taxes on what vested of their compensation 
And so then they had to sell some of these restricted stock units. So no big deal. Life goes on. Don't let that bother you. Don't be dissuaded by that information. And the next thing that was heard was that someone was stepping down as the CRO. Well, they've already hired another uh, chief um, risk officer. And that person they hired was from J.P. Morgan previously. And his name, A-R-U-N-P-I-N-T-O, Pinto. And uh, he also, aside from working at J.P. Morgan, also worked a couple of years over at uh, Wells Fargo. All right. So the guy's got experience, knows what he's doing. Just another someone in a pair of shoes that knows what he does. Okay. No, not much different from me or you. It's just a little bit smarter, maybe. Now, uh, there's some other things that have been going on here. And, uh, and I wanted to let you know that I decided to do a little bit of history about SoFi and some of its ordeals in the past to compare to current. And this was an ordeal that came out that I discovered was that SoFi was in a major amount of controversy in the year 2017. July and September, they had some of their most top-level people leaving the company in 2017. And they lost one of their co-founders. Uh, and then a couple months later, they lost one of their C, uh, their CRO, again, had left the company, uh, going to start up his own business. And that was an amicable separation. But then, then just a few months after that, the other co-founder of SoFi had to step down from his position because of sexual harassment charges. So you had a lot going back on 2017, folks. But then that made me uh, wonder uh, when I saw that, I knew they hadn't had, they weren't on the market yet. They hadn't even done their IPO yet. They weren't public uh, company at that time, but they were sure undergoing a lot of trouble in 2017, folks. Big time stuff that if those were things happening today, the price would, would be at Chivarini's $3, okay? So fortunately, they have not la lost any one like Noto stepping down, you know, because of sexual harassment charges. And, uh, and so I'm not, I'm, I'm comparing now to then, but I want you to know, I went back and I wanted to see, so when did SoFi really make its biggest move? And that was getting its bank charter. And I want you to know that was January the 18th of 2022. January 18th, 2022 is when they achieved their bank charter. And folks, they what they did to get that bank charter, I'll tell you what they did. They bought Golden Pacific Bank. They acquired Golden Pacific Bank. And that was the move that they made when they acquired Gold, Golden Pacific Bank. That's what allowed them to receive their bank charter. Okay. And uh, that was a very key step a key moment in the advancement of the goals and aspirations of this company was to get that bank charter. And that was the best thing they ever did. Buying that bank back then on January 18th, 2022, when they achieved their bank charter after acquiring Golden Pacific Bank, just so you know it. <clears throat> Didn't know if you knew that or not. But, I had written down, folks, one of the biggest problems for these shorts right now is the amount of volume that they're experiencing. They've never had it like this on themselves before. This is getting tough on them. And uh, it's going to get, it's going to continue to build. Because on this next earnings call, when SoFi announces profitability again, except the revenues are even more than they expected because they got rid of all that debt that high interest debt, folks, this thing's going to catapult, all right, I think. And that's when you're going to have your sell orders in the 10s, the 11s, the 12s, the 13s, 14s, 15s. Have them up there, man. Just do it. Get them up there like me, as high as you can, and the $24.99 if you can. Good till canceled sell orders, folks, on SoFi. Don't be surprised one day when they all fill. Won't be in an instant either. They're going to halt the stock on it several times. And every time they halt it, we're going to put a buy order in $1 below the price that it's at. Well, at least the first time anyway. 
That's what I've noticed. After the first halt, they let these guys get in their sell orders in and they can get it down a dollar usually or around a dollar. So the best thing to do is when they halt this thing, when it's at 9.50 or 10.20 or something, in an instant, they're going to halt it. And then you better put in about 90 cents lower than the price that it was when they halted it to get that quick order filled and then it's going on off. That's what I say. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I've seen it too many damn times. I've seen it too many times. Just like how many times I've seen them run SoFi down in the sevens and back over $10. I've seen it too many times to not start taking advantage of it. I've seen it too many times not to take advantage of it. Let's go see where S-O-U-N is now, folks. S-O-U-N. S-O-U-N. All right. I was still right on this. Right here was the low time, was the low in the 791s. I think that would have been a good place to pick some S-O-U-N up. In case you're not aware of it, S-O-U-N. We've making a making a fortune off this stock over the last six months compared to where it was down here at dollar eighty two. Jeez, oh goodness gracious, freaking seven bagger. Seven oh nine now on SoFi, approaching the seven ten rubber. This is this is the kind of daily steady volume we're about to go over 39 million shares with 18 minutes left we just crossed 39 million shares so we're most definitely going over 40 million shares 18 minutes left and 39 million 006 39 million 015 39 million 019 020 39 million 021 looking for the big buyers come on in there the water's fine. 39022, 39023, 39023, 713, 39023, oh, 026, 39, and look at the price, folks, toggling 708, 79, 30, 30, 33, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 079, 39, 084, 39. Oh, folks, we just going to go over 39, 1 here in the next five minutes, seconds. 39, 1 coming our way. There's no way to stop it, folks. 39, 088, 089. Here it's going to jump over 39, 1 right now in 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition, and 39, 1 just getting crossed. There it is. Boom. <coughs> 39, 101, 102, 39, 103, here we go, 39, 104, 39, 110, whoa, 39, 110, and jumping 120, 10,000 shares, 709 is the price, 39, 169, 39, 170, that was 60,000 shares jumped up, 39, 177, and folks, in about 20 seconds, we just went through another 100,000, that's right, we're really moving now, 39, 181, we're almost up another 100,000. Now we're about 30 seconds. This looks awesome, folks. 39,185. 39,191. 192. 39,194. And here we go over 39,2 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're over it. 39,2 comes and gone. 39207, 39214, big buys at 709, 39224, 7,000 there, 39226, 241. Oh, we're going higher, folks. 39245, I would say. 39246, 251, 252. And look at that, folks. 
We're going to go over 39.3 in another 20 or 30 seconds, folks. Yep, that's where we're headed. 39, 266, 267, 271, 39, 273, 282, 39, 283, 39, 283. And look at all those small buys. 39, 285, 86, 39, 286, 021, 39, 289. And here we go, folks. Watch it jump. 39, 3 now. Hey, Henry, you have a good one, man. It's okay. Y'all have a good day. You're naming all stock symbols I can't. I hear you. Uh, five by five loud and clear. Thank you, Bert Berenson. All righty, Tyler. Hope you have got good. I missed most of your stuff today. What's your thoughts on SoFi for this week? Anything I should look out for regarding this stock? I've got a contract playing out. Uh, I think it's just going to steadily go up all week long. I think it's going to end up around eight or eight fifty by the uh, by Friday. I believe that could easily take place because I think they're now just going to let it go today. They got all those shares. I guess they wanted for their uh, reserve. They've got to have. They had to tie up one hundred and twenty million shares today, and over the last couple of days, I think they've been doing it because those one hundred and twenty million shares have to be converted one of these days in the future. And uh, regardless, one day they're got to be converted. And so they have to be held until they get the stock price to $9.29. And they're not going to be going anywhere in anybody's hands other than the brokerage that acquired them here recently. They're not going in, in anybody else's hands after he acquires them. They're locked away. 120-something million shares to get 862.5 million in revenue uh, or generated cash. That's what they generated, so by generated and I think that's just going to give them more money, money to be able to lend out. And I think they're going to be, do better on their lending than they expected that they were. It's just me, you know. And I look at Uber and I see where they've gone since they did their convertible note. And they were $45 and now they're freaking almost 80. So they were at 76 today. And the reason that they're going up there is because I think the ones that got them at 45 convertible notes want to be able to convert them when the price is, you know, somewhere around 10 I don't know, but I think it would be the same thing would apply to them. They've got to get the price way up higher than the actual price to get that convert number. And I think that convert number is 30 cents above the price they got it for. So in this case, 729, 30 cents above 729 would be $9.45, which is the price that they can convert, but they can only convert it for $9.45 if the price of the stock is $12.29. The stock that we're looking at right now that's at $7.07 a share is going to be at $12.29. That's what I think. And it can't just run up there on earnings day to get this deal and cash out. It has to stay there for a duration of 30 days over $6.29. So, I don't see why once they get it up there, they just don't keep it over it, those institutions, and then finally go cha-ching. And they can convert then to the cash at that much, at that price, nine forty-five a share for cash, or, or they can convert uh, to shares. They can convert them over to shares, which I'd love to see them do. And many of them probably that are smarter will do that because then they can shove it right on up to $14.54 and sell them for the most they, they're capped out at. Because sure, they can get $9.45 for them when the SoFi price is $12.29, but they can get $14.54 for them if they want to wait. If they can just make the price go from $12.29 up to $14.54. And I think if they can make the price fall from $10.23 all the way down to $6.41, that they can make it go from where it is all the way up to 14. I think that they can make a price when it was at $24 a share of this stock just two years ago, go all the way down to $4, six times down. I think they can easily make it double, right? Yeah, I think they can. Only makes logical sense. These are institutions after all. These are institutions, they can make things happen. They have a lot of money.
And as quickly as they make things fall, they can make them go back up. Just like we saw today when SoFi was down there at daggum $8.86 and now it's at $7.05. What do you know? What a big surprise. And you see right there in my thumbnail, it talks about tennis. In case you don't know this, the connection that SoFi already has with tennis is that there is a group called, uh, that's going to be TGL Golfers, and that SoFi is a sponsor of TGL Golf. It's an indoor golfing venue, these stadiums in uh, down in Florida, in South Florida. And uh, they have a setback with them opening the whole venue. They were supposed to do it and started on December the 30th, this past December, but they had a leaf, leaking roof air. It leaked all the air out because they lost their air pressure and uh, the thing collapsed in a little bit, the canvas, because it was supported by the air pressure of the of their ventilation system. And uh, so they've got that set back, but don't worry. I can assure you they have enough money to get that roof, that canvas put back on. They've already built the whole daggum stadium in concrete and steel. They can absolutely get another roof put back on there. All right, I promise you. And they're having it done and they'll have it done. And then this year in the middle of winter, on December, probably December the 30th or so, I'm guessing here, but they're going to do the debut on ABC. And then every night thereafter, it's going to be on ESPN, ESPN 1 and 2, ESPN Plus, and ABC is going to have occasional ones, I guess. Maybe the championship will be on there. I don't know how they've arranged it, but they're all owned ABC and ESPN. It's all the same ownership. So just so you're aware, the reason I mentioned TGL Golf and Tiger Wood and Roy McElroy's little thing they've got there with TGL Golf and their connection with SoFi, who's the sponsor, and the stadium has SoFi on the side of it where they're going to be playing all this golf indoors. And I want you to know that there's going to be an interaction between the golfers and the players and the people that will be able to listen in and hear the interaction between each golfer talking to one another and their caddies and their choices of clubs. And I don't know how it's going to play out exactly. They may have wind direction and have wind speed. They might have wind machines in there to create crosswinds. And they might even have rain in there falling on them. I have no idea. It's all indoors. They can control the environment completely however they want. I don't know what they're going to do, but I know it's going to be cool. And I know a lot of people are going to tune into it. And I know it's going to be on every night of the week during the winter time, January, February, March, when they can't play outdoors. And what better way for these players to keep in shape and keep in their game than to have a venue to play indoors. And they're going to be from groups from Chicago, from uh, New York. There's one from Las Vegas, uh, Boston. There's teams from all over coming into this venue, folks. You need to understand. And SoFi is connected to that. And the reason I mentioned tennis is because if SoFi has already inked a deal for the stadium with the NFL, has inked a deal for the uh, NBA recently to start having, and has their logos all over the NBA basketball courts and their little booths set up here and there everywhere. And they're, I'm sure in some way or another, they're enterprised enough to be able to get their uh, booths there in the stadiums too for people to come up and, hey, hey you want a free SoFi t-shirt or free team shirt or cap? Just fill out this application and boom, you're in and it's all on your phone. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to go to any SoFi bank or anything. You got it right in your hand. And I think it's going to be a great way. And not only that, but here's what you need to know about the TGL Golf. One of the teams is sponsored by the Serena sisters, the Williams, Serena Williams sisters, okay? Who I just was told by one of our guys here is going to have out with a makeup. They're coming out with a uh, cosmetic line, a makeup line, uh, the Serena sisters. And they're also sponsoring one of the teams and LeBron James and Justin Bieber. So in case you weren't aware of this, this is what's going on. SoFi is branching out constantly into new arenas where they can be seen and visualized by the, the, the fans and their presence. It's just their their recognition, their name recognition. You know, when uh, just a couple years ago, they did a name recognition, went out and surveyed 100 people. One out of 100 knew about SoFi. Now, when they stop strangers on the street, 10 out of 100 know about SoFi. And they're going to make that 20 out of 100 and then 50 out of 100 until they believe SoFi, just like 
Ritz peanut butter cookies will be a household name, <laughs> just like Coca-Cola. SoFi and Coca-Cola merger. It's going to be called the Soca-Cola Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right, Mohan. That is true. Like I said, the price of SoFi can't just spike up to twelve twenty nine for these guys to say, "Okay, I'm cashing in at four. I'm going to cash in now at nine at nine forty five. The, the spike cannot happen on a one day earnings call report twelve twenty nine and then drop back down. It has to sustain that number, like you said, Mohan. The volume is very good right now. The volume right now is just crossing over 40 million shares with four minutes left to go. We're at 41,712,000. It's very good. Any day over 40 million is to our advantage, folks. We want volume every day to be over 40 million, and we will win this war. We're like the freaking Chinese, folks. We just got so many buyers that want to buy, 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 buy. <laughs> there you go. So Chinese for you there. <laughs> no, actually Chinese is il is sam sao o yu chil parku ship. That's what it is. Chinese. Now the Chinese have many, 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 many languages in the, throughout China. There's hundreds. And uh, so that's just one of them that I just did. <laughs> And the Japanese, which is Ichi ni Sanchi Go Roko Siji Haji Ko Ju. Also, I believe the price. We speak any German. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, from six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Si tu parles le français, ça c'est un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. We speak any Hebrew. Raj Dam Solosh Abahamesh Shesh Shemosh Monek Desha Asar. Or if you speak Arabic, just a, a few numbers out there that I happen to know off the top of my head, including many others. I could go on and on. A Kurdish, it's interesting how many of them have so, so many there's some similarities. The most similar number among all the world is the number seven. There's there's something about it that cross crosses all many 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 uh, dialects and many languages. The number seven. I don't know why, but it's there. I just pointed it out to you. Anyway, here we are, folks. We are in the last two minutes, and we've gone over forty three million shares almost. I just saw a hundred thousand shares purchased. 42,746, 42,747, 748, 763, 766, 768, 775, 782, 784, 786, 797, 428, 42,816, 42,835. There's some big volume coming here in this last minute, folks. 42,858, 867, 870, 42,874, 875, 876, 48, 42,880. 42,887, 42,888. We're in the last minute here. 42,892, 952, 70,000 shares there. 42,994, 43 million shares. We just jumped another million. 43,006, 43,015, 43,025. Very nice. 43,049, 056, 43,119. Last few seconds. Time's up. 43,650. 49,622. 43,649,622. Another 40 million plus day and a nice run up into the close. Holy smokes. Did you see that, folks? That run up into the close? Let's look at the one day chart here. Look at this one day chart. I'll take it, folks. I'll take a green day. I'm sure you'll all take a green day. That's right. Exactly what Mohan said, I believe is true. 20 days out of 30 days, they have to have a price of over, 
the 1229 price or over they have to be there and then they will be able to cash those convertible notes in if they want to cash or convert them to shares all right why in the world am they not, are they not showing me this one day chart at the very end of the day just now i want a one day chart yahoo come on you bunch of yahoos there it is Look at that surge coming in to the very end of the day right there, folks. Coming in. Look at that 200-day moving average. Gosh, dang, that looks awesome. And look at all those green candlesticks at the end of the day. And look at that crossover, the 45 and 50 right there. Beautiful. 351, 352, 353, 354, 5, 6, 7, 8, 359, all green candlesticks, but that wimpy little one there for 80,000 shares at 353. And then another wimpy one here comparatively right there for 216,000 shares at 356. What happened to Shorty today? Where's the splash? Where's the splash closed today from Shorty? And why, what am I going to see when I get over here now to the after hours price? Is it going to be one cent below? I don't think so. I could be wrong. It could be three cents below. But where is it? I wouldn't be surprised to see it at 710 or 711 right here. Come on, show show me. Up one cent per cent below. All right, we got 80 people on this channel right now. I'd like to ask you to do me a favor before you leave. I would like to ask you to, if you want, make a donation of 50 cents. You can do that by clicking on a $2 sticker and just, you know, you just do it for every four days. You just buy a $2 sticker. It's 50 cents a day for my knowledge and time and entertainment. And we've got 98 likes. So let's see if we can get right now over 100 likes. I'm going to have you do it and we're going to do it in 10 seconds. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one hit that like button folks let's get it over 100 likes let's make that happen right now and uh we've had a lot of folks here on the channel today 1159 people here today with me there are currently 80 people here with me on the channel while we talk about SoFi and these other stocks i want to look real quickly across the board and everything else that we've got that we that people suggested today that we look at and GCT was definitely at the very bottom, but we're holding there till tomorrow morning, 9.45, see what they do. TENX is going to be having their presentation coming up very soon. As a matter of fact, they're going to start it here in uh, 10X, 36 in minutes, one hour and 56 minutes. So uh, right at six o'clock. Yep, 6 o'clock, they're going to start their conference, and this is 10X, in case you're interested in tuning into this. And they're going to be updating on the drug, Livisimondin. All right, so please, if you want to, I sent the link. I put the links up there. You can see the link to subscribe is right up there in bold under yellow, under my yellow comment, where I posted a link. And it says the first link might not work, but the second one is where you register for this video and once you register then you'll just have this screen pop up and uh, it's very easy so anyway there you go so we'll be looking at that one closely and now we can see SoFi is no longer being held back even a penny so there's definitely no wall there on SoFi this evening at 707 they're not going to try that apparently that's not going to work and uh it sure didn't work for them to drive us into the lowest we've been since the last time the price was at 641, as I've mentioned to you all here this evening, SoFi's low on May the 15th was 441. The next time they drove the high over 10 down, they could get it not to 440, not 445. I'm sorry, I meant 445. May the 15th was 445. The next time that they drove us down over 10, to the next low was not 445 it was six dollars and 41 cents folks the low increased by 44 percent sofi's low went up 44 percent the second time they tried to drop us down from over ten dollars all right so just be aware of that okay that what i'm trying to get at here folks 
is that the first time they drove us way down on David Chiaverini's downgrade and said the target price was 250 we went to 445 The next time they could drive us down on whatever news that was that pushed us there, that was 44% higher, 641 And today, we saw the next low drop down from 918 and get to nine, to the price today of 686 and from 641's low to 686 is another 7.9% gain, from my understanding. Let's see if I'm right. 6.41 times 7.9% plus is a price of 691. So very close. I'm close. Probably 7.5%. 6.41 times 7.5% plus equals 689. So virtually there. You know what I mean? Uh, a first time gain off the low of 44% and now another 7.5% basically. All right. And that's good. And that's why the 200 day moving average has just kept going up with SoFi stock. All right. 1,000 shares contract for difference. Okay. We got a lot going on here. Let's see, Johnny, 1,000 share contract for difference at 690 up. So 150 pounds so far. Let's go to the moon, baby. All right. Back again. I see we're green. No. Now, where's the volume like? Um, let's see here. Oh, look at all those likes. We just jumped up to 104 likes. Thank you very much. There's a heart for you. There's for a heart for you, that like. There's a heart for that like and a heart for that like. And that one and that one and that one too. There's a heart on their screen for each and every one of you. And I want to thank you for being here. Something big is happening. Five million and someone bought it. Someone just dropped two million shares. Ah, something big going on, apparently. Ah, attack after hours. And an interesting two million shares and the price dropped three cents. And now it's only down two cents. Huh. All right, Armand, something big is happening. Armand is letting us know. I appreciate you keeping us abreast of it. I want to be here if anything big is happening, really big is happening. So let's just watch and see. Five billion, someone bought it. Wow. You're kidding me, man, right? Let's get over here and look at the volume right here. It ended. Well, this isn't true. That was at 301. It was 35, 430. Let's go, go look at it here. It ended at 44, 159. 44, 159, 668. And now where is it? 44, 159, But I want to see what they're showing here for the volume that it ended at today. Gosh dang it, man. 44, 159, 668. Jeez. I'm hanging with you here, Armand. I want to see what we got going on. If there is something really big happening here, then we'll see usually very, very direct results, even in the after hours. If there's big news, it'll, it'll be very, very quickly uh, visible on the screen. So I keep refreshing here. And I want to see what's going on. If there's that many million shares, why? Who's behind it? And what are they trying to achieve by it? And uh, Motley Fool says, what is going on with SoFi stock? So there's nothing there at all on the headlines. Nothing new has come out on the headlines. I appreciate all of you that have been here with me today. The 106 likes. 1,177 people on the channel, and uh, it's very cool. The um, subscribership has jumped up quite a bit. We're looking at a lot of stocks today. Someone mentioned this one, T-Rex. So I took a look at it. I don't see much there that I would be interested in getting in on. Someone mentioned sound, and I said, uh, I think that it's been manipulated, being manipulated today. And I suggested when I got over here that this was the price to get in at 797. That's what I told 
the individual that asked me, and I said, I think 797 is a safe number to get in. Don't know whether or not that person did that. Going over here, someone told me to took it Rivian, and it pulled back from the number when I looked at it this afternoon, so I'm glad that I said, no, let me hold off on that. I'll watch it, but I don't want to go there right now. And uh, someone mentioned this one, and I also told them, this is at a high, stay away from it. <laughs> okay, that's what I told them. And I was right. It just sold off the rest of the afternoon. We'll watch that tomorrow, though. We'll keep it up there. Someone mentioned this one. That's my buddy, Double K. It had a good day today. Not up massively, but uh, actually now, as I look at this, they're showing it in the red slightly. I'm not sure why. We got a green chart here and a red one here, and this says 590 a share. And this says 572, and it says something in the morning. So we'll have to wait here a minute because I think that the number is better. Yes, so it did have a good day. This had a good day today as well. NU, 1179, folks. I believe that's an all-time high for this, and it closed at its all-time high. So very, very good to see that. STEM was down a little bit today. Taking a look at GNS, and I told people, stay away from this stock. Don't get into this. And it did go on up a little bit more, but then they dropped it right back down. Watch for them to wash this out tomorrow morning, folks. GNS is going to get a washing at 945. All right. Some other ones that we're looking at here. I mentioned to everybody here a little bit ago, there are tons and tons of institutions that are adding hundreds of percentages to these so by positions right now, they're just piling in. So be aware of that. ETFs are coming in big time. SoFi's cost to borrow. We're coming over here to try to see what was going on. It had a little bit of a drop right there, but went back up today a little bit. And that's good to see it rising. And I expect to see it rise even more. Hey, everyone. KMO504. Somebody just got through saying something big is happening. What did I miss on SoFi today? A green day. <laughs> a day in the green but we bought it today at 686 a share and we also bought it at 688 a share and that was awesome so uh we get that low today and that i took pictures of what i think is the very last time the price was under seven dollars and ever will be again I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say I don't think so. I just don't know. <laughs> the, the manipulation on this stock is never ceasing. And uh, I'm just glad that I have all of you folks here with me today to uh, interact with me on SoFi making a nice green move today. Uh, and it was nice to see it for a change. Two million shares traded at 405. 2 million shares traded at 405. Let me get in here. I want to show you guys something. As you can see, SoFi likes to end the screen right at 4 o'clock and not show you after hours anymore. But let me show you what you can do. If you get on the screen and zoom in, meaning hit your scroll button and scroll all the way in to your all the way maxed out in on the chart, and then you come up and hit your refresh screen top left over the Yahoo Finance updates are here. If you click on that refresh screen, you can sometimes see the after hours. So let's go see if we're now going to get to see the after hours. And they, by the way, they don't show the candlesticks. They just show the price in after hours. But I'm looking now to see if we'll update and see after hours price. A good deal. Powell spooks the market on Wednesday. I'm buying more SoFi. Yep. And wouldn't be surprised at all to see Yahoo try to use that for a reason to bash the way the profits today. They do it. They've been doing it every day before the announcement. It's just been the pattern here recently. Fears about the announcement. Oh, everyone's so scared about the announcement. So now, as you can see, we've got after hours pricing. And here's what's going on in after hours. And I can only presume if like what you said happened, 2 million shares traded at 405. Well, that was right 
there. Let's see here. 405. That was about right there. 2 million shares traded and the price went from 707 down to 705. And now since then, it's already risen right back up and is at 708. Wow. Huh. Interesting. Well, those shares all sure got swallowed up, whoever was trying to dump them there. 46.84 million, 708, 115 p.m. Armand, are you trying to tell me there's a buy order? For 46.84 million shares at 708 at 115. Armand, if you're still there, am I understanding you correct? that you saw a 46.84 million share buy executed at $7.08 occurring today at 1.15 p.m. That doesn't make any sense because today's volume overall wasn't even that high. Not when I last looked at it, the volume wasn't that high. The volume was only 44,159. So, of course, <laughs> there's been a lot of things happening around this stock lately that I don't understand. Some weird things happening. I, I'll tell you one thing I like. I like seeing the open on Friday at 7.03 and it opened at 7.07. After it closed at 703, the same freaking price it opened on Friday. 703. Opened at 703, closed at 703, opened at 707, and hit 711 from a 705 previous. Forget about the low of 691 to 686, folks. Look where the friggin' high was. 711. Nice. And by the way, the low was 686, 711. What's the difference there? 25 cents? I don't know what it is. 7.11 minus 686.86 equals 25 cents. The close is only two cents off the three cents off the high today, folks. It should be about 698.5 is where it should be. 698.5 is where it should be, which would be in the middle, halfway in between today's high and today's low. But it closed three cents off the high. Closed just three cents off the high. Nice. Total shares traded today was 46.84 million. Okay. All right, I got you. That's good with me, man. I like 46 million. That's why the price was green today. They can't hold it back. I told you, when it's over 40 million, they're going to have a hard time with this stock. And they're just going to have to keep digging their hole deeper and deeper and deeper because they don't have enough shares anymore to keep shoving it down anymore. They got to borrow, borrow, borrow. I wonder if we can go over here and just see something real quick. Ooh. Huh. 
we got a YouTube Hurricane Lopez popping up here on the very top of the screen when you put short borrowing. Bar chart saying, can SoFi stock double from here? I think so. I cannot find anything right now. I'm trying to look over here. I've got past week chosen. I can put past 24 hours and see if anything comes up. Look at this. SoFi Technologies shares down four hours ago. Citigroup reduced their target price on SoFi from 12 to 11. And SoFi ended up green today. How do you like that? And they have a buy rating on the stock. Friday, November the 24th. But this is dated four hours ago. Somebody's going to mention, and it happened November the 24th, and they're going to put four hours ago, Citigroup reduced their target price on SoFi from 12 to 11. <laughs> and set a buy rating on the stock in a research note on Friday, November the 24th. Oh, my God. Are you people kidding me, man? Jesus. Unbelievable. There is something happening. I can't get to see their values after hours, but it's big. Price is holding. All right, Jeff, good to know that. It says Thinkorswim platform is showing me the high was in the pre-market, 727 a share at 7 a.m. Nice. Oh, I think we're just going to keep going up, folks. I don't see any reason why. why it, there is, a, apparently, we've got in here Armand saying that there's something going on. There is something happening. I cannot see values after hours, but it's big. Price is holding. Huh. Uh, like I said, I, I'm only on, starting to get a, uh, a feeling of a possibility that there's just so much going on in the dark pool right now. And they're having to, re, uh, to process these orders uh, after hours now. Because these dark pool are getting so much volume. There's so much going on around this stock right now. It just is a bevy of activity, really. It really it is. Man. IB Mac, holy after hour volume, 2 million shares, 400,000, 164,000. Yeah. I hear you, man. And. The cool thing is the price is holding up so well, but my my presumption is that it's, like I said, maybe just the, finally the processing of all the shares that are actually being acquired during the day. See, they don't want you to, they don't want you to see all this volume. They want you to see only, you know, 44 million, but maybe it was 54 million or 60 million. Well, I don't know. Maybe they got that so much in the dark pool, we'll we'll not know. Uh, let me see something here. Well, guys, listen. All I can say is she is holding up. I'm going to have to get on out of here right now. I got to take a couple of uh, personal things I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, call about my doctor's appointment tomorrow, and I want to let you know I appreciate you being here with me today. I'm not going to be able to stick around any longer. It's time for me to be on my way and get rid of the little, get some of my own things off my plate. I wish I could stick around to see what's going on here in the after hours. I've got my curiosities up.
But unfortunately, I'm going to have to end this now and make a few phone calls. So thank you for being here with me today. I'm very, very grateful. It's been fun. We had a lot of good laughs there in the middle of the day today, and I'm glad you were here with me. And I always appreciate your presence here. I wish you nothing more than all the happiness in the world. I hope that you also have great success in your financial trading and most of all, that you have good health. And lastly, I hope that you are surrounded with love because you deserve it, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a super, super, super day and evening. Be safe out in this crazy world. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning, all right? Bye-bye now. And thanks again for tuning in. And don't forget to hit that like button just before you go. Toodles.